It's time almost to crown our Tillotson T4 Nations Cup champions. Welcome everyone to Sunday at the Cartodromo. Uh, Lucas Guerrero here in Valencia. It is finals day for the T4 Nations Cup. Today is where we crown both our drivers champions and our nations champions as well. Here's the circuit. We are introducing you the international Cartodromo. Lucas Guerrero famously holding the FIA Cup European Championships earlier this year along with the champions of the future uh, 1495 meters in length it's got a little bit of everything to it we spoke to Lucas Guerrero on the grid yesterday uh, that's exactly what he said in his interview wanted a little bit of everything in the circuit long straights uh, tucked in with tight and twisty chicanes uh, and hairpins as well which has led to lots of great uh, overtaking lots of great racing it's a packed program as you can imagine on a finals day finals come up later first of all we have to set the grids for those uh, first we start with some qualifying heats the remainder of them minis coming up this morning we have heat five and heat six at 9 40 and 10 o'clock so they'll be the first races you hear on track you may even hear the engines firing up in the background then come our juniors a versus c group b versus group d heat five and heat six then we roll into seniors around 11 o'clock local time here in spain 11 20 is when we have the final qualifying heat for seniors the final qualifying heat for the senior 165 will be at 11 40 then we have the super heat the grids will be slightly different for those uh, but they will also be scoring points which will help set the grids for the final so they really are what they say in their names carry lots of importance to them 12 30 12 50 and 110 is when they will roll out the juniors and the seniors will be split into two groups for those the last of the juniors at 130 the first of the seniors at 50 minutes past one and then the second of the senior groups will go out at 10 past two local time the groups will be split into the positions they lay in at the end uh, of the heats the intermediate intermediate classification they lay in the super heat for the senior 165 at 230 then come the finals 330 is the big final for the t4 minis t4 junior final 50 minutes past three local time 10 past four is when you can catch the final for the seniors and we end with the senior 165 which produced some absolutely fantastic racing at 4 30 after that we will have our podium which will be brought to you live as well well everyone is just about getting ready to go here around the circuit the drivers are ready we're ready up in commentary as well myself chris mccarthy alongside me simon byford uh, simon uh, i think a, a really great day uh, to, to kick us off yesterday in terms of the racing close racing all the way throughout the classes uh, before we focus on the, the minis, uh, y y your thoughts on the racing uh, overall, your uh, returning uh, force of the, the Tillotson T4 Nations Cup. That's very uh, how, generous. How have you found uh, th this one in comparison to the others you've been at? Well, it's been fantastic as always. The racing yesterday was absolutely sensational. There was action from start to finish right the way through the day. And uh, I was, I have to say, I was a bit worried coming to the end of the day that I was going to lose my voice ahead of today, which would have been an absolute disaster. But it is testament to just how close the racing was. We saw no end of battles, particularly, as Chris mentioned, in the T4165s. Uh, I think it was a 10, 11, maybe 12 cart train all stuck to the back of the leader. It was absolutely fantastic to watch and now we have the t4 minis who if you were watching along yesterday you will know that these kids know how to race let's take you through the starting order it is taste van house who starts on pole in front of george house in second a winner yesterday and the reigning t4 nations cup mini champion 
He starts in front of Ben McLaughlin in third and Kas Mancha in fourth in front of Logan Rolf, Yarame Arkhipov, Martin Gomez and Petra Milosavljevic, who very fortunately is able to make the start today having had a big incident yesterday. She starts in front of Ronan Kompos and Sebastian Venkov in front of Steinbecker, Taylor Patel, Jim McLaren Jr., Evan McLaughlin, Ronnie Legg, Hudson Hidalgo, Matthew Reinal and Diego Baradone rounds out the grid for this first heat of the day and what a heat it is set to be Chris. Yeah I know you got the results there yeah, uh, up on the wall there as well. Talk us through uh, a little roundup of some of the results that we had in the mini class yesterday. Yes, so I mean, there were four different winners yesterday in the minis, uh, and also from, well, three different countries. So you have to say, excuse me, no, two different countries. It was two Irishmen and two Britons. It was Jason Livings and George House, who we mentioned there, who won in heat number one and heat number two. Then we had Tyg Malone in heat three, managed to take a fantastic win. And then Ben McLaughry with a, uh, a brilliant move on. I believe it was the last lap of heat number four yesterday to take the victory. No, it wasn't actually, because he led for a substantial amount of the race, now I remember it. And a fantastic drive by the young Irishman, who is no slouch in T4s, very familiar with them, raced in, I believe, every Nations Cup since 2021. And as they round the final corner, we get ready to go racing now. We wait for the lights. And we're away now, and it looks to be a pretty good start from the front row. And uh, that looks to be George House, who has fallen back down the order as they come down into turn one. It is Tace Van House who leads the way in front of, I believe, that's Ben McLaughlin, who has inherited second from the inside of the grid down into turn number three. George House has climbed his way back up to third. A little bit of argy bargy. Oh, and there's a spinner there. I'm not sure who that is. That might be Sebastian Venkov, but I can't confirm that, unfortunately, as they round their way through sector two, through turn five. We saw a lot of incidents here yesterday. No less for uh, Petra Milosavljevic, who, as we say, had that big flip there, damaged her helmet. So very, very lucky to be able to make the start today. Fantastic to see her on the grid. As they make their way down for the first time into turn number seven. No heroics just yet. It seems like the minis have somewhat calmed down from their earlier encounters with each other where it was dive bomb central into turn number seven down onto the back straight. Very little wind this morning. It's a completely still day, so very little uh, in the way of of uh, drafting going on down the back straight as so they come into the final chicane again no moves for the lead but as they come across the line it is still going to be Tace Van House who leads but only just from Ben McLaughlin who is absolutely glued to his rear bumper coming down into turn number one and that looks to be Logan Rolf who has managed to get up into position number three in front of Martin Gomez George House has fallen down to seventh is a disastrous start for the young Briton yeah, that was Logan Rolf getting through to third. You may have seen it on the stream into turn nine. Managed to draw alongside down the back straight. So good move that from Logan Rolf. And he's escaped from the chasing pack from P4 down here, which we are watching on the timing. Here is our uh, top two, Tace Van House and Ben McLaughlin. They are working together as it stands. We're early into the race, of course, just aware, I think, of the threat of Logan Rolf uh, behind, who is being very quickly caught by George House. I think George will be with him by the end of this lap and may even be past him. There you see George House pulls out of the slipstream, and that will be a change for third. So we have a change for third in the background as the lead has come into the chicane for the second time of asking across the line they come no changes between them two but a change in who is chasing them down it is George House and then a huge battle going on for fifth place there which is being led by Cas Mente so uh, great battles up and down the order two for the lead and then a gap of 1.2 seconds now back to George House who has already got a gap over Logan Rolf and Tace Van House with the fastest lap of the race, with uh, just over, well, just less than a tenth of a second between himself and Ben McLaughlin behind a 106.8. That is uh, reasonably slow in comparison to what we saw yesterday, but the track is still very, very cold compared to the height of the day yesterday. Only 16 degrees air temperature, but it will start to heat up very, very quickly. And you have to say, having uh, looked at uh, George House making up three positions on the one lap, two positions gained in one corner coming through turn number three it was absolutely fantastic to see him scything through the field and look at the gap that he's pulled out on uh, that is logan rolf his fellow britain in fourth place and he's really hunting down ben mclaughlin in third who we shared many a battle with yesterday and i'm sure we will see them sharing many a battle today as well 
Yeah, up towards the first corner, Logan Rolf under attack in P4 now uh, from Casmante and Martin Gomez. And in fact, I think he may lose a place. There was almost contact there uh, between Casmante and Logan Rolf. Mante trying to get round the outside, and we saw our two leaders on screen briefly side by side as well. Uh, ben McLaughlin actually setting the fastest lap last time around. 1.7 is the gap back to George House, who has absolutely no assistance in third place. And that's what you need in Tillotson T4 Nations Cup. You need to be working together in these carts, particularly in the mini class. So I think George is going to find it pretty difficult to catch these two leaders unless they start battling. But he certainly won't get up, nor will Ben McLaughlin in terms of taking this race win. Here they come. Down to the final chicane lap number four we are on now of seven out of the chicane we come and ben mclaughlin just lining up his move planning his attack for the final laps george house taking a big look over his shoulder looking for support i think but he's not going to find it sadly because the battle for fourth well and truly on and we're side by side for the lead of the race we were briefly the taste van house holds on for the time being but a big queue of carts battling for fourth I'd say that stretch is down to 12th place. Make that 13th or 14th place now, all fighting over P4. And with a two second gap to George House in third, you have to say that this is turning more and more into a two horse race. The battle for first place, Taste Van House, having not taken a heat win yesterday, he took two third places, but despite his fantastic pace right throughout yesterday, just not able to capitalize and take that first place or even a second, but managing two third places. So that will be uh, beneficial to him for his positions points wise going into the super heats and the finals go down into the final chicane still no moves yet it is looking like it's going to be a uh, final two lap showdown between the Irishman and the Dutchman as George House now almost a three second gap to George House that is absolutely magnificent from the front two breaking away from the Briton and when you're in your own in these T4s it is so difficult to make up a gap like that when you have two drivers in front of you slipstreaming bump drafting and trying their best to chase away from you. However, if they do start battling, as uh, Ben McLaughlin looking at uh, maybe a hint of a move up the inside into turn at number five, but ultimately not being able to make anything of it and still just holding station behind the Dutchman. No moves as of yet. And it seems to be the podium battle having not started yet, but the battle for fourth, as we say, could start hotting up as they're going two by two through turn number nine there, excuse me, turn number eight, and it does look to be, I'm trying to make out who that would be, who has inherited fourth place. I'm not sure, is it Kasmancha? Uh, but we will be able to tell you as they cross the line as Tace Van House. Look at this, Tace Van House gets it a little bit wrong. Keith, Mc, uh, Keith McLaughlin, Ben McLaughlin, excuse me, with a good run out of the corner. Down into turn one, tries to go around the outside. It's going to be very difficult to make that work, and sure enough, he can't. And it is Kas Mancha who is in fourth in front of Logan Rolf, Taylor Patel, and Yaramir Arkhipov. That is the battle for fourth currently, but that could change as we are on the final lap. Look at Ben McLaughlin trying to go up the inside. That's really difficult to pull off a move there. So easy to get turned in on, and it is Tace Van House who still holds on to the lead by the skin of his teeth and looks set to take his first heat win of the weekend if he can just hang on. But it's not over yet. Coming down into the hard-breaking zone of turn seven, Gasmancha goes defensive. Ben McLaughlin not able to make anything of it. As they come down onto the back straight, this could be where it all changes. Slipstream is so important here, and we have seen many a move into the final chicane over the last day and the last weekend of uh, T4 Nations Cup here last year. So many moves. Is there going to be another? Ben McLaughlin up the inside. He locks up slightly. Oh, and he spun off. Gas Mancha is, excuse me, not Gas Mancha. Taste Van House has managed to take the flag. Ben McLaughlin with a move of desperation that ultimately didn't pay off. And Taste Van House takes his first heat win of the weekend. What a race by the young Dutchman. Great drive from Taste Van House, and that does him very good in terms of the intermediate classification as well that moves him up to fifth place in the intermediate classification ben mclaughlin will be in second place and the driver axel nocom will have to go and win his race uh, 
to hold uh, to stay ahead of Ben McLaughlin. So uh, not all bad for the Irishman. He's still in a very good position, joint on points with Axel Mariano Nocom and Martin Spears in the battle for pole position. But uh, the winner in this one, Tace Van House, did a very good job. Let Ben McLaughlin try that move and fell in his attempts. And a good clean battle once again. Both of them driving very well to push away from the field, not letting George House or any of the other drivers uh, join them in getting away. And overall, a good race to kick us off. Here's the full result. So it was, as we say, Taste Van House who took the victory in front of Ben McLaughlin and George House. Cas Mancia just about missed out on a podium, finishing in P4 in front of Logan Rolf and Yaramir Arkhipov. Sebastian Venkov improved well by three positions to finish in seventh place in front of Taylor Patel, who improved by four positions to finish in eighth. Martin Gomez then finished in ninth in front of Steinbecker and Ronan Campos in 11th place. Matthew Reinhold made up a fantastic five positions to finish in position number 12 in front of Jim McLaren Jr. and Petra Milo Savlovich, who was fortunate to take the start today. Hudson Hidalgo finished in 15th in front of Evan McLaughlin in 16th, Ronnie Legg in 17th and Diego Baradon in 18th place and uh, you have to say disappointing enough for Diego Baradone doesn't seem to have the pace so far but that could all change if he discovers something in the setup perhaps or uh, he manages to perhaps work together like we saw with the US team yesterday with a fantastic display of teamwork in uh, the junior excuse me no the senior uh, heat number let me take a look it was senior heat number four it was the AD heat with Colin Warren and Cameron Reed both pulling away from the pack and working together as a nation team to secure a fantastic 1-2-3 result for the USA. It will be the second of the mini heats up next and that will be group number, let me take a look, group B and D who will face off against each other and that is set to be an absolutely brilliant and uh, frantic seven lap affair around this 1500 meter Cartodromo Internacional Lucas Guerrero here in Valencia. Now the minis are very lucky in that they are starting today's proceedings while the air temperature is still reasonably low. 16 degrees air temperature so far today. Now it did feel a lot cooler than the predicted 29 degrees yesterday thanks to the breeze but as I'm looking out the commentary box window there is no wind today but anyways Chris is down in the pre-grid area Chris, what can you tell us about this mini race? Uh, yes, welcome down uh, to the grid as the uh, car of uh, Martin Schwerz. A uh, lovely day uh, down here uh, on the grid, I have to say. Uh, beautiful conditions once again. Uh, beautiful Ross over there who's going to run away from me. I've tried to interview him several times. He's got the whistle at the ready. Uh, I don't know where my grid sheet is, but uh, I'll try and go and steal it from him. Uh, he's going to go and get it for me now. Um, but uh, a great race uh, to kick us off, uh, has to be said. Uh, carts all looking beautiful this morning, uh, as is the weather. Let's go and speak to some drivers, shall we? Uh, in it comes, in it comes. Thank you very much, sir. All right. Uh, let's go and have a chat to some people, shall we? Uh, let's start with our pole sitter, Jason Livings. How are we doing? I'm actually Leo Livings. Oh, you're... Yeah, I'll that's the oh you got the oh is it oh there we that's a good start isn't it there we go <laughs> how are we doing how are we doing Leo are we good good and um yep yeah, yeah. So how, how how does it feel starting on pole position at Valencia um, feels good feels very good right right yeah uh, have you raced abroad much um no this is my first ever time racing abroad yeah enjoying the experience yeah pretty nice racing here. Like the track? Yeah. Good stuff. It's a good track. It's not bad, is it? No. You got a lot of people watching at home, Leo? Um, quite a couple of people. Good stuff. Well, sorry we got your name wrong on there. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Look, best of luck. Good luck. Well done for getting pole. Well done, guys. Sorry about that. Cool. Uh, Axel Nocom had a good day yesterday. Uh, how are we, how are we doing? We had a good day yesterday? Yeah, it was a really good result yesterday. Um, I'm really happy about that. Yeah, yeah, uh, and we're doing good in the classification. We're right, right up towards the front, aren't we? Yeah, I, I just hope to get a good result here and maybe get P1. But I'm happy as long as I'm in the top three. Good stuff. Well, best of luck oh, for the race. Have a good one, guys. Let's have a walk down for the. Uh, let's have a little walk down and catch some other drivers, shall we? Uh, 
I don't really think I don't think we spoke to. We'll, we'll speak. We'll, we'll, we'll speak to our top three. We'll, we'll come back this way. How are we doing? Good. Uh, what's the the plan for this race then? Countryman just ahead. Have we got a plan of attack? You don't have to tell us it, but yeah, we're trying to push away and then just go and win it by ourselves. That's the plan, isn't it? Get get away. Yeah, do you mean? Working it. Britain. Working as a nation. Are we thinking of Nations Cup as well? Yep. Absolutely. Enjoying the racing? Yeah, definitely. Good stuff. Well, best of luck. Loving the race suit. Looking very, very good. Uh, right, let's come to yourself next. Uh, you had a good day yesterday as well? Yeah, I have a good day. Yeah. Enjoying it so far? Yeah. Could be better. Could be worse. Mm, it's good. Could this better? Yep. Yeah. And how, how's the overall experience of it? Good? Yes. Yeah. He's, he's quite yeah, a bit nervous, but excited. Hmm? Uh, this. Yeah. yeah. But we'll, we'll let you get. We'll let you get ready. No Good luck. Thank you. Best of luck. Uh, okay. Um, let's keep walking down. Uh, we'll come to yourself next, if you don't mind a little chat. How long have we got? I think we've got a couple of minutes. Uh, ooh, who have we got here then? One six one. How are we doing? <laughs> I want to win. Huh? I want to win. You want to win? Yeah? How many have we got ahead of us? What's this? Five? Five. Yeah, we can get them. Five laps, we get them. We got six well we got six laps, haven't we? So we can get them we can get them quickly. Yeah. yeah. Well, good luck, I'll let your engine get fired up. Okay. Engines are fired. So we can see Gart's now getting ready to go. Uh, drivers almost getting ready, so it gets a little bit loud at this point. But uh, good to still speak to the drivers. I'm still going to try and speak to a couple more. We can see some advice coming in here for, uh, for Jack Harney, I think this is. Do you mind if I have a chat to Jack? Hello there, Jack. How are we doing? Good. Yeah, enjoying it? Yeah. yeah. Is it your first time racing abroad? Yeah. Do you, do you like racing in Spain? Yes. Like the track? Favourite corner? The first corner. The first one? Where well, you can do lots of overtaking? Yeah. You're going to send it on these guys? Yeah. Good stuff. <laughs> Good stuff. Well done, mate. Thank you. Uh, I think we spoke to Helena yesterday. Uh, I don't know if we spoke to this young person here. So we're going to come to yourself next, uh, Rami Guzman. Uh, how are we doing? Very good. Yeah? Uh, are we nervous, excited, bit of both? Uh, both. Yeah? yeah? And do we like, what's it like now when the engine gets fired up? Is this when you're like, visor down, ready to go now? Yeah. yeah. What are you thinking of now? Is it the race start? Yeah? You, what's your, is the race start your favourite bit of the race? What? The race start, is that your favourite bit of the race? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Good stuff. Best of luck. Uh, I think, I don't know if we spoke to, I don't know if we spoke to you yesterday. I can't remember if we spoke yesterday, so we'll, we'll go again. Hello. Hello. How are we doing? Good weekend. Good weekend so far? Um. Is, it go, is it going well so far? Excited? Yes. Yeah. Good, well, we'll take that. I know it's a bit loud, so we'll take that for now. Uh, how much time have I got? I don't think I've got time for any more. Um, I think that's going to have to be your lot. I'm going to walk down, because uh, we've only got 30 seconds, and hopefully we can speak to some more later on. But good to speak to plenty of drivers. Uh, that's going to be the guys coming out onto the circuit. Uh, they're looking great, fired up for this one, uh, and I think we're going to have a good race uh, ahead of us, to be fair. Uh, nice that they're all willing to, to have a chat as well. Plenty of nerves. Off they go. Back to you. Well, thank you very much for that insight there, Chris. It's great to uh, see all the mini drivers taking part in the interviews once again as they make their way out onto the track for this, the final mini heat 
of the day before the super heats and the final. Let's take you through the starting order. It is going to be Leo Living starting on pole position in front of Mariano Axel Nocom, who managed to pick up two second places in yesterday's heats. In front of Luke Millwood and Kick Dober in fourth position. Miko Leon Schwerz starts in fifth in front of Yindra Zwoboda and Thomas Harper. Jack Harney starts behind them in front of his countryman Tyg Malone. And Valentina Helena starts in front of Ewan Gavin Bugayon. Raimi Guzman lines up next in front of Deacon Oliver and Fernando Wheeler Jr. Billy Clancy then starts in front of the two Spaniards of Lorenco Diniz and Bernie Gomades. And Feder Bakker rounds out the grid as they make their way down through turn number seven on this, their warm-up lap. And uh, I have to say, from the last heat, the minis are a lot better behaved on the starts than they were yesterday when it comes to getting themselves in order and getting themselves lined up and in the tram lines and nice and close to the drivers in front of them, whereas yesterday it seemed to be a, a bit of a, a bit of a free-for-all, it's fair to say, with uh, the mini starting procedures. They, uh, shall we say, they, they did things their own way, which was... Good to see in one way, but uh, I'm sure the RGMMC organisers were a little bit frustrated by it as they make their way through up to the final chicane, cutting across the final chicane to uh, allow them to get into their tram lines. And uh, there's someone pulling into the pits there. Not entirely sure who that was, but we'll try and bring you that information in time. It's lights out and away we go. And it's a good start by Leo Livings. Poor start there by uh, Mariano Axel Nocom, who was quite far back off the start. And he's fallen right the way down the order. He's in, I think, P5 or P6. And there's a big collision there on the outside of turn one. And I'm not sure who that is. That's the one, two, two. I believe that's Valentina Helena who's gone off. Let me bring you confirmation on that. It is, yes, Valentina Helena off at turn one. Is she able to get going again? It doesn't look like it. So Valentina Helena out at turn one. Terribly unfortunate for the young Dominican driver as we have someone exiting the pits there. I'm not entirely sure who that is. I'll bring you that information in due course, however, as we can see there, the uh, 141 machine of that is. Let me take a look on my lifetime. That's Deacon Oliver battling with Raimi Guzman as we cut back to the leaders. It is, as we say, it is Leo Living still leading the way in front of Mariano Axel Nocom, who is... Uh, Actually, no, I don't believe it's Mariano Axel Nocom. Let's take a look at the live stream. And uh, no, it, Leo Livings has actually fallen down the order. It is Luke Millwood who's leading. Luke Millwood from third place on the grid, taking the lead on lap number one. A fantastic start by the young Briton. It is a British 1-2. Leo Livings in third. And then Mariano Axel Nocom climbing his way. Actually, Mariano Axel Nocom in third, excuse me. Leo Livings in second. And then Thomas Harper there in fourth position. But here comes Mariano Axel Nocom trying to make a move for second place. It's not going to work down into turn three. And uh, perhaps a brave move there for lap number one. Or lap number two, excuse me, for the young Filipino. Philippines making their first appearance at a Nations Cup ever and having, fair to say, a very strong time in this T4 mini category. As we say, Mariano Axel Nocom managing to pick up two second places yesterday. Very, very competitive from the young Filipino racer. As there's a move there for third position. Mariano Axel Nocom side by side with Thomas Harper. Just about holds on to the position, but Harper gets the cutback. They're side by side coming along the back straight, and Thomas Harper takes third position away from Mariano Axel. Actually, no, excuse me, it was Yindra Zvoboda who's managed to get up into fourth position there in front of Thomas Harper. That's my mistake, I apologise for that as they come through the final chicane. But the leaders going hammer and tong at it. It is still Luke Millwood who leads the way, but only just from his fellow Brit, Leo Livings. And it is Yindra Zavoda who has managed to climb his way up into third position, having had a disappointing Saturday. We are suddenly starting to see the pace of the young Czech racer who was so quick last year. Luke Millwood with a good start to the race. Leo Livings, who we spoke to on the grid in second place there. And then Svoboda in third. It's a good battle going on in the middle of the pack, isn't it? Goes all the way outside the top ten. Here's your top two, uh, meanwhile, who are trying to escape from the field. They did speak about this. Luke Millwood saying that he wanted to push away from uh, Leo Living, push away with Leo Livings. And uh, oh no, a yellow flag. Two drivers. Uh, colliding together they've both got going again and uh, I think one of them may have been Axel Nocom who was involved actually uh, he certainly has been delayed through the second sector uh, I think the main drivers caught up were Kick Dober uh, and Rami Guzman uh, they've both 
fallen down in terms of their sector times. But uh, Luke Millwood and Leo Livings shared the opinion that it was try and push away from the pack. That's what they're trying to do. We have a change for fourth. Meanwhile, Schwerz has gone by Svoboda for P4. So a change inside the top five. Harper is in P3. So the three British drivers pushing for big points in the Nations Cup all working together to try and get away from the rest of the pack but going with them is Schwerz in in fourth place axel nocom has dropped to seventh place and we did see kick dober now down to p10 he's dropped six places in this race as uh, Schwerz is the quickest driver on track and he's gone through to p3 and i believe it was uh, it is fernando wheeler jr who is stopped on the inside of turn number three and i believe at least that it is Tyg Malone who pulled into the pits there at the end of the formation lap. He is uh, now quite the distance behind, 28 seconds behind the uh, leader who is currently Luke Millwood, the young Briton leading his countryman as we say. And then Miko Leon Schwerz, the German, in third place. But maybe not for long as there's a colossal battle potentially emerging now. He may go up to second. Miko Leon Schwerz up the inside it's almost three wide oh my goodness me that is absolutely sensational and it is still the 138 of Luke Millward who leads but now in front of the 177 of Miko Leon Schwerz who sets the fastest lap and takes second position as there's a colossal battle emerging for fourth of the 161 machine of Yindra Svoboda battling with I believe that's Thomas Harper for fourth position oh this is turning into an absolutely extraordinary race here in the minis and what a way to kick off a Sunday have you known anything better than this I certainly haven't as Miko Leon Schwerz gets up into first position now in front of Luke Millwood and he's saying come on let's work together and not sure that that tactic is going to work at this stage in the in the race Leon but it's worth a go is the opinion of the young German racer who's having an absolutely fantastic heat having had respectable results yesterday nothing groundbreaking he has really come into his own in this race having come fourth in heat number one he is now seriously in contention for the win in this race. This is a huge, huge battle emerging for first. Miko Leon Schwerz still leads in front of the 161 of Yindra Svoboda, who has passed Luke Millward, who has now been bumped down to third. Oh my goodness me, no, it's Leo Livings up into third. Luke Millward falls down to fourth and up the inside goes the 161. That is Yindra Svoboda, who is still battling for second place. It's a four-cart battle for second place. This is absolutely extraordinary, Chris. Good stuff from the minis once again as they come through turn eight on this penultimate lap. We see the 1-1-8 one, one, uh, there just gesticulating uh, there. That was Axel Mariano Nocom. Right, on to the back straight for the penultimate time and uh, some assistance from Svoboda on Schwerz. It's changed very quickly in this race as they come in towards the chicane for the penultimate time. We have Luke Millwood in third place. Don't count him out next. Then we have Nocom looking over his shoulder was Leo Livings. He's got a lot of work to do to get that race lead back, but he will certainly give it a go. Five for the lead and for the race win. I think it's fair to say Schwerz in a very good position here. He's got a slight gap of a cart length, but that will come down once they hit the run from five down to turn seven, as long as there's no mistakes from Svoboda. And there hasn't been a good exit there from Svoboda. Asking for some assistance from Luke Millwood. Gets in the toe now of Schwerz. Schwerz going defensive. We're going to be side by side down towards turn seven. Selling the dummy there was Svoboda. Now has the run in towards turn number eight. That was a good move there from Svoboda. Takes the lead and now jumping in the seat. Knows there is a long run down towards turn number nine. Head down for Svoboda in the background. We're too wide. It's Livings versus uh, Schwerz. Schwerz gets down the inside to go back into second place but out the final chicane it's going to be Svoboda with a fantastic move down at turn seven to go and take the race win in this final qualifying heat in the minis. Schwerz taking second away in a drag race down to turn nine from Leo Livings and Axel Mariano Nocom in a tough race at times walks away with four. Luke Millwood wants a race leader finishes in fifth place in the end but uh, great drive from Svoboda great move 
uh, at the end as well and very much deserved that race win. We spoke to Svoboda who did say wanted to go for the race win, five to overtake, few laps to do it and that's exactly what uh, Ying, Yindrik Svoboda ended up going and doing. So uh, good stuff from Svoboda, goes and takes the win. And collects the Czech Republic's first win at this year's Nations Cup. Svoboda, best result so far, came in heat number four yesterday, the final mini heat yesterday where he finished in position number four, as we say. And a fantastic win from the young Czech racer, climbing up five positions to claim that victory. Absolutely brilliant stuff there, Chris. It was a cracking race. That is really what you want from uh, from the T4 Mini. So it was Yindra Zvoda who took the race win in front of Mio Leon Schwerz, Miko Leon Schwerz, excuse me, in second place in front of Leo Livings and Mariano Axel Nocom. Luke Millwood finished down in fifth position in front of Jack Harney and Ewan Gavin Bugayon. Thomas Harper finished in eighth in front of Deacon Oliver and Billy Clancy rounding out the top ten. Kicked over finished in 11th in front of Raimi Guzman. Federbacher climbed up five positions to finish in 13th place in front of D Lorenko Diniz. Bernie Gmaris and Tyg Malone was the final finisher, as well as the two non-finishers of Valentina Helena and Fernando Wheeler Jr. Well, what a race that was. I mean, it's very difficult to top something like that. I would say a solid 80% of that race was the leaders just absolutely giving it to each other, knocking seven bells out of each other as far as racing went. And that is exactly what you want. That really has livened up the commentary box, I have to say. But um, we are, uh, I believe that we may have a, a, an advertisement coming up. So I am going to leave you and uh, you can take a look at these messages from our sponsors. hurts you need relief that's deeper than ice you need title the cryotherapy spray that goes beyond cold to take control of the pain this was just easy and it felt so good i was like wow that actually smells good it's like penetrating into my skin which i really love title's powerful plant-based formulation was developed to help world-class athletes recover faster title cryotherapy spray can contribute to total body recovery because it can alleviate muscle pain joint pain even back pain a 360 degree continuous spray relieves pain in even the hardest to reach areas dries fast and lasts when you get older the joints start hurting so the spray is easy you just bring it wherever you are spray it and it feels great within minutes it changes my life in a way that i can still be active and yet not feel aches and pains when i'm sitting there for long hours Tidal cryotherapy available at walmart and these fine retailers visit title.com for locations Preparati che ho portato una cosa per te. Provala e fammi sapere. Ok, mi fido il casco, andiamo? Andiamo, subito. to the grid. Uh, juniors are getting ready, but before we go and speak to them, I'm going to speak to this man here who has, uh, like probably 
some other drivers this weekend has never been interviewed before, so uh, uh, th this should be fun. Uh, uh, Joe Shade from Kartsim, uh, we spoke to Josh uh, yesterday. Yes. Um, uh, he told us a little bit about what's going on, so give us an update. I know we've got a competition going on down there. How's it going? Who's winning? Who's going to get that prize down at Silverstone? Well, it's going really well, so we've been very busy all day. Uh, in an interview, I'll, I'll, I'll keep hold of this, that's all right. Oh, so I'll, I'll be off of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Me again. But yeah, it's going really well, so... Um, we had a 1047, which was the, the time to beat all weekend, and it's just been beaten last like half hour, 1046. Wow. So um, you've got until three o'clock to try beat that. Uh, winner gets half a day's free coaching with us in Silverstone on our big sim. Uh, so wrap around projectors, full motion, and we'll go through whatever track you want, spend a day, and trust me, you'll see the difference. You'll come out flying. Yeah, it's really, really good. You were coaching me earlier. Should I stick to this or get back in the car? Um, may maybe come visit us at Silverstone and then you'll be rapid as well. It's good. Yeah. But no, no, you weren't bad. You weren't bad. We've seen some, some driving this weekend. So, yeah. Okay. yeah so the same good. with the interviews. Going, it's going well, mate. Uh, and uh, uh, the drivers here, been impressed with what you've seen on the sim? Uh, yeah, very impressed. Some people just straight on it. Yeah. it. It can be difficult. You need some adjustment. So we usually say three laps to sort of get your head into it. But some people are straight on it, straight on it. Very impressive. Um, yeah, and some others it takes a bit a bit getting used to, but no, I've been very impressed by some of the driving, yeah. Thanks for coming to see us. Thanks for what you're doing this weekend. Right, I'm gonna go and speak to some drivers. Uh, there we go. Uh, let's, we'll speak to our top two and then we'll work down. How about that? Uh, Truly Adams, we spoke to you yesterday. Uh, solid day yesterday, I think. Were, were you happy with it? Yeah. Um, I wanted to get first in both the heats, but it was a pretty good day. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I guess for today, it's win, get the win in the in this heat, super heat, and get front row for the final. Yeah. But America's going really well, Team USA, right? Yeah, they're doing. We're doing awesome. Proud of the other guys. Yeah. Well, everybody else is doing pretty good too. We just working together and having a great time. Stuff. Glad you're having a good time. Well done. Well done. Keep up. Keep up. Uh, good luck, guys. Good luck. Um, okay. Uh, let's. Chase Piscalia is being very quickly spoken to, as you can see here. Uh, very quickly, Chase. Um, great day yesterday. Well done. Um, more of the same today, I guess, right? You feeling fired up? Yeah, I mean, we're sitting a good second in points. As long as I can just finish this in the top three and uh, beat the guy that's in front of me in points, we can start pulling for the superheat. Best of luck, best of luck. Lo loving the crash helmet as well, by the way. It looks, that looks mega. Uh, who didn't we speak to? We spoke to, we spoke to these guys. Um, Brian Wilson. I don't think, I don't know if we spoke to you yesterday. Let's have a chat with you. I don't think we spoke to you yesterday. Hey, you had a good day yesterday. You, you had a good day. All right, yeah. You sound, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we got P5 in the first tee and we got up to Fifth again in the second heat, but we got a bumper and we got dropped the tenth, so it wasn't. It was all right though. Close racing, are there? Ah, uh, yeah, it's close. It's yeah. fucking unreal. I love it. Good stuff. Good stuff. Good luck. Um, cool. Just uh, come to yourself. Hello. Love the race suit. Liking the suit. Uh, enjoying it so far. Enjoying the experience. Yeah, I'm enjoying this race. It's very good, and I'm. I'm ready to get in final and try to get the best score. Good luck, good luck, thank you. Um, bup, bup, bup. Let's go and speak to this. Yeah, oh, we spoke We spoke to Martin, we spoke to Aaron. Uh, I want to speak to some new drivers if possible. I don't think I don't think we spoke to you. I don't think we spoke to you. Did we speak? I don't know if we did. Uh, enjoying it? Of course. Yeah? More of the same today? Nah. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, exactly. As long as I keep the car in one piece, perfect. <laughs> perfect, perfect. Good luck, good luck. And very quickly, we'll end over here. Uh, hello, how are we feeling ahead of the race? Um, I'm feeling good, you know what? It's been an interesting day and I'm really, really excited. And how's the team getting on, South Africa? Um, it's been good. Enjoying the experience? Enjoying it. It's my first time racing internationally, so it's really an experience. Well, I hope you have an amazing race. Love the race suit as well. <laughs> Perfect. Good luck. Good luck. Okay, I'm going to get run over. So I'm going to run back here. Uh, and they're going to send them. 
There goes the whistle. Back to you. Well, thank you very much, Chris. And uh, great to see there uh, Joe Shade uh, getting involved from Kart Sim, a veteran of the T4 eSports series that I had the great pleasure of commentating on but a few months ago. So let's take you through the starting order for this first T4 Junior Heat of the day, the AC Heat. And it is going to be Truly Adams who starts on pole in front of his countryman Chase Pascalia and Shan Canive lining up in third position. Ricardo Tabut from South Africa is in fourth in front of Taman Vitter and Brian Wilson in sixth. Aaron Coogan lines up in seventh in front of Jakob Josef Havel and Martin Wright in position number eight. Lachlan Shearsmith then starts in front of Tarek Neely and Josh Allen. Anastasia Jurassis, who we just heard from, then starts in front of the two Spaniards of Edward Clark and Jesus Asuncion. Mateo Richter, another American on the grid, starts behind them in front of Victor Hampel and Aston Sanchez. Daniel Brunetsky then starts in front of another Spaniard of Patricia Alcaraz. And Mika Sprentz lines up in the final grid spot as we get ready to start this first T4 Junior heat of today. And uh, hopefully it will be just as good as the mini heat that we have just witnessed, which was absolutely sensational. I hope you didn't miss it on the live stream, but if you did, you can always go back and watch it. Don't watch it now, watch it later when the rest of the racing has concluded. And uh, you will see just what we're talking about when we say it was an absolute corker. Now, as the juniors round their way through the final chicane, through the cut through, lining up into the tram lines, we get ready to go racing. Will Truly Adams lead into turn number one? Let's see now. It's a good start by Chase Pascalia. The two Americans starting well. Shan Canive looking up the inside. Will he be able to take the American? It looks like he will. Chase Pascalia falling down the order into perhaps fifth or sixth position there, but he will have the inside. But it is going to be Truly Adams from Shan Canive. And then I believe that's Ricardo to put. Oh, and there's a driver off there. That is the 276 machine. Let's take a look at who that is. I'm not entirely sure if you can Alcaraz. check that. Excuse me, Chris. It was, oh, it was Patricia Alcaraz. That's terribly unfortunate for the young Spanish lady racer. But uh, nevertheless, still plenty of time in this race to try and pull something back, but it will be difficult. Almost a full sector behind the leading group as they make their way down into turn number seven. It is still Truly Adams who leads from Shan Canive. And then I believe that's Ricardo Tabut or perhaps Taman Vitter in position number three. I can't quite make out the plate, but I believe, I believe it is Taman Vitter. Taman Vitter up into third place, but Chase Pascalia will be hunting him down and looking to retake his rightful position where he started in second and then make his way past first as there is an investigation underway for the 252 machine and uh, that could prove hugely significant. That is Chase Buscalia. Chase Buscalia under investigation, having started second, fallen down to fourth now. He is under investigation, so that could be something to watch out for for the rest of the race and the final classifications, Chris. Yep, not too sure why. Possible jump start, maybe, but uh, not too sure as Pascalia trying to get down the inside there of Vita uh, and Canive. I don't think he meant to pass both, but uh, certainly tried to. It looks like uh, Vita, I think that might be, may have been, uh, Canive rather, may have been pushed wide there, and Vita has gone through. So uh, we see a change uh, out front. In fact, Trilly Adams, it is, has gone backwards to third, isn't it? Canive uh, now leading uh, Vita. I think that might be up to second then. And truly Adams uh, down to third. So Canave on the attack rather than going backwards. This is great stuff from the juniors. Top 10 all together down the back straight. There they are. We can see the 2 2 2 of Coogan just defending slightly from right. Those two were together on a couple of occasions yesterday working together as well and they seem to be doing the same so far this morning head down for the Frenchman Shan Canive who leads us down to the first corner on lap number three Taman Vitter stuck right in behind then it is truly Adams who started from pole position Ricardo Tabut is then in third place Chase Pascalia starting from the front row under investigation for what could possibly be something to do with the start as a change for lead there we go Vitter down the inside but he's ran wide in his attempts to pass Canive it almost opened the door for Trilly Adams but he's now lost two places, one to Tabut and one to Pascalia. Wrong place, wrong time for Trulli Adams. Vita now hits the front of this race as we head down to turn number seven on lap number three. Into eight we go and all the juniors right together in this first heat of the morning. 
And it looks to be a six-cart train. In fact, it could even... It is a seven-cart train, actually, for the lead of the race as Taman Vita still leads Shan Canivet. Is that going to change into the final chicane? Let's take a look. No moves from the Frenchman. Still sitting in P2, having scored a second and a third yesterday. He is looking to take his first win, and he might have an opportunity. He's round the outside. Taman Vita looks to be slow on the inside. Can Shani can stay? Oh, dearie me. I cannot speak. Shan Ganive manages to take the lead. How has he done that from the outside? Here comes Bascalia. Bascalia tries to take second. He can't do it. Taman Vita still defending hard. Bascalia with the fastest lap. Despite being under investigation, he will not be deterred and he is now up into third place having bumped down the 282 machine of Ricardo to put who is now falling down the order oh I'm going to lose my voice with this Chris uh, Shan Canave leading uh, Vita down towards uh, turn at number seven there uh, Chase Piscalia in third place uh, Ricardo to put in fourth Trilly Adams in fifth as uh, uh, we are on lap number four of seven. Here we go down the back straight then. Head down for uh, Canave. Taman Vitter uh, thinks he's found a bit of a gap here to maybe work with the Frenchman as they come in towards the final chicane. This now on lap number four. Across the line, we're into the second half of the race. We've got Biscalia being assisted now from Tabut, or do we? Because Chase Biscalia defending into the first corner there. Now we have, once again, we did have a bit of a gap between the top two and the rest of the chasing pack. That has now completely diminished as Vita took too much curb coming out of turn three, and that's going to lose him a place to chase Biscalia. So Biscalia helping himself to a place. Tame and Vita only himself to blame on that one. Took too much curb through the left-hander at turns three. And that unsettled the car, and now he's lost two places to the Americans in Biscalia and Adams as well. But he will be fighting back. He's going to try and go with Trilly Adams, who tries to get past his countryman there, Chase Biscalia. And on the exit, how about that for uh, some redemption? Taman Vitter there has done the undercut on both Biscalia and Adams and get himself back up to second place. So, uh, place restored for Taman Vitter as quickly as five or six corners. He's back into second and he's already caught the leader in the length of the back straight. This is just exactly what you wanted. Why couldn't we have this yesterday as well as Taman Vita up the inside of Shan Canive, who has been lackadaisical into turn one, has been bumped down and left three wide approaching turn two. Oh, there's contact there. That's Ricardo Tabut and Martin Wright getting a bit too close to each other. Shan Canive has re-inherited second position thanks to that. But look at him. He's getting shuffled down the order like a good one. Martin Wright is suddenly up into a podium. That looks to be truly Adams who's trying to capitalise as well, having fallen down from pole position he's trying to bring his way back up Martin Wright with the fastest lap this is just I cannot breathe fast enough to commentate this Chris I'm gonna pass out in a second but we will still try to remain conscious while this battle is happening in front of us because it is absolutely sensational Great stuff from the juniors onto the back straight. We go. Do you want to pick your head out the window? Uh, I will they, do. I will do. Yeah. <laughs> as they come down towards uh, the final chicane, right? Tamer Vitter now has a gap of about one second. There's your second and third on screen. To Butt and Wright onto the start finish straight we go, and Wright takes a big old look over his shoulder. Though they have long enough to catch Taman Vitter. Well, with how quickly we've seen gaps coming down, down that back straight, possibly, but Wright has gone past to Butt. He wants that second place. He's taken it. I think the race win could possibly be in the bag here for To Butt here. Wright has to be conscious of the fact that he's got to boot and a chasing pack coming in behind. That's being led by Chase Biscalia in fourth. Truly Adams in fifth place. Then behind that is Canave. Right, down towards turn number seven. Biscalia looking over his shoulder at Trilly Adams. We've got the Nations Cup at stake here as well. And the Americans want to take that. And they've both gone past the 282 cup of Ricardo to put there. So two places gained. And also going with them is Shan Canave. On to the back straight. Oh, and that's aggressive defending from Chase Biscalia there. Just got over in time to defend from Trilly Adams into the chicane for the final time. Biscalia defending from Adams, Canave trying to go round the outside, contact almost made there, and that's going to be the win for Bitter. Wright takes second, Biscalia walks away with third, Canave fourth, to put in fifth, Adams in sixth, 
Wilson in seventh, Havel in eighth, Coogan ninth, Shearsmith was in tenth place. Taman Bitter, a mistake halfway through the race, almost lost him it, but Taman Bitter worked very well uh, and executed some great moves there to get himself back into the lead of the race and then get a gap of just under half a second to go and win it as well. Credit to Martin Wright, he's been doing this all weekend, working up from the fourth row of the grid and getting himself up into the top three positions. Chase Buscalium had a tough job defending from Trilly Adams, who in the end lost places to both Canave and to Butts as well. But, uh, good sportsmanship all round. Uh, a bit of a thumbs up there from uh, to but, uh, from Tame and Vita to Martin Wright. Another great junior racer. And the good news is there's one more coming after this. First of all, here's your result from A and C qualifying heat number five. Well, who would have seen this coming? Tame and Vita takes the takes the win having climbed four positions from starting fifth on the grid in front of Martin Wright, who climbed up from ninth on the grid to take second place. Chase Buscalia dropping down a position, only able to take third. Shan Canive and Ricardo Tabuk both missing out on the podium. And Truly Adams started first, finished in sixth in front of Brian Wilson and Jakob Josef Havel, who was... Well, he finished where he started, so a reasonably calm race considering what we saw. Then came Aaron Coogan and Lachlan Shearsmith to round out the top ten, as was said. Tarek Neely finished just outside the top ten in 11th in front of Josh Allen, Edward Clark, Daniel Brunetsky, Matteo Richter, who received a warning flag, I believe, for track limits, but I uh, could be wrong on that front. Then came Anastasia Jurassis, who fell down three positions from where she started in 13th. Mika Sprentz finished in 17th in front of Victor Hampel and Jesus Asuncion. And then came Astrid Sanchez and Patricia Alcaraz, who was unfortunately involved in that incident at the start of the race. Well, what a racing... Uh, what a series of races it has been so far. I mean, things are getting so exciting that my brain can no longer formulate sentences that make sense. And we have so much more coming up. We have another T4 Junior Heat, the B&D groups, facing off against each other in a little less than eight minutes' time. Then we will have the seniors, groups A and C, before B&D take to the track. And then we will have the final Heat of the day, which will be the T4 Senior 165, Heat 3, 1140 local time, as ever, all times given in Spanish local time, which is GMT plus 2, so make sure to take that into consideration if you are watching along on the live stream. Then we will get into the super heats. It's the minis, it's the juniors, it's the second group of juniors, and then the two groups of seniors before we have the 165 super heat. Then we will go for lunch, and as the nerves build up, we will get ready for the finals, the T4 mini final, the T4 junior final, seniors, and then 165s, all before we have the podium presentations, and then crown the T4 Nations Cup champions. The T4 Nations Cup currently held by the United Kingdom, who absolutely blitzed the field last year. But uh, yeah, I have to say, the US having a very strong showing thus far. All right, it didn't go particularly for them in the last heat that we witnessed, that T4 junior heat with Truly Adams falling down the order and Chase Buscalia only managing to able third. But we have another T4 junior heat coming up. Let's go down to Chris in the pre-grid area. Chris, what can you tell us about this? Thanks very much, Simon. Fantastic job there, mate, uh, on the uh, last one. Uh, OK, uh, we'll go and speak to some more drivers, uh, shall we? Uh, let's come down to the front row. We were just speaking about this, actually, uh, before. Uh, we went uh, on air there uh, about the start. It's obviously a bit of a tough one uh, yesterday, Daniel, for starting on the outside. Inside this time, that's where you want to be, right? Yeah. Tell us about the starts yesterday, just, I know, couple of them one of them you fell back to eight is it just outside here is really really tough uh yeah just outside if you like on the if you're on the rubber it's actually quite slippery it does sound grippy but it actually isn't and after that once you've dropped back a little bit very hard to, to get yourself back up isn't it yeah but you're enjoying it you're in a good position overall yep good stuff gotta be on pole position now for the final that's the goal oh well good stuff good stuff <laughs> Top man. Uh, okay, uh, we'll speak to our front row drivers and then we'll head down and try and find some new faces. How about that? Uh, Amelie Ackett's had a good day yesterday. Uh, oh, I like you're facing the car in the right direction, right to the camera. It's almost like you knew I was coming. Um, uh, 
Yesterday was good? Yeah, it went all right, definitely. We're just getting good positions as we can in the heat, so then finally we can definitely push the front. Uh, and, I mean, we saw a really good race there. I don't know, you might not have caught much of it, but that's been a, a, a kind of sign, very close racing, six to eight for the lead all the time. Yeah, it's good fun, definitely. Um, very close and enjoying it a lot. And this track seems to lend itself to that as well. Yeah. yeah. Good stuff. Well, best of luck uh, for this one. Uh, we'll see how you get on. Thanks for speaking to us. Uh, let's try and find some new faces. I'm trying to think who I haven't sp spoken to. Ah. Resto. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hello. Hello. How are we, are we? I mean, Team USA is going very well so far. Yeah, yeah, very good, very good, very fast. Trying to be at the top for each class. Yeah. Uh, where's, that, where's that come from, would you say? You're part of the team. Is there a lot of teamwork before the event uh, and whilst you've been here, track walks, things like that? Oh, no, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's just a team effort for everyone and we're all fast and we all help each other. Good team spirit as well. Uh, that seemed like that on the tra on the uh, parade. Yeah, very good team spirit. And yourself, talk us through how you're getting on as well. Oh, uh, not good. A uh, second and a fourth, and try to go for the win in this one. Yeah. Many people watching back home. Oh uh, yeah, a lot. Family, a lot of family. Many people want to give a shout out to. Uh, probably my dad, my mom, my grandma, my family, my entire family, my team. Good stuff. Well, I'm sure they're watching through that camera right Thank there. You. Go and doing proud. Well done. You're doing a great job so far. Thank you, thank you for that, guys. Uh, yeah, cool. I, I don't, know if, I don't know if we've spoken already, but uh, we haven't. Okay, perfect, perfect. Hello, those are really nice race gloves, by the way. Uh, absolutely mega. Um, uh, how are we doing so far? Um, we've been good so far. It's been um, ups and downs, but we we figured it out. So we're hoping we get to the front. We've seen you at the front uh, quite a bit. So uh, yeah, seemingly very good packs out there. Yeah. We've just been finding the gear and stuff, so we've just been finding the setup. Um, and, and, and the track? Oh, they are loud, aren't they? Enjoy, enjoying the track? Yeah, I like the track. It's very flowy. Favorite, favorite part? Favorite, favorite corner? Um, the chicane. Okay. Good, luck, good luck, good luck. Uh, who haven't I spoke to? I, I don't know if we've spoken. Uh, I, don't, I, don't know, I don't know if we have. I'll try again. Uh, hello. Good weekend so far. Sorry? Good weekend so far. Yeah, um, hopefully I can pick up some places today, but yeah, we're going to try our best. Good luck. Good luck. Uh, I don't know if we've spoken to... No, we certainly haven't. We'll come to this one. Hello. Looking mega, I have to say. Uh, I'm going to come around this side. A little bit more. Should be able to hear me a bit better now. Uh, mate, you look mega, by the way. Race suit, helmet, very good, very good. Got to be worth a tenth or two. Uh, how, are we, how are we going on track? Yeah, good. Um, all qualifying, starting tenth. Obviously, a bit of ground to make up if we want to win the heat. But uh, at the pace we're going at, we should be making the final. So, yeah, head down and keep pushing. Good to be away racing in a sunny country, right? Don't get much better than that. Yeah, it's good. Uh, it's been very hot this weekend. So, the track's been very grippy and a uh, good condition for for racing so yeah good luck good luck um oh we got a bit of time we got a bit of time uh i think we spoke to i think we spoke to joe uh we will keep moving i don't know if we did or not uh have we have we spoke to you we have okay cool we'll keep moving thanks for being honest i do appreciate that uh let's come to this man here hello well uh how are we doing how are we getting on so far enjoying it uh, yeah yeah, good, good weekend. Fun week. Is it fun? Well, has it been a fun weekend so far? Yeah, it has. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, join the join the circuit. Race it. Racing's good. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Um, I have the inside line now, so it should be good. I got hit off in P2 left yesterday, so. Well, we'll let you get ready for the race. Thanks for speaking to us. Thank you. Uh, cool. Uh, Thirty seconds. Uh, we will speak to one more. Uh, hello. Uh, how are we doing? Good weekend? Yeah, yeah, I am good. I am trying to be fast so I will get in finals. Good stuff. Best of luck. Uh, where are we going to go? Are we going to get up Get up the order here? What? Are we going to get up the grid this time? Are we going to get a few places here? Yeah, yeah, I hope so. Well, good luck. Good luck. Thank you.
good luck to the drivers. And we will speak to a few more. Uh, any we haven't spoke to, I will try my best to speak to every single one. Oh. There we go. Back to you. Thank you, Chris. So good to hear from our Mini drivers. And hello to everyone who's watching back home and cheering on our drivers from afar. They may not be here in person, but they are here in spirit now. Let's take you through the grid for this, the second junior heat. It is going to be Daniel Hartley who starts on pole in front of Amelie Ackett in position number two. Nico Franke, the German, starts in third place in front of Eric Cuesto and Chase Garcia Lee, the two Americans, in front of Elias Fornes, the Spaniard, and William Omar, in front of Matthias Glover, Phil Becker, Keith Burke, who we heard from there, Mark Fleming, Joey Carney, and Antonio Martinez as well as Jorn Helder and Richard Seca in front of Daniels Petris Bazins and Pri Trevino. Brooke Loretti lines up in front of Kadilis Mitrievs and Warren Russell. And then Juan Diego Perez rounds out the grid. So a cracking grid we have for this T4 Junior Heat, the second of the Junior Heats this morning. And what a heat it is set to be if the racing that we have seen already this morning is anything to go by. It should be absolutely fantastic. And uh, sure enough, we will be seeing some fantastic battles and potentially a new winner. I mean, we've had Martin Wright, we've had Ricardo Tabut, we've had Chase Biscalia, we've uh, had, well, actually Martin Wright has won two of the heats this weekend. So uh, as far as the juniors are concerned, he is doing very, very well for himself and flying the flag very high for the United Kingdom as they round the final chicane. We get ready to go racing. It's Hartley on the inside, Ackett's on the outside. And we go racing now, and it's a good start by Daniel Hartley. Emily Ackett's falling down the order. She's fallen victim to Nico Franca, who's up the inside and through. Emily Ackett's being hung out to dry. It's very difficult to make moves on the outside on lap one. Emily Ackett's falling down potentially to fourth or fifth, really hammering that inside curb on turn two. But it is Daniel Hartley who leads from Nico Franca. And then comes the 218 machine. Excuse me, 21. Uh, I'm not entirely sure who that is. So let's just go back to Daniel Hartley and Nico Franca for now until we get an update live timing as they round their way through turn number five. Amelie Ackett looks to be defending there from I believe that might be Eric Cuesto who's behind her and attacking hard as they come down now into turn number seven. Still as you were as far as the leaders are concerned. Daniel Hartley maintaining his lead off the start in front of Nico Franca and Amelie Ackett is in, uh, down to fifth actually now here we get a good look at the numbers it is the 215 machine in third position that is Chase Gassiot Lee who has managed to climb up into a podium position having started in four uh, having started in fifth excuse me but look at this three wide almost down the straight Amelie Atkins looking to make moves on the outside it didn't work for her on lap one can she make it work on lap number two no is the answer to that it is a strong no and it still is let us take a look it is the it is to, oh my goodness me, look at this, a move there by Chase Gassi Lee up the inside of Nico Franca, who seemed to just get it all wrong through turn number three. And this is really causing havoc as the two for one of William Omar seems to be attacking Eric Cuesto. Amelie Ackett's trying to make something of this, but finding it very difficult as she's now falling victim to, I believe that's Phil Becker and Matthias Glover behind her. And this battle, I mean, <laughs> Daniel Hartley has checked out in front. He's got seven tenths of a gap to uh, that is Nico, oh, excuse me, Chase Gassiot Lee, who is now behind him. And this is really turning into a battle for the podium more than it is a battle for the win. Great start from Hartley mentioned on the grid how he struggled starting on the outside, but inside is where he wants to be, and a gap is what he needs. That's exactly what he has. However, if Gassio, Lee, and Cuesto work together here, then there is a chance they can go and chase him down. And that's what the Americans are going to do. They spoke on the grids. We spoke to Eric about how there's such a good team spirit around in the American camp and how they are working together. Oh, as we say that, a little bit of contact. There we go. That's uh, uh, not the, I don't know if there was contact or if that was maybe a bit too much curb, one or the other. But uh, nevertheless, it's lost uh, Gassio Lee a lot of places. I don't know if it was a, either a mistake or a little bit of assistance, but uh, Cuesto nevertheless goes on. William Omar uh, goes with him in third place now. He will help himself uh, to a position. 
Round turn eight now they go. The gap to Daniel Hartley is a second and it's already starting to come down. Look at it, eight tenths of a second. Let's check back in with that when they hit the start finish line because the too far one of William Omar is pushing Cuesto all the way into the chicane. Eight tenths should become around six tenths of a second when they cross the start finish line. Up to the line they go. And does the gap come down? It goes to seven tenths of a second. So Daniel Hartley's lead is under big threat here as Gassio Lee begins to come back up the order, making a place there on Becker. And it was Elias Fornes who spun out there at the chicane, having been running in ninth position. And there's the 269 machine. Let's take a look That's, at uh, who that is. Diego Perez. It's Juan Diego Perez there, who was running in 19th now. And uh, fastest lap there for William Omar. So really pressing on in third position, using that, uh, that slipstream and that bump draft with uh, Eric Cuesto to really try and push down on Daniel Hartley. That gap down to almost six and a half tenths. And you can see as we look out the commentary box, it is closing cart length after cart length. And this could very easily become a ferocious battle for the lead as Daniel Hartley makes his way down the back straight into the final chicane. The leaders spread out quite a lot more than we saw in the mini heats just previous to this but still closing up. And this little train that we have going on between Eric Cuesto, William Oman, I mean, Amelie Ackett's could very easily get involved in it as well, could really start pushing uh, Daniel Hartley to the limit as Amelie Ackett sets the fastest lap of 105.8 as they make their way into the chicane. Still no drama, it is very much just putting lap after lap in, but look at Daniel Hartley. Look at how much he's fallen into the clutches of Eric Cuesto. Eric Cuesto up the inside. Hartley fights back. Can Eric Cuesto get the cutback? He's trying his best. He's on the inside, and this is going to benefit William Omar hugely. Amelie Ackett is licking her lips, thinking, what can I make of this? But it is Eric Cuesto who has managed to take the lead. William Omar attacking him round the outside, and Daniel Hartley down to third, now battling with William Omar, who maintains a second place. But Eric Cuesto up into first. Great driving from Amelie Ackett's great move from Cuesto there, who may not have planned to go through at turn four, but the opportunity presented itself. Caught Daniel Hartley very quickly, and he went through. Daniel Hartley trying his best to fight back, but wasn't quite able to get through. However, he's still right there in third. He's right behind Amelie Ackett's, who's trying to encourage him to push with her. But Daniel Hartley is going to go by and take second place and in fact take the race lead goes by William Omar for the lead and by Eric Cuesto and Amelie Ackett's going with him so it's now Hartley and Ackett's 1-2 William Omar uh, was a little bit frustrated that Daniel Hartley wasn't going with him there but he's gone and taken the race lead in one move fantastic driving from Daniel Hartley who hits the front once more Amelie Ackett's in P2 any one of these Four could win, and then it's a gap of around nine tenths of a second back to the chase impact into the braking zone at turn number seven. Now back to turn eight. Daniel Hartley knows where the attacks could be coming. Will he go defensive down the back straight? I'd expect so. Let's see as he comes uh, onto the back straight. Amelie Ackett looks over her shoulder, pushes Daniel Hartley down the back straight. Clever driving that from Ackett sees they've got a little bit of a gap over the field. William Omar running a little bit deep on the brakes into the chicane that opens up a gap for the top two and William Omar now forced to go defensive down towards turn one as we start the final lap Simon. And brilliant driving there from Amelie Ackett to follow Daniel Hartley through fantastic strategic thinking there from the young Briton it is a British one two as we currently sit on the final lap the final two sectors is it going to be Hartley is it going to be Ackett is it going to be Omar it's currently a British one two and three who which Britain is going to win it or can Eric Cuesto or maybe even Chase Gassia Lee make his way through in uh, some turn of events if there was some drama they would be in pole position to capitalize on it but it seems like Hartley has it all under control Ackett's doesn't seem to be able to do too much at this stage she's having a look up the inside but not able to get alongside but here they come along the back straight is Ackett's going to be able to do anything she's almost close to William Omar behind than she is to Hartley in front it is going to be Hartley who leads into the final chicane look at this though William Omar up the inside of Amelie Ackett's who's it going to be it is going to be Daniel Hartley who takes the flag 
flag, Amliak is finishing in second, and oh my goodness me, at the flag, Eric Cuesto manages to take third in front of William Omar, who has been pipped at the post. That was absolutely sensational, and Eric Cuesto, having taken a second place in yesterday's heats, manages to take a third place now. That is absolutely brilliant attack from the young American. Great driving from Daniel Hartley to go and take the race win. Lost it at one stage, but pulled off some great moves to fight back. Amelie Akis are going with him with that fantastic overtake into turn one, third to first. Thank you very much, said Daniel Hartley as he went and took the race win. Amelie Akis helped herself to second place in the process. Eric Cuesto, the best of the rest after that, holding off the likes of William Omar and Chase Gassio Lee, uh, Nico Frank, those guys catching up just a little bit too late in that battle. We now know our top four, uh, in the top four rows in the qualifying for the super heat. It will be Martin Wright and Chase Viscalia, row one, Taman Vitter, Shan Canave, row two, Cuesto and Hartley, row three, Akis and Tabut, row four. Here's the result from heat number six. Well, what a race it was. We weren't let down by that last lap, were we? It was Daniel Hartley who took the win in front of Amelie Ackett's in second and Eric Cuesto just about managing to finish in third with only a four one hundredth of a second gap to William Omar behind. Chase Gassiet Lee finished where he started in fifth place in front of Nico Franca and Antonio Martinez in seventh. Phil Becker finished in eighth in front of Keith Burke, Jorn Helder and Mark Fleming just missing out on the top ten. Richard Saker gained three positions from where he started and finished in twelfth in front of Joey Carney and Pre Trevino from the Philippines. Daniels Petris Bazins finished in fifteenth place in front of Matthias Glover and Brooke Loretti in seventeenth. Warren Russell finished in eighteenth in front of Kirill's Mitrievs in 19th and Elias Fornes unfortunately getting involved in that incident at turn number three spinning out and losing much time and finished in 20th place and then Juan Diego Perez in 21st well 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 what a race that was ladies and gentlemen I do hope you're enjoying it if you are watching along on the live stream and you do enjoy the racing that you're seeing you can find out more on Tillotson.ie and make sure to follow us on all of our social medias. The next race will be coming up in just shy of eight minutes time and that will be the T4 Senior Heat number one. That is Group 1 who will be taking to the track for their 11 lap heat, so two laps longer than the heats that we have seen for the juniors and the minis, which will mean two laps more of absolutely frantic action as we get ready to go, I'm sure we will get a chance to go down to Chris in the pit lane and have a word with some of the drivers who will, at this stage, will be mentally preparing for the super heats and the finals. This is very much the last hurdle. This is the last place where you can really learn the last details of the track before it's full attack for the super heats and the finals. The finals will be coming up at 15.30 Spanish local time. The minis starting us off and then working our way through the evening until the T4 Senior 165 final at 16.30. And then the live stream will still cover the podium presentations as it did last year at 1700. So now we are going to go to a short break. Big thank you to our sponsors who are making this possible. Let's look at what they have to say.
everything hurts, you need relief that's deeper than ice. You need Tidal, the cryotherapy spray that goes beyond cold to take control of the pain. This was just easy, and it felt so good. I was like, wow, that actually smells good. It's like penetrating into my skin, which I really love. Tidal's powerful plant-based formulation was developed to help world-class athletes recover faster. Tidal cryotherapy spray can contribute to total body recovery because it can alleviate muscle pain, joint pain, even back pain. A 360-degree continuous spray relieves pain in even the hardest to reach areas, dries fast, and lasts. When you get older, the joints start hurting. The spray is easy. You just bring it wherever you are, spray it, and it feels great within minutes. It changes my life in a way that I can still be active and yet not feel aches and pains when I'm sitting there for long hours. Tidal Cryotherapy, available at Walmart and these fine retailers. Visit Tidal.com for locations. Ciao Gian, preparati che ho portato una cosa per te. Provala e fammi sapere. Ok, mi fido il casco, andiamo? Andiamo, subito. Welcome back to the grid. Uh, as you can hear, the carts are getting fired up uh, behind me, as are the drivers uh, as well. Uh, everyone struggling a little bit with the heat. It is really heating up, just coming up to 11 o'clock local time. Uh, I want to try and speak to some new faces. Uh, so we've got Cameron Reed uh, on the front row of Nico Rossa. We'll get one very quick word. Uh, great day yesterday. More of the same today. Yeah, hopefully so. You know, Team America, we're working together. Hopefully we can just keep pushing to the front, make the smartest decisions, and hopefully we can come out with the win. Keep up the amazing work. Keep it up. Uh, and this, this man might come and join us in commentary, actually. Uh, we'll, hopefully. We'll come back. We'll come back. We're good. We're good. Um, yep. All good so far. More of the same. Yeah, all good. I keep I'm enjoying the experience. Yeah, it's been a great week. Uh, I love this series, it's all equal equipment, everyone can show how really good of a driver they are. It's been a blast with Team USA, we're killing it. Come and join us later as well. Uh, okay, let's go and speak some new faces. Who haven't we spoke to, who haven't we spoke to? Uh, I don't know if we spoke to this man yesterday. Hello, Hello. how are we doing so far? I'm good, the bad fun. Enjoying the experience? Did it. The race is going really well? Yeah. yeah. Some good moves yesterday. Yeah. yeah. I hope it's going to like the way it is, but yeah. Keep up the good work. Keep it up. Uh, okay. We spoke to these guys. Um, ah, hello. 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 How's it going so far? Eh, pues muy bien. Eh, pues hola México. Pues ahora sí que vamos a repartir Chile aquí en Estados Unidos. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Um, okay. Da -da. Hello. How are you? How's it going? Uh, it's going okay. Could be a lot better. Yeah, but finals day. Yeah. Anything can happen now, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Uh, goals, top 10? Um, I I'll try to get at least fifth place, but yeah. Good luck. Good luck. Uh, I'll speak to Joe. Hello, Joe. How are we doing? Oh, all, good. all good? Yeah, all good. Yeah, good to see you. Loving the crash helmet. Loving the suit. Yeah. Looking back. Enjoying it? Yeah, it's been a great, great, great weekend, yeah. What goals for today? Top five would be nice, so we'll see. Good luck, mate. Good luck. I think that's all we have time for. I don't want to get run over this time. Um, we will speak to some more people next time. Uh, this man's going to be very nervous very shortly. Uh, How's this one going to go? We're doing all right here. I think the Americans will take one and two. Very bold. Back to you in commentary. 
a 1-2 prediction for Team USA. Is it unreasonable? Certainly not. As uh, Cameron Reed has shown terrific form thus far this weekend. Her first time here in Valencia at the Nations Cup and she will be starting on pole in front of Noah Rossa, her countryman, starting alongside her in position number two. Number two, it's an all Irish second row with Andrea De Bayer and Jack Dillon lining up alongside each other. Then comes Tyler McIntyre and Danny Krischer in front of Marco Aurelio and Yuri Bechtold in position number two. Uh, Yuri Bechtold, position number nine. And then rounding out the top ten is Jason Bradbury in position ten, obviously. <laughs> then comes Nicholas Stanev in P11 in front of Emilio Vasquez, Davis Salmons and Matt Willeman in front of Bram Osavada, Calvin Pratt, Rudy Schussler and Jose Casada. Then comes Jason Herrera-Silva and Colin Munley. Ricardo Gasparini starts in front of Jarrett Forheis and Leo Geisler in front of Francisco Gambin and Riley Jones-Rodway. Sebastian Alvarado and Chan Anta line up next and with Joseph Garbo rounding out the grid it is set to be an absolutely brilliant T4 senior heat this qualifying heat as we say 11 laps for the seniors and the 165s and this AC heat it will be very interesting to see if that prediction of a US 1-2 will come true and with three of the top five being US drivers I have to say there is a strong, strong likelihood. Will Andre Dabaya and Jack Dillon be able to do anything about it? Only time will tell as we get ready to go racing. And we're away now, and it looks to be a good start from the front row. It's a good start by Noah Rossa. He's side by side with Cameron Reed coming down into the first corner. He's managed to take the lead. That is an extraordinary start from P2 from Noah Rossa. Takes the lead from Cameron Reed, who falls down into second and up into position number three. I believe that's Jack Dillon, as there's a spinner there. That is the 335 machine. Let's take a look at who that is. That's uh, Jarrett Forheis, another American racer who has had an incident there leaving turn number one, I believe it was, just getting hung out to dry on the outside and falling right the way down to the back of the pack. But it is still USA 1 and 2. It is Jarrett Forheis in front of, excuse me, no, it is Noah Rossa in front of Cameron Reed, who is still battling away for second as we come on to the back straight and there is someone stopped on the exit of turn number seven and that will bring out a yellow flag and if that can't be cleared away it is the 368 machine let's take a look at who that is on the timing that is Jose Quesada the Guatemalan driver who is stuck on the exit of turn seven and that's completely eliminated turn seven as an overtaking opportunity that could be hugely significant until that can be fixed oh and there's an incident there on the exit of the final corner it is the uh, I can't see what numbers they are. I'll see it as they come across the line. It is the 327, and it is, it's Emilio Vasquez and Calvin Pratt. So the Dominican driver and the Irishman having a coming together. We haven't seen too many incidents there at the final corner, but alas, the day hath come that we have seen a crash there, and this time both of them getting away reasonably unscathed, just having lost a huge amount of time, unfortunately. Well, I mean, it's been a dramatic start to this affair. Thankfully, those carts seem to have been cleared away and there is no more yellow flag. So it is back to racing action with Noah Rossa still leading the way. Yep, doing a great job is Noah Rossa. Uh, head down, down the back straight now as uh, the two Irishmen working together behind Jack Dillon and Andre Tobias. Uh, don't attempt to go down the inside into the final chicane. Cameron Reed not the best start to the race, down to P4, but plenty of time to go. Danny Krischer up to P5. Then it is McIntyre, Treacy, uh, Bradbury, Bechtold, and then Wilman is in P10. Here they come, down towards turn number three. Long way to go in this race. We're only on, on the third of nine laps, and the gap's now opened into four, and that's going to be the race lead for Jack Dillon, who hits the front of this heat number five in T4 Senior, takes with him Andre Dubaya. So going down to third place, just like that, is Noah Rossa, who is now going to be the one in third in queue here, pushing these guys along. Cameron Reed. This will help her slightly in her attempts to close these three down. Are we going to see another change? Andre De Bayer there was tempted for a second to get down the inside of Jack Dillon, but Dillon holds on for the time being, and now De Bayer is going to take the opportunity to go by Dillon, telling him to 
go with him here as Andre Debaya goes by Jack Dillon, who sensibly just slots straight back into straight back into behind to limit the damage lost to the others. And look over the shoulder for Noah Rossa as we go on to lamp number four. The gap to Cameron Reed is one second. Last time around, Cameron Reed did a 105.9, and the leaders all doing 106s. So Cameron Reed is faster than the top three she is closing in the gap eight tenths of a second that's come down i'd say now to about six and this is going to be really interesting to see can cameron reed climb back up the order and get involved in that scrap for first if she does well then we could very well see her carving through the field but that remains to be seen it all depends can that gap be closed down she is going to be hoping and praying that the top three go fighting with each other as we have andre de jack dylan and noah rossa in uh, roughly where they started uh, the two irishmen making or taking first blood in this t4 senior heat and uh, making up the most positions putting themselves in the most advantageous position that they can as they come down into the final chicane still no drama as the 327 has been given a warning flag i'm not entirely sure which driver that is but uh, it's not good news for them in any case as we see a couple of battles going on down through the field but still no real change with the leaders Andre De Beyer and Jack Dillon just trying to work together and break away from Noah Rossa but it's getting increasingly difficult and look at how much Cameron Reed has closed in Andre De Beyer setting the fastest lap of the race so far a 1 minute 5.8 and only marginally quicker than Jack Dillon behind everyone doing 105.8s so it is an extremely close race while there isn't a whole lot of overtaking, we can expect that to ramp up in the next number of laps. As they round their way through turn seven and onto the back straight, the wind picked up momentarily, but still remarkably little, which means that uh, temperatures will be getting up very high compared to when we had that nice breeze providing a tailwind down the start finish straight and a headwind down the back straight, making drafting, bump drafting, slip streaming and all of the likes incredibly important. Andre de Beyer tucking down behind the wheel, sitting down into his seat as Yuri Bechtold passes a message to James Tracy behind saying, let's work together, tucking down behind his own steering wheel. Andre de Beyer though still leading the way, less than a tenth of a second though to Jack Dillon behind. Cameron Reed sets the fastest lap. She is in business now folks, and she has really closed up to the back of Noah Rossa in front. So it is Noah Rossa in third position, but that could change. And suddenly, the prediction of, an, of a US 1-2 may be in jeopardy. It's on lap five of nine, down into turn number seven. Still no action. I believe that the four of them are just using this fantastic slipstream train that they have to break away from everyone else behind. Tyler McIntyre has been left in the dust almost. Three seconds is nearly the gap. 2.8 seconds, if we're being specific about it, to Tyler McIntyre in fifth position. Another American. So it is the three Americans, the three amigos, as all of the American team seem to be working together, formulating a plan on how to maximize their points. And the plan at the minute seems to be break away from everyone else. Uh, the last chance possible before any response can be initiated. Take the lead and take second place. As to who takes which, that remains to be seen. But it is still, for this moment in time, Andre De Beyer, who leads the way in front of Jack Dillon, Noah Rossa, and then Cameron Reed in fourth. Great driving all around. Great driving from Cameron Reed. Fastest lap for her. She's fourth in this queue, you can see, uh, in the lead battle. Little bit of a gap there for Dubai. Did a very good first sector, and Noah Rossa sees that happening. Goes straight down the inside of Jack Dillon. That's a change for second place. Watch Cameron Reed, third in that queue. P4 on the road. Is she going to go down the inside coming in towards the final chicane? She pushes along Jack Dillon. They are making their way down to the final final chicane there's a gap of seven tenths to the leader really these three have to work together uh, to get after the leader Andre Tobaya who has gone down the start finish straight we go in the background that's McIntyre leading Krisha and Joe Bradbury who is doing a, a good job on this lap the gap six and a half tenths now to leader Andre Tobaya as they come 
up towards turn number three. Noah Rossa in P2 there. Uh, some big movers down the order, by the way. Ricardo Gasparini up nine places into 12th. Uh, Leo Geisler is up 10 places to 13th. And Riley Jones Rodway up 11 places to 14th place. So well done to those. We did have some misfortunes for a couple of the other drivers. Uh, but nevertheless, those three absolutely charging up the order doing a fantastic job in this race okay six and a half tenths is now the gap it is coming down make that five and a half gap is coming down to the leader a look over the shoulder for andre de Bayer, the chasing pack doing exactly what they need to do as they come through turn number nine into the final chicane can they catch Andre De Bayer in time? Last lap board is presented to them now as they go across the line. If they work together, they will be with Andre De Bayer when they hit the back straight next time around if they can repeat that lap time. And you can see Noah Rossa is now on the tail of the Irishman into turn three on this final lap. Four for the lead. Any one of them could do it as a delay for Jack Dillon. So we're two groups of two now on this final lap. And a move that for the lead there, that is Noah Rossa getting past Andre De Bayer there for position number one. A fantastic move on the last lap in the second sector with very little time for Andre De Bayer to respond. Can he go around the outside? He's having a look. Can he get the cut back? He's having a look again. It's going to be very difficult to hold that around the outside and still nothing can be made of it. But it is Andre De Bayer who has fallen down behind uh, Noah Rossa. Noah Rossa set to take i believe his first win of the weekend yes it is his first no his second win of the weekend he's taken a first and a second so far can he make it two firsts and a second through the final chicane andre de Bayer tries to take him it's gonna be a run to the line this is incredible stuff and it is andre de Bayer who takes the flag by the slightest of margins by 36 one hundredths of a second from Noah Rossa and Jack Dillon a further 31 one hundredths of a second behind Rossa Cameron Reed just missed out on all of the action but it was Andre de Bayer when I said there was no time for a response I take it back Andre de Bayer I doth my cap to you sir great driving from Andre de Bayer takes the win in that one and that puts him p5 in the intermediate classification going into the super heats we still have one more to come from the seniors but he's in a good position here in terms of where he will be they will split them into two groups uh, so currently Dubaya would be on the front two rows uh, for his super heat well done to him Noah Rossa likewise is in a good position second in the overall classification Jack Dillon will be very pleased with a third place. All of them driving very well, likewise Cameron Reed. Four drivers split by under one and a half tenths of a second. That is T4 Senior Heat 5. Here's the result in full. And what a result it was for Andre de Bayer taking the flag at the last possible opportunity in front of Noah Rossa and Jack Dillon in third. Cameron Reed fell down to fourth from pole position. That leaves her in third in the overall point standings after the heats in front of Danny Krischer and Tyler McIntyre, the fellow American in position number six. Matt Villeman finished in P7 in front of Jason Bradby in position number eight. Nicholas Stanev, the only Bulgarian ever to take to a T4 Nations Cup grid, finished in ninth in front of Yuri Bechtold in tenth. Rudy Schussler finished in 11th in front of Ricardo Gasparini and Leo Geisler. Riley Jones Rodway climbed up 11 positions to finish in 14th in front of James Tracy and Marco Aurelio. Colin Munley then followed in front of Francisco Gambin, Jarrett Vorhais and Sebastian Alvarado. Chan Anta finished in position number 21 in front of Jason Herrera Silva and Josef Garbo, excuse me, Joseph Garbo, in front of Emilio Vasquez and Calvin Pratt. Bram Osavada finished in 26th in front of Davis Salmans in 27th with Jose Quesada unable to finish. Oh, well, that was quite the race, wasn't it, ladies and gentlemen? That was absolutely extraordinary. Oh, my goodness me, I'm just... I'm so glad that I brought my throat sweets with me because I am going to need them. I was scared this morning that I'd lose my voice and, well, I mean, if the racing continues to be this good, I very well might. Goodness me, that was an absolutely sensational battle, wasn't it? And we can expect plenty more of that as I get the thumbs up from Lauren, the photographer.
who is currently walking across the grid. Oh, he looks like he's going to take a picture of me. I'm going to give the thumbs up to Lauren there. Hello, Lauren. How are you? Lovely stuff. Really, he's got a huge camera there. It could, I mean, you know, there's there's a certain amount of compensating that must be going on for a man with a camera that big. But uh, he could probably take very good images of the moon with something like that. It was, it was uh, I mean, it's a significant investment, but I'm sure it was very worthwhile as uh, all of our media team putting in a fantastic shift. Yes, Lauren, I mean, you can continue taking photos. You need, don't need to look at me. As all of the media team doing a fantastic job this weekend. And uh, you can keep up to date with all of the uh, social media content on Tillotson Racing social media on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube and TikTok. As well as all of our on-track photographers who will be posting their photos in the coming days. As I get away from Josh East as well who's currently sitting in the shade just opposite the commentary box. And uh, I think he's having a lot of fun. He's, he's, he's holding his drone in his hand. I'm not sure if he crashed it or something. Hopefully not. Because, no, he hasn't crashed it. He's shaking his head. And uh, I believe that Chris is ready down in the pre-grid area. Chris, what do you have to tell us about this next race that's coming up? Cheers, Simon. Yep, I'll let you catch your breath back after that one. Uh, yes, down here on Senior Grid, as you can see, drivers getting ready to go for what is going to be the final heat after this we will know the grid spoil the super heat uh, that will be their last chance to score points so this will essentially set the grid for those super heats that will be the last chance then to score as little points as possible and then after that the points will all be put together then we'll have the grid for the finals but those points from this these heats and those super heats will determine who is the Nations Cup winner and you'll have to hang on to the podium to find out who that is but Team USA looking very strong Team Netherlands got a strong contender up here Team Ireland looking strong Team UK plenty of contenders up there okay let's go and speak to some new faces I believe I spoke to all these guys uh, yesterday so I'm gonna go to this I don't believe we spoke yesterday I don't know if we did but uh, if not why not again how are we doing great yeah good race so far yeah, finished uh, the two heats fifth, uh, both, so great feeling. That's, uh, that's all right. Do you reckon we can get top three this time? Yeah. Why not? I'm going to bring you some luck. Yeah, thank you. Let's do it. Top three. Let's go. Let's go. Okay. Um, uh, ah, we sp uh, Obviously, Billy Elbow now with uh, Ghana. We spoke to this guy yesterday. Great mechanic with him, uh, who I believe once worked with Pedro Hilbrand who was a world champion. Um, I believe we spoke yesterday, likewise. I'm trying to find some new faces. Water down the back. Water down the suit again. No? Uh, okay. Uh, let's speak to this driver here. Who's, uh, I don't know, we might, have a we might have a problem there. So I'll come back uh, and I'll go around here uh, and speak to yourself. Hello. So, How are we doing? All good? Doing all right, you know, a lot of issues this weekend, just trying to survive, get to the front. Reckon we can move forward? This session, I'm going to try my best. Uh, might have a little bit of black on my side part after it, but we'll see. Best of luck for it. Best of luck for it. Thank you for speaking to us. Uh, I'm going to go back to this driver. Problems have been fixed. Hello. Uh, all problems fixed okay now, seem like? Yep. Uh, I think it will be better now. Just adjustments. Do some adjustments and uh, hope. For a good race. How are you enjoying the experience of all this? Uh, it's a very nice experience. Uh, uh, yeah, it's a great race. <laughs> good luck. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Best of luck. Um, okay, let's keep going. Uh, speak to some more drivers. Um, I don't think we spoke yesterday. Hello there. Hello. How are we doing? All good. Yeah, um, having a good weekend? This is going pretty good. I have to better my driving, but I'm still, it's my second time here. Uh, you know, uh, this one, last heat, last chance to score points. Huh? Last chance to score points. Huh? Are we, are we going to get a best result here? Yeah. Loving the gloves, the suit. Looks mega, mate. Looking good, looking good, looking very sharp. Love it. Uh, okay. How long have I got? Uh, okay. Quick, quick, quick. Hello. Hello. How are we doing? Great. Uh, how have we been doing so far? Um... Oh, 50, 50. Are we going to send it this time and get our best result? Yes. Good luck. Hey, put it there. Let's go. 
Let's go. Right, that's all I got time for. Um, I am going to uh, walk down. All going good so far? Oh, oh, what's happened here? No, no, no. I'm uh, oh, we're, we're, we're on live at the moment. Uh, so I thought something was going to happen there. I'm going to go back to you, Simon. They're off. Well, thank you very much for that, Chris. And our last T4 senior heat before we have the super heats and the finals coming up now. And what a heat it is set to be. Some fantastically talented drivers in there. Tim Van Ellersweg, Colin Warren, Wesley Bowden, all incredibly fast. And they make up our top three drivers. Following them is Owen Roberts and Christopher Zauner in front of Santiago Hamida and Philip Ghana, the only Nigerian ever to take to the Nations Cup in anger. Then comes Juan Handong and Jose Itabide in front of Omar Perez, Andres Klinzas, Klinkans, and Malk West in front of Miguel Pada Goede and James Andres III. Václav Strakati then lines up in front of Elizabeth Joanna Sols, who had an unfortunate incident in one of yesterday's heats, in front of Santiago Garza Brizeno and Alexander Fleming. Then comes Mauro Camacho Balboa in front of Hannah Fridberg, John Nuttall, Yanis Chudovs, and Frederico Peters in front of Fabian Feliciano Ribello, Ellen Donnelly, Roisin Sweeney, Aaron Doyle, and Jose Gomez. So, what a heat it is set to be. A cheer goes up from the gantry next to me, and uh, everyone seemingly very excited for this final T4 senior heat before. The ante is really upped for the super heats and the finals later. The wind beginning to pick up ever so slightly as I look to the flags on the far side of the track but uh, st still not as strong as it was yesterday. So that will be uh, something to consider. Perhaps the slipstream effect not as effective this, uh, this afternoon as it was yesterday afternoon. But we get ready as they round the final chicane. They get into their tram lines and we prepare to go racing. We're away now and it looks to be a good start from the front row. Colin Warren with a strong start. Tim Van Ellersweg as well is set to lead into turn one. Still no drama, however. Which is a good thing to see. Someone running out slightly wide down towards the back of the grid. I think that might have been Aaron Doyle, but it is still Tim Van Ellsweg who leads the way in front of Colin Warren and, and uh, Wesley Bowden as there's a little bit of argy-bargy happening at the chicane there. But no harm, no foul thus far. And Tim Van Ellsweg is now starting to build up a gap. An incredibly impressive performance from the young Dutchman who's putting in a fantastic shift thus far this weekend having taken a second place and a first place in the two heats that he competed in yesterday and he will be trying to make that into a second first place and a first second place which is uh, certainly absolutely fantastic now i'm delighted to say that we do have a guest in the commentary box and uh, it's fantastic to see even Um, I think that it's been great. Um, the drivers are here really fast, and um, it's been fun. And it's great to see such a strong grid taking part this weekend compared to last year. Now, you've, you're have you a T4 Nations Cup veteran, so you know your way around this circuit from last year. Strong performance last year, another strong performance this year. What do you make of the competition that we've seen this year with this, this massive grid? Yeah, this year is way tougher than last year, for sure. The guys here, the racecraft, the speed, everything. And how are you coping with the heat? Because many of these drivers are coming into a situation where they're racing in hotter conditions than they ever have in the past. Is that something that you've had to contend with in America and perhaps acclimatize to? Well, it comes into my favor because in America, it's where I live, it's hot, and every race is hot. So the track gets greasy. So we know what to do when the track gets greasy. Fantastic stuff. The battle really hotting up outside. Do you want to give us a few lines of commentary? See how you fare at it? You can maybe make, make your way into punditry if the whole karting thing doesn't work out. After watching you, I don't know if I'm as good, but yeah, I'll give it a go. Oh, well, I'm not that good. So, I mean, you can't be any worse than I am. Great to have you up here, though, Tyler. And uh, make sure to send up even more people if you get the chance to. And feel free to come up later on. 
and uh, we certainly hope to see you on the podium later. Is there anyone who you want to uh, give a special shout out to while you're up here? Um, yeah, my parents in uh, Motel Sport and Tillerson. Fantastic. Let's uh, shout out all of the uh, all of the partners of the T4 Nations Cup while we're at it. Tyler McIntyre, thank you so much for coming up, my friend. Thank and, you for uh, having best me. Best of luck with the rest of your weekend. Thank you. You're very, very, very welcome indeed. Now, <laughs> oh, I make him nervous. I mean, I make myself nervous at times, Tyler. So you know, it's it's uh, nothing particularly new. Anyways, <laughs> let's get back hey, to the action. Still watch the race, mate. Still watch the yes. race. Good to see you, Tyler. And uh, very best of luck this weekend. Tyler McIntyre, ladies and gentlemen, one of the uh, strongest and fastest American drivers on the grid this weekend. Now, as we look back to the action, it is Colin Warren, another American who has taken Tim Van Ellersweg and now has a gap of just uh, just under two tenths of a second. Colin Warren also taking the fastest lap there with a 106.1 lap time. And now we did see there the 366 machine having a bit of an off while we were talking to, uh, to Tyler. I'm trying to see, that's Han... Han, oh dear me, Han Handong there, the Chinese driver, China making their first appearance in the Nations Cup this year and uh, unfortunately getting involved in an incident there on I believe it was lap number two. As we look back to the action now, here are the leaders, it is Colin Warren, the US based driver from Tim Van Ellersweg, incredibly quick, Colin Warren with the fastest lap. But Tim Van Ellersweg with two fast sectors, sector one and sector two. So seriously putting Colin Warren under pressure now. Colin Warren having won the final heat yesterday and also having finished second is a very, very quick driver indeed. But Tim Van Ellersweg is able to keep him honest as there's three wide down in the battle for that is, I believe, fifth place, no, sixth or seventh place, three wide through turn number one and that looks to be I'm not entirely sure who that was now that I look at it but Tim Van Ellersweg takes the fastest lap and this is really starting to hot up for the lead yeah it is uh, Colin Warren we can see uh, leading the way uh, I have to ask you Tyler as you're, you're staying up uh, uh, with us for this race what do you do now if you're uh, Tim Van Ellersweg in second place are you staying in behind till last lap or are you gonna go for a move a little bit earlier I'm staying behind until the last lap so we can get the biggest gap as possible. So just pushing all the way to the, is that, is that the, I've, we've seen a lot of that so far this weekend and that's what it's gonna be now, just sitting behind and then last lap, it's kind of every driver for themselves. Yeah, exactly. Um, that's the best bet and that's the safest bet. So there we go. That's what we have to do. If, and I guess if you're Owen Roberts, all you can do now is hope that they start battling a little bit earlier. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Look for some assistance, maybe. How, how tough is this track to, to drive? I know. Uh, I think you may have been here last year. What, what's it like as a track to drive? Um, it's it's nice. It's uh, got uh, some tight corners. It's got it's got all type of corners. I don't I don't know. It's a beautiful track to me. In America, um, there's nothing really like it. So I'll tell you what. Talk us through the next half of this lap. We're coming into left hander next. How, how, how does it go? How, how, what, what, what are we doing through this section coming round? How do we approach turn seven now, coming up to this corner? Um, heavy braking. Dr drive, drive fast. Braking, mate, yeah. Drive <laughs> fast, heavy braking. Heavy Don't crash. So heavy braking into there. And then I guess key here is good exit. Yeah, good, great exit because uh, it sets you up for this long straightaway right here. And that's probably one of the most crucial parts of the track, would you say? Most crucial. And what about the last chicane as well? I mean, what's your thoughts coming into the last lap into there? It's got to be very, very difficult. Oh, it is very tight and very difficult, and you cannot make any mistakes in the last corner. And on a flying lap as well, I imagine it is going down to there. You've had a lot of time to think about that corner, right? So it must make it even more difficult mentally. Yeah, it's tough when you start thinking about it. You've got to just stay calm and just try and hit it every apex. Good stuff. Well, uh, there we go. Uh, we can see there's been no changes, as Tyler mentioned. We're waiting for the last lap. They may have been behind. There's a good drive going on uh, here. Frederico uh, Peters coming up 16 places. I mean, that's uh, very impressive. 16 places gained in, what's that, six laps? So uh, done very well there, Tyler. Stay out of trouble and also pick off, what's that, more than two, two drivers, almost three drivers a lap. Very well, very well. It's been a good, good, good race so far. Uh, so here we can see the top two coming out of what is the probably most important corner, turn eight, as it has this long run uh, round. Oh no, spin uh, into turn seven. I don't know if that was assisted. That's the three six two uh, that has gone. Malk West, uh, and uh, I'm not too sure what's happened to him there. 
So he may have had some contact with someone, but we're coming up to the final lap and Colin Warren surely is going to be thinking about how he defends now. And with, look at this, the colossal gap between Tim Van Ellersweg and Owen Roberts, 4.7 seconds, absolutely sensational stuff from the leading two as we come on to, well, it is now the penultimate lap and they are trading sector times. Colin Warren with the fastest first sector of anyone trying to improve on that fastest lap that he still possesses and the gap that they have I mean this they could nearly afford to start battling they could nearly reverse to the finish line and they'd still be one and two absolutely sensational from these two working together even though they're part of different nation teams working together to try and get that mutual gain to in, in order to battle this is a battle speaking of for third place four drivers involved there that's Owen Roberts Santiago Hamida Wesley Bowden and Christopher Sauna who are all battling away hammer and tong for position number three it was two by two going down into turn number seven and as they come down the back straight it is going to be I believe Owen Roberts is leading that queue let's take a look here are the leaders starting their final lap it is now gloves off between Colin Warren and Tim Van Ellersweg as they make their way through turn number one let's take a look it is Christopher Saunas the Latvian who has inherited third in front of Owen Roberts Wesley Bowden and Santiago Hamida as we look at the leaders no, negotiating their way through the chicane. Look at this, Tim Van Ellersweg up the inside. You never saw that coming from the young Dutchman. He takes Colin Warren in a fantastic move, but Warren isn't done yet. He's still up the inside, coming on to the middle straight. They're side by side still. Respect given, racing room given. It's Colin Warren on the inside, Tim Van Ellersweg just about holds on to that position. Colin Warren not with the grip, not with the confidence, and not able to outbreak the Dutchman who maintains that first position having stolen it in a cheeky maneuver through turn four look at how defensive he's going along the back straight almost glued to the inside white line he's still defending he's defending hard warren attacks to the outside can he do it can he get the cut back it's going to be so close coming up to the line it is going to be however tim van ellersweg who takes the victory and look at how much it means to him a fist bump between the competitors as they come across the line and almost seven se in fact six seconds to Owen Roberts who finishes in third place that is absolutely extraordinarily done by both Tim Van Ellersweg and Colin Warren credit where credit is due Colin Warren missing out on the victory but what a race he drove yeah and as Tyler said to us he was going to wait for the last lap and then executed the move absolutely perfectly well done tim van ellersweg takes the win ahead of colin warren now uh, very quickly before the full result is given to us uh, just a couple of quick shout outs once again jose gomez the hard charger uh, coming up 18 places this time he gained 22 in the first heat he gained 15 i believe it was in the second he's gained 18 today he's done a superb job at it uh, frederico peters up 15 places as well well done to those two stars of the show your top eight in the intermediate classification are noah rossa colin warren cameron reed tim van ellersvig with that win then andre debaya tyler mcintyre who just joined us he's sixth place danny chris is seventh and wesley bowden is p10 here's your classification from the final heat and senior so it was Tim Van Ellersweg who took the win, the final heat win of the day for the seniors before the super heats and the finals in front of Colin Warren, who just about missed out at the final hurdle. Then Owen Roberts snuck in to take the final position on the podium in front of Wesley Bowden and Christopher Saunas, who dropped down from third to fifth in the final lap. Um, but still the lead Latvian in this group. Santiago Hamidi finished in sixth in front of Omar Perez and Frederico Peters in front of Jose Itabide and Jose Gomez, the fast charger, finishing in 10th, having started in 28th place. James Andres III finished in position number 11 in front of Andres Klinkan and Philip Ganna in 13th place. Santiago Garza Briseño finished in 14th in front of Alexander Fleming and Mauro Camacho Balboa. Hannah Friedberg finished in 17th place in front of Fabian Feliciano Ribello and Elisabetta Joanna Sulz in 19th, with Jan Janis Chudovs rounding out the top 20. Then came Roisin Sweeney and John Nuttall in front of Václav Strakati and Aaron Doyle. Ellen Donnelly finished in 25th place in front of Malk West, who had that spin. Han Dong Huang, who finished in 27th again with a spin, and Miguel Pada Goede 
who rounded out the final classification with the next race, the final heat before we have a short break and then get straight into the super heats with the minis. We have before that the T4 Senior 165 uh, final heat and then we will go to a short break. Chris. Uh, yeah, just quickly, uh, we have to make a, an announcement to uh, those at the circuit. So, attention paddock, attention paddock, can we please have junior drivers 214 Martin Wright and 286 Tame and Vita to the stewards office, please. That's T4 junior drivers 214 Martin Wright and 286 Tame and Vita to the stewards office, please. Thank you. Well, fantastic heat there from the seniors. Nine laps of intense action, very strategic racing with Tim Van Ellersweg taking the spoils. Colin Warren just missing out, but he did, however, take the fastest lap by only, get this, I think that is 22 one hundredths of a second. Gaps do not get closer in motorsport than they do in karting. That is why we love it. It is just amazing action right from the start right to the finish i just wish that we had this sort of action yesterday not to uh, take away from the quality of racing we saw on saturday but it would be absolutely extraordinary if we saw this sort of stuff on saturdays as well as sundays but now the gloves are almost off we are almost at the superheats we only have the t4 senior 165s to go around this 1,495 metre track, this nine, this 11 lap affair, excuse me, amounting to almost 15 kilometres, or perhaps just over 15 kilometres in total. And all of our T4 Senior 165 drivers will be acutely aware of that fact as they plan their strategies going into the race. Now, I do believe that we are hopefully going to be able to have a word with Gian Maria Gabbiani, who is representing Italy and also Marline Fuels, the official fuel sponsor of Tillotson T4 Nations Cup 2023. And as we mentioned yesterday, a two-time world power boating champion. He has, it, honestly, if it has an engine, Gian Maria Gabbiani has probably raced it in anger. He has done everything there is to do, including, as I mentioned, world power boating, which is quite a unique sport and uh, you don't see too many karting drivers who can uh, add that to their repertoire. And I believe that Chris is ready down in the pre-grid. Chris. Down here uh, with T4 Senior 165. Final heat of the Nations Cup. Hello, Chris. How are you doing, mate? Good? Hello, mate. All good? Yeah, not bad, thanks. Good run through yesterday. Hoping for more clean, tidy racing. Get some good points. We'll be all right. Good stuff. Good, good to see you. you I need, need to catch up probably at some point. Uh, I'm going to go and speak to someone a little further down. Uh, because been asked to go and speak to, I believe, this person here. So, um, uh, we are, hello, uh, uh, how, how are we doing? Yeah, uh, we, we try to climb uh, the grid, it's going to be tricky, but uh, I'm pretty sure we made some adjustments, so we want to cl climb uh, on the top 10. How's your weekend going so far? A lot of crashes, unfortunately, uh, uh, the position uh, not respect the reality, but uh, we, we have this hit and the two finals, so I'm pretty confident. Enjoying the event? Enjoy everybody then. Good stuff. Good stuff. Best of luck. Uh, okay, we got a slight problem there. Um, let's see if we can speak to uh, this person. Hello. Hi. Uh, hi. How did it go yesterday? Well, not pretty much. We had pretty bad luck yesterday in the hits, but, but I hope today goes better. Yeah, I remember. It was bad at the end, but uh, all, all working all right today. Yeah, all working to go. Okay. What was the problem in the end? Uh, I think it was like the, uh, the spark plug the, was, was bad yesterday. I had an engine issue, so we changed the engine, and then the spark plug cap was, was not good. I'm glad it's all fixed. What a, yeah, Ding didn't actually get going in the last heat yesterday. And... Uh, I'm gonna, can I tuck in? Oh, 
Sorry, I thought you nodded off there. Uh, how are we doing? Sorry? How are we doing? Looking forward to the race? Oh, I, 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 my English is not so good because, uh, uh, what do you mean? Uh, sorry, can you repeat me? Uh, enjoying it. Sorry? I, you know, it doesn't matter. Good luck for the race. Good luck for the race. Doesn't matter. It's okay. It's okay. It's, it's okay. okay. He's enjoying it. He's, he's enjoying. He's Good stuff. Enjoying. Good stuff. Okay, it's going to get noisy. Uh, that's it. Back to you, Simon. Well, thank you very much for that, Chris. Now, unfortunately, we do have another. Uh, another paddock announcement so it is attention paddock attention paddock this is an announcement for drivers in t4 senior number 373 colin munnerly and driver 323 andres klinkan please come to the steward's office immediately attention paddock attention paddock t4 senior driver 373 colin munnerly please come to the steward's office immediately with driver 323 Andres Klinkan, thank you. So here we go then for the final T4 Senior Heat of the day. And what a heat it is set to be. The T4 Senior 165s, I should clarify. And it will be Andres Matisse who leads the field down towards the lights with Anwar Beryl Smith in second. Julian Granvo will start in third in front of Alejandro Marchini, in front of Chris Alcock. Christoph Wenske and Yanni Fokin in position number, I'm not sure what position actually. Jan Zastrow starts behind Yanni in any case, in front of Casey Cook, Kyle Lawrence, Phil Pignataro, Esteban Yanguas, Peter Janssen, Asbjorn Rolfing, Walter Kessler, Anthony Holland, Adan Enrique Ibarra Castro and Stefan Osman in front of Zachary Valvin, Daniel Bowden, the two Australians lining up alongside each other in front of Gil Angiano, Dirk Proknov, Manuel Gomez and Gian Maria Gaviani who we just spoke to there. Juan Pablo Glover and Haris Gladkins in front of Gert Lapsgans, the two Latvians lining up next to each other in front of Aaron Doyle and uh, Fernando Wheeler Sr. in front of Peter McBride, Rudolf Tom Bazins, Bas Peters and Milan Milenkovic in front of Seamus Lawler and unfortunately Harm Sherman not able to take the start for this, the final T4 Senior 165 heat of the day before we go to our break and then straight into the super heats and the finals. We get ready, we look to the lights and we wait to go racing. And we're away now, and it looks to be a good start by Anwar Beryl Smith. He's going to be leading down into turn one. Can he get across to the inside? No, he's been taken advantage of. Andreas Matisse maintains the lead coming down into turn one. But Anwar Beryl Smith holding his own there, managing to maintain. He's fallen down into third place, forgive me. And uh, Julian Granvo has made his way up into second place. And a fantastic start there by the Frenchman. Oh, and there's calamities at turn number three. Three drivers involved there, not entirely sure who they are but we'll bring you that information in due course I'm sure but it is Andreas Matisse from Anwar Beryl Smith uh, excuse me Andreas Matisse from Julian Granvaux from Anwar Beryl Smith in the lead of the race and then comes uh, Alessandro Marchini no Alessandro Marchini has fallen down the order it's Chris Alcock who's managed to get his way up into fourth position and then I believe Christoph Wenske has managed to maintain his position in sixth what a start to this race and there's more drama there at turn seven even more in fact i think it's the same drivers who were involved at the collision at turn three huge drama there and uh, something perhaps that the stewards might end up looking into as they come across the line to finish their first lap of this 11 lap affair chris yep uh, across the line we come then that is the end of nine the first of nine laps uh, being joined by uh, Tamer Vitter uh, up in uh, commentary uh, uh, Tamer good to have you uh, up with us uh, we can see uh, T4 senior 165 I know you you've been driving really well out there I want to get your thoughts on what we're seeing out there so far look how close it is uh, for the lead I mean if you're in the middle of uh, that pack very hard to break away in that lot at the moment isn't it what's your plan in this one is it get to the front as quickly as you can yeah I think so uh, just because the disqualification, we're going to get in front as fast as possible and then uh, we'll see from there. Yeah, so I know you, you've had that, uh, of course, call up here, but other than that, it, it seems like it's been a really good weekend for you. Yeah, first time here, so uh, it's really good. Yeah, uh, and, and the, liking the track? Yeah, I, I had to get used to it, but uh, now it's fun. So. What do you make of the racing we've been seeing? It's been very close, isn't it? I mean, we can see here, look, six, seven 
12, I think, maybe uh, for the lead. That seems to be the nature of the racing in this club. Yeah, I think so. Uh, slipstream is really strong here on this, in this on the circuit, so uh, yeah. Good to have you up uh, with us. We can see Matisse is leading from uh, uh, Granvo there. Anwar Beryl-Smith is in third place. And Matisse was feeling the need to defend. And Granvo has opened the door there to Beryl-Smith, who gets through at turn number four. And down the inside of the next corner comes Chris Alcock. In fact, that's Chris Alcock being passed. So uh, uh, Beryl-Smith, uh, Taman, what did you make of that move? Great move down the inside at turn four to take second place. Yeah, I think it was a great move. He got a bit forced off. But oh. oh, no, we got an incident there, Simon. That's Alessandro Marchini and the 469. That is Julian Granvo. Huge drama here as Alessandro Marchini, the man who started in, in uh, fourth position, comes together with the man who started in third. And that is going to really have a huge effect on their overall ranking, falling down the order. That is an absolute disaster for the Frenchman and the Brazilian. One Brazilian in this competition, two Frenchmen and Julian Granvo has been showing huge pace up until now. That really does make things a lot easier for Anwar Beryl-Smith though, Chris. It does, and Beryl-Smith and Matisse, two drivers who came together at Turn 1 yesterday, now find themselves together one and two uh, again as they make their way up through Turn 3. And look over the shoulder there for uh, Beryl-Smith there, uh, Taman. You can see he's maybe got a bit of a gap behind him now, so if you're Beryl Smith, I guess you've got to try, do you try and push with Matisse here or are you looking to, to try and get through into the lead? Uh, I think uh, the first push away and then uh, like one of the final laps then uh, overtake him. So. And get through when there's no more chances for him to get back past basically as they make their way out of turn eight, Simon. And we've just seen there uh, Peter Janssen managing to take the fastest lap. Only the second man in this race so far to break into the 106s. Taman, just to come back to you, what does it take to go quick in these T4s around this 1500 metre circuit? Because it does seem to be very much down to the driver. Uh, yeah, I think uh, also slipstream is really big here because uh, in training I was driving alone mostly and then last session I was uh, with uh, some other guys and it was like half a second. So. And slipstreaming past there as you were talking about was Anwar Beryl-Smith, so he hits the front. Uh, we've got four for the lead coming through at turn number three. We can see out the window a gap back to the chasing pack, uh, but Beryl-Smith uh, felt the need, maybe because of the pressure behind Taman. He could see Venska Casey Cook right behind him, and maybe that was why he went by. And he was giving the thumbs up there to Matisse, perhaps feeling a bit of a push out of turn number five there. Just giving the thumbs up to say, yep, yeah, keep pushing me along, basically. Yeah, I think uh, pushing is also really helpful on this track. So uh, the working together, uh, slipstreaming, pushing, trying to get away from the rest, and then uh, battling uh, in the end. How fun is this racing when it's like this? Because you see, it's really fun for us to watch. Yeah, it's fun driving like uh, with, uh, we were with a pretty large group. At some point, I think we were four wide or something like that. No, you, you nearly had him falling out the window. Yeah, no, I nearly passed out from it. I was here shouting my lungs out. I've nearly lost my voice. It was fantastic. horrendous. Fantastic. I know the viewership has been massively up from last year. It's a move down the inside. Venska there, brave on the brakes, gets down the inside of Matisse. Left it slightly late into that first corner and just about managed to squeeze by. It seems like a very tricky first corner, Taman. Uh, I was trying to drive it on the sim uh, earlier. Uh, talk us through it. I mean, it's a, a long winding corner. Is it one of those where you can take more speed than you think through it? Yeah, you can go really fast into it and it's kind of slightly drifted so you can uh, get onto the line that you want and then just uh, go uh, full speed out of the corner. Yeah, good stuff. Well, we're on lap six of nine. We're getting down to crunch time here and it could be any one of these. Venska ahead of Beryl Smith. Uh, Matisse in third place. Casey Cook in fourth. They're split by one second as they now hit the brakes into that final chicane. Uh, we were speaking to Tyler McIntyre about that final chicane, uh, Taman, and how you have so long to think about it that when you get there, very easy, I'm sure, to make a mistake under braking into that final chicane. Yeah, like if you brake too late, you're going to be up, up on a curve or something and you, you lose a lot of speed. So. Uh Great stuff. Well, uh, stick with us if you can throughout the rest of the race. We're getting towards the uh, end of it now. Great to have your input from a, 
top level driver someone who's been racing for the wins all weekend here as they fire their way out of turn five now simon on lap number seven and i think it's now five for the lead chris alcock who was shoved onto the grass earlier coming back for revenge now he's there in fifth place Yes, I'm just looking at my timing screens and it appears Julian Granvo all the way down to 16th, Alessandro Marchini down to 19th and a disastrous showing for them in this race and that could really negatively affect their starting positions for the superheats and in turn the finals as Christoph Wenske still maintains the lead. Germany with a very strong contingent in T4 Senior 165s, not so much in the other categories, although we have seen a number of very speedy Germans. Phil Becker is uh, one of the names that stands out to me. And uh, as they make their way down into turn number one, it is still Christoph Enske from Anwar Beryl-Smith. Anwar Beryl-Smith knows what it's like to fight on a Sunday at the T4 Nations Cup, a veteran of last year's competition here. He knows what he's doing and he knows how to do it. It's just a question of when he decides to do what he is deciding to do, if that makes any sense at all, Chris. <laughs> I think I think it does, yeah, as uh, Beryl Smith felt a little bit of a shove, I think, there, coming out of uh, turn number five. It unsettled the car, and now uh, just giving the push signal there to Matisse uh, Tamen. I think slightly worried about the gap to Venska there. Is that uh, too much, or do you think they can close that down in one straight? No, they're going to close it down, because, yeah, Slipstream is just so big. All right, well, let's uh, see that put in force. And I think there is exactly what Taman is saying. Gap closes down now as they come through turn number nine. So there we go. It's back as you were in towards the final chicane. Last lap, it could be any one of these five as they come over the line now. Uh, Tame, uh, Chris Venska, sorry, has to just fully defend this and hope he makes no mistakes or hope that uh, no one gets a run. I think, Taman, what do you think? This is going to go down to the last chicane. Yeah, I think they're going to battle this entire lap uh, to try to get into the lead, so... Uh. Going to be close. Going to be close. Simon, over to you. And it's really starting to hot up now. Anwar Beryl-Smith really starting to look for a move up the inside of Christoph Venska. And look at that. That looks to be Casey Cook getting involved, getting past Andreas Matisse. And that's really opened the door for Chris Alcock, who's managed to take Andreas Matisse, get up into, uh, f I believe that's fourth place now, looking at potentially a podium, snatching it at the last hurdle. But it is still Christoph Venska who has managed to defend his position down into turn number seven. No holds barred at this stage in the race into the final sector they are more than capable of making this into an absolutely calamitous final chicane let's hope that they don't i don't think anwar beryl smith is close enough it is going to be christoph venska who takes germany's first win at this year's nations cup anwar beryl smith comes home to finish in second place in front of casey cook and chris Alcock. Absolutely fantastic stuff with Andreas Matisse, however, having a bad showing, falling down from first to fifth. But it's not the first time that we have seen that this weekend. Phil Pignataro with a strong showing, managing to get up into sixth place, having started 11. But the story of the day is Alessandro Marchini and Julian Granvo having that coming together and both finishing down in the mid-teens as far as position is concerned. Christoph Benske, though, takes his first win of the weekend, takes Germany's first win of the weekend, and what a win it was. Doing a fantastic job to defend from Anwar Beryl-Smith, who himself is absolutely no slouch at all. And that means to say that Andreas Matisse's record of two wins yesterday, pretty much dominating the field, has been taken away by his fellow German, but it is German domination in the T4 Senior 165 category. Will that continue in the superheats? And will we see Germany winning the T4 Senior 165 category for the second year in a row? Here is the final classification. So it was Christoph Wenske in front of Anwar Beryl-Smith. KC Cook finished in third in front of Chris Alcock in fourth. Andreas Matisse fell down to fifth in front of Phil Pignataro in sixth. Kyle Lawrence, Oz Asbjorn Ralfing, and Jan Zastrow finished out the top nine, with Petter Janssen finishing in 10th place. Yanni Fokin finished in position number 11 in front of Esteban Yanguas and Zachary Valvin in front of the unlucky Julian Granvo, who finished in front of Anthony Holland, who himself finished in front of the also unlucky Alessandro Marchini. Daniel Bowden finished in 17th in front of Juan Pablo Glover and Adan Enrique Ibarra Castro, and Hill Angiano in the 20th position. Gertz Lapskelns finished in 21st in front of Bas Peters and Harris Gladkins in front of his fellow Latvian Rudolf Toms Bazins and Peter McBride 
Fernando Wheeler finished in 26th in front of Stefan Osman in 27th. Aaron Doyle finished where he started in 28th in front of Jan Maria Gabbiani and Dirk Proknov in 30th. Manuel Gamez finished in 31st in front of Walter Kessler in 32nd. Seamus Lawler and Milan Milenkovic finished out the final classification with, as we say, Harm Sherman not making the start, unfortunately. Yeah, well, there you can see the program coming up uh, later on. We're going to go into a short break now. 12.30 was when, is when racing will resume with the T4 Mini Superheat. The first group and then the second group will be out 20 minutes later. We'll follow the same procedure with Team 4 Juniors. Group 1 will go out at 10 past 1. Group 2 will go out at 30 minutes past 1. This will be their last chance to score points in the Nations Cup and their last chance to set the grids for the finals. Seniors will kick off at 50 minutes past 1. 10 past 2 is when Group 2 will go out. And Senior 165 will have their super heat at half past 2. Then the finals start at half past 3, starting with T4 Mini, that's when we'll crown our champion there. T4 Juniors will roll out at 50 minutes past three for their final, 10 past four. We will go racing for the T4 Senior Final in this year's Nations Cup. And then following that, it will be time for those Senior 165s at 30 minutes past four. Five o'clock is when we will have our podium presentation. As you can see, just a little bit below that, 34 minutes and 10 seconds to the next event. So we will take a very short break. We will be back in just about 30 minutes time, 25 past 12 local time is when we will be back to bring you live coverage as we build up to the super heats, kicking off with the first of those T4 mini. So for myself and Simon, for now, it is goodbye. We'll see you for the Super Heats very shortly. Everything hurts. You need relief that's deeper than ice. You need Tidal, the cryotherapy spray that goes beyond cold to take control of the pain. This was just easy and it felt so good. I was like, wow, that actually smells good. It's like penetrating into my skin, which I really love. Tidal's powerful plant-based formulation was developed to help world-class athletes recover faster. Tidal cryotherapy spray can contribute to total body recovery because it can alleviate muscle pain, joint pain, even back pain. A 360-degree continuous spray relieves pain in even the hardest to reach areas, dries fast, and lasts. When you get older, the joints start hurting. The spray is easy. You just bring it wherever you are, spray it, and it feels great within minutes. It changes my life in a way that I can still be active and yet not feel aches and pains when I'm sitting there for long hours. Tidal Cryotherapy, available at Walmart and these fine retailers. Visit Tidal.com for locations.
posto? Ciao Gian, preparati che ho portato una cosa per te. Provala e fammi sapere. Ok, mi tiro il casco, andiamo? Andiamo, subito. Ciao Gian, preparati che ho portato una cosa per te. Provala e fammi sapere. Ok, mi tiro il casco, andiamo? Andiamo, subito. Everything hurts. You need relief that's deeper than ice. You need Tidal, the cryotherapy spray that goes beyond cold to take control of the pain. This was just easy and it felt so good. I was like, wow, that actually smells good. It's like penetrating into my skin, which I really love. Tidal's powerful plant-based formulation was developed to help world-class athletes recover faster. Tidal cryotherapy spray can contribute to total body recovery because it can alleviate muscle pain, joint pain, even back pain. A 360-degree continuous spray relieves pain in even the hardest-to-reach areas, dries fast, and lasts. When you get older, the joints start hurting. The spray is easy. You just bring it wherever you are, spray it and it feels great within minutes. It changes my life in a way that I can still be active and yet not feel aches and pains when I'm sitting there for long hours. Tidal Cryotherapy, available at Walmart and these fine retailers. Visit Tidal.com for locations. Ciao Gian, preparati che ho portato una cosa per te. Provala e fammi sapere. Ok, mi tiro il casco, andiamo? Andiamo, subito.
Everything hurts. You need relief that's deeper than ice. You need Tidal, the cryotherapy spray that goes beyond cold to take control of the pain. This was just easy and it felt so good. I was like, wow, that actually smells good. It gets like penetrating into my skin, which I really love. Tidal's powerful plant-based formulation was developed to help world-class athletes recover faster. Tidal cryotherapy spray can contribute to total body recovery because it can alleviate muscle pain, joint pain, even back pain. A 360-degree continuous spray relieves pain in even the hardest-to-reach areas, dries fast, and lasts. When you get older, the joints start hurting. The spray is easy. You just bring it wherever you are, spray it and it feels great within minutes. It changes my life in a way that I can still be active and yet not feel aches and pains when I'm sitting there for long hours. Tidal Cryotherapy, available at Walmart and these fine retailers. Visit Tidal.com for locations. Ciao Gian, preparati che ho portato una cosa per te. Provala e fammi sapere. Ok, mi tiro il casco, andiamo? Andiamo, subito. Everything hurts. You need relief that's deeper than ice. You need Tidal, 
the cryotherapy spray that goes beyond cold to take control of the pain. This was just easy and it felt so good. I was like, wow, that actually smells good. It's like penetrating into my skin, which I really love. Tidal's powerful plant-based formulation was developed to help world-class athletes recover faster. Tidal cryotherapy spray can contribute to total body recovery because it can alleviate muscle pain, joint pain, even back pain. A 360-degree continuous spray relieves pain in even the hardest-to-reach areas, dries fast, and lasts. When you get older, the joints start hurting. The spray is easy. You just bring it wherever you are, spray it and it feels great within minutes. It changes my life in a way that I can still be active and yet not feel aches and pains when I'm sitting there for long hours. Tidal Cryotherapy, available at Walmart and these fine retailers. Visit Tidal.com for locations. Ciao Gian, preparati che ho portato una cosa per te. Provala e fammi sapere. Ok, mi fido il casco, andiamo? Andiamo, subito. When everything hurts, you need relief that's deeper than ice. You need Tidal, the cryotherapy spray that goes beyond cold to take control of the pain. This was just easy, and it felt so good. I was like, wow, that actually smells good. It's like penetrating into my skin, which I really love. Tidal's powerful plant-based formulation was developed to help world-class athletes recover faster. Tidal cryotherapy spray can contribute to total body recovery because it can alleviate muscle pain, joint pain, even back pain. A 360-degree continuous spray relieves pain in even the hardest-to-reach areas, dries fast, and lasts. When you get older, the joints start hurting. The spray is easy. You just bring it wherever you are, spray it, and it feels great within minutes. It changes my life in a way that I can still be active and yet not feel aches and pains when I'm sitting there for long hours. Tidal Cryotherapy, available at Walmart and these fine retailers. Visit Tidal.com for locations.
posto. Ciao Gian, preparati che ho portato una cosa per te. Provala e fammi sapere. Ok, mi fido il cazzo, andiamo? Andiamo, subito. Everything hurts. You need relief that's deeper than ice. You need Tidal, the cryotherapy spray that goes beyond cold to take control of the pain. This was just easy, and it felt so good. I was like, wow, that actually smells good. It's like penetrating into my skin, which I really love. Tidal's powerful plant-based formulation was developed to help world-class athletes recover faster. Tidal cryotherapy spray can contribute to total body recovery because it can alleviate muscle pain, joint pain, even back pain. A 360-degree continuous spray relieves pain in even the hardest-to-reach areas, dries fast, and lasts. When you get older, the joints start hurting. The spray is easy. You just bring it wherever you are, spray it. And it feels great within minutes. It changes my life in a way that I can still be active and yet not feel aches and pains when I'm sitting there for long hours. Title Cryotherapy, available at Walmart and these fine retailers. Visit title.com for locations. Ciao Gian, preparati che ho portato una cosa per te. Provala e fammi sapere. Ok, mi fido il cazzo, andiamo? Andiamo, subito.
Everything hurts. You need relief that's deeper than ice. You need Tidal, the cryotherapy spray that goes beyond cold to take control of the pain. This was just easy and it felt so good. I was like, wow, that actually smells good. It gets like penetrating into my skin, which I really love. Tidal's powerful plant-based formulation was developed to help world-class athletes recover faster. Tidal cryotherapy spray can contribute to total body recovery because it can alleviate muscle pain, joint pain, even back pain. A 360-degree continuous spray relieves pain in even the hardest-to-reach areas, dries fast, and lasts. When you get older, the joints start hurting. The spray is easy. You just bring it wherever you are, spray it and it feels great within minutes. It changes my life in a way that I can still be active and yet not feel aches and pains when I'm sitting there for long hours. Tidal Cryotherapy, available at Walmart and these fine retailers. Visit Tidal.com for locations. Ciao Gian, preparati che ho portato una cosa per te. Provala e fammi sapere. Ok, mi infilo il casco, andiamo? Andiamo, subito. After a short break, we are back and ready to go for the super heats, everyone. The grids have been set after the qualifying heats over the last day and a half. Now it's time for the super heats, the final chance to score some points and set the grid for the finals coming up this afternoon. The drivers have been split into groups for some of the classes for the super heats that uh, after the intermediate classification, they've been scoring points throughout the heats they've done so far. That's put them into the grid positions we're going to see for these super heats. This will be their last chance to score some points and set the grid for the final. They're racing around this, the international Cartodromo. Lucas Guerrero here at Valencia in Spain, just shy of 1,500 metres in length. Very, very tricky circuit to approach, particularly that middle sector when you look at it, but the outer ring. The start finish straight and the back straight presents plenty of opportunities for slipstreaming and overtaking as well. And speaking to some of the drivers in the lunch break was out speaking to uh, Chris Alcock in the senior 165s and telling me just how hard it is to break away and how strategic the racing is around here and that's going to be a big element coming up in the finals and in the super heats as well. 
Ross displays the three-minute board to us and to the drivers as well. The sun shining, temperatures rising all the time. This the final chance for the drivers to score points as well uh, for the Nations Cup. We'll find out who the winners of that are at the end of the day when we do our podium presentation. Uh, but the likes of USA are looking very strong. The United Kingdom uh, looking very strong. Germany have gone, been going very well in senior 165. There's been uh, plenty of uh, good op uh, good uh, good performances throughout many of the nations uh, out there. It's been fantastic to see three drivers. The top three drivers from each nation will be the ones that score the points for their country at the end of these super heats. Uh, and after that, we will know who our Nations Cup champions are. So there may be an element of drivers from the same nations working together in these races, not only to help their grid position going into the final, but also to help the score of the overall nation for the Nations Cup. They're out there all racing together as nations as well as for each other. They are out in big tents uh, in their nations, separated uh, with each other. It's uh, a fantastic atmosphere uh, out in the paddock. Uh, and we can see the atmosphere definitely building uh, on the grid as well as the drivers uh, now getting ready to go. We're almost ready to go for this T4 Mini Group 1 uh, Super Heat. That's going to be uh, what kicks us off. We'll be into Group 2 uh, shortly after that. The program for the remainder of the afternoon in terms of Super Heats before we go into our, lo our lunch break. T4 Junior will be uh, at... Uh, 10 past one local time here in Spain with T4 Junior. Uh, 20 minutes after that, the Group 2 drivers will be out. And then uh, we will have the seniors going out, uh, Group 1 and Group 2. And Senior 165 will end the Super Heats at 30 minutes past two local time. We'll take a short lunch break. The first of the finals will be at half past three local time. That's when we will know who our first champions are going to be and it will be the T4 minis you see on screen that kick us off. We're going to get the grid up on screen very shortly but uh, alongside myself Chris McCarthy first we'll get the thoughts of Simon Byford. Uh, Simon Great morning. Uh, so I'm going to extend this question uh, so that you can finish that slice of pizza as long as I can. Uh, it's been a, a great morning uh, so far uh, of racing. Uh, T4 minis, uh, I think, have provided pretty fair uh, close battles uh, all the way across. I think uh, considering they're the youngest drivers out there, uh, they've shown great sportsmanship all across the board. And uh, it's been fantastic to watch. I it really finished that just in time, didn't I? Yes, yes. A big thank you to uh, the South Africans uh, for giving me this uh, wonderful slice of pepperoni pizza. I declined to take a can of Coke from them um, on account of the fact that I have water up here, which uh, should bring me through the afternoon. But yes, the T4 Minis, an absolutely fantastic little go-kart full of absolutely fantastic drivers. Let's take a look at the grid. So it is going to be Ben McLaughrey in front of Miko Leon Schwerz. Leo Livings then lies up. Beside Luke Millwood, then Yaramir Arkhipov, Yindra Zvoda, Thomas Harper, Logan Rolfer, Ewan Gavin Bagayon, Billy Clancy, Sebastian Venkov, Hudson Hidalgo, Stain Becker, Ronan Kompaus, Feder Backer, Lorenko Denise, Petra Milosavlevich, and Matthew Reinol rounds out the grid. And what a grid it is, Chris. Little afternoon of action with these T4s for their super heat number one, the group one of the minis. And let's hope that we see just as much action in this Super Heat as we saw in the last four Mini Heats that we have had so far this weekend. All of which have been absolutely sublime when it comes to action. Plenty of winners, plenty of nations represented, plenty of battles and uh, a lot of fights but a lot of fair play as well. And it is great to see so many drivers coming from all over the world, so many young drivers and so many drivers with uh, plenty of experience and all the mechanics and everyone coming together. Many of these drivers obviously making a holiday out of their uh, experience here at the Nations Cup, here with their families who are cheering them on, be they on the pit wall, the balcony, or the grandstand just next to the start-finish straight. We are about to go racing. And we're away now, and it looks to be a good start from the front row. It looks to be Ben McLaughrey who will lead down into turn one. I think uh, Mio Likon 
Uh, Miko, Leon Schwerz has lost out slightly. He's fallen down to, I think, about fifth position. Leo Livings has managed to get up into second. To my knowledge, I believe that is the case. Yes, it is. It is Leo Livings up into second. And then it's the 1-2-1 one, one machine of Yaramir Arkhipov up from fifth into third. So a good start from all the leaders. Obviously, starting on the left-hand side of the grid, it's very disadvantageous. And so it's to be expected that Miko Leon Schwerz has a lot to do now to get back up into that second position having fallen down the order at the first turn. Yep, through turn number seven and eight for the first time. Uh, we see the minis making their way onto the back straight we go. Top three look like they are threatening to break away. Head down for one, seven, three. Our leader, Ben McLaughrey, driving very well this weekend uh, and now looking to break away as they come in towards the chicane for the first time. Out of the chicane and up to the start finish line, Leo Livings pushing him over to complete the first First lap, we're side by side for third place in the background. That looks like Schwerz getting down the inside of Arkhipov to take third place away from the Spaniard. In behind that is Thomas Harper and Svoboda. Luke Millwood, who was leading the heat earlier on, he's also tucked in that battle as well. We're side by side. In fact, Luke Millwood's made a place in towards turn number four. Luke Millwood goes up to P6. I think that is so good driving from Luke pass for Boda. I think that might be Logan Rolfe trying to chase those guys down. Pushing very hard is Ben McLaughrey. He's got the attention of Leo Livings just behind and there someone running wide. That looked like Svoboda running slightly wide uh, in the battle behind it, which is going on for fourth place. Thomas Harper, the driver, leaning forward coming out through turn eight. 177. Schwerz has escaped all that lot. He's joining the top two. Here we can see Svoboda side by side coming down towards the chicane just trying to tell the drivers behind to uh, have a little think here because the top three are getting away and doing so very quickly. Here's your order across the line at the end of lap two. It's McLaughlin, Livings, Schwerz, Svoboda, Harper, Arkhipov, Millwood, Logan Rolf has caught those guys in the chasing pack. So three for the lead, five in chase as we make our way in towards turn number three on lap three. Watch for Schwerz in third place. He is about to make a challenge for second place. I'd say he might even do it down into turn seven. This is turn number six. Will we see Leo Livings with this try and make an attack through turn six? Here comes that move in towards turn number seven we were talking about, and there it is. Schwerz down the inside of Leo Livings. No surprise there. He did not wait there. He's carrying a lot of place in that car. Is the German there having a good day so far? Is Team Germany and Schwerz looking to add to that with a win this morning? He certainly is, and Ben McLaughrey trying his best just to break away from the pack now. Difficult as it may be, tucking down behind the wheel as they come into the final chicane. No drama from the young Irishman with a very mature drive this weekend. Doing a fantastic job flying the tricolour high for the Republic of Ireland. And a veteran of many a Nations Cup and also a very experienced T4 driver in the Irish National Series with uh, plenty of podiums. Plenty of wins and plenty of experience that has led him here today and put him in this position, leading the first T4 Mini Super Heat and seemingly leading it with a degree of comfort, although he has missed an apex there, and that is going to allow uh, Miko Leon Schwerz to close up slightly, as is the case for Leo Livings, who is now looking at a potential for a first place position if this all goes to pot. But let's take a look at this battle now. This looks to be the battle for fourth position, headed up by Svoboda. Then we've got Harper, Arkhipov, and Millwood all in behind. And uh, looks to be Logan Rolf, who's about to get involved in that battle as well. This could turn into a hugely significant battle for fourth place as the leaders are still line astern coming through the final chicane. Still Ben McLaughrey from Miko Leon Schwerz, the German following the Irishman. And with six laps left to go, there is all still to play for in this T4 Mini Superheat. At round turn one, now we uh, spoke to uh, admit a, a little bit earlier about uh, uh, how fast that caller is. Speaking to uh, 
uh, one of the uh, drivers uh, earlier, which was really great to see. Great to have some company up here this morning, and hopefully uh, we have some more. Was we'll trying to arrange that in the lunch break for us for the super heats. Miko Leon Schwerz going fastest out there now into P2. There he is, and is he going to pull off the same move he did for second? I think he does down the inside, and that is Miko Schwerz into the lead of the race. Hits the front for the first time in this super heat. That will help his points case very much so as he makes his way onto the back straight. Now, this becoming a battle for pole position here. The points will update when they come across the line. As it stands, Ben McLaughlin will be on pole for the final, and Miko Leon Schwerz will be second. But let's see what the points say when they cross the line. I believe that will still be the case. No, they are now tied for points, these two. So if Ben McLaughlin drops one more place, then pole position will go to Miko Leon Schwerz. This is turning into a battle for pole position between these two, and Leo Livings could play a big part in that as they come in towards turn number four, now in towards five. Ben McLaughlin, a front row start would still be very good, but uh, we've seen drivers getting hung out to dry on the opening lap of the race down towards seven. He certainly wants to be the one starting on the inside, and on the inside he is down towards turn number seven, takes the lead back, and with it asserts himself back onto provisional pole. Fantastic racing so far from these front runners. It is important to say the battle for pole position is a very important one. Pole position will almost certainly guarantee you a first place position going into turn one. Second place is a very, very difficult place to start. We haven't seen many occasions where the second place starting driver has managed to maintain second having left turn one. Look at them fly by there on the live stream. You get a great sense of speed of these minis as they fly past our gantry across the start finish line and into sector one for the sixth time this race through the chicane. This is really starting to hot up now between McLaughlin, Schwerz and Leo Livings. The Irishman, the German and the Brit all fighting away. And if Leo Livings can really get involved in this, that could boost him in the qualifying heat standings. As look at this, he's looking up the inside of Miko Leon Schwerz, not able to make any move of it. Is Miko Leon Schwerz going to make a move into turn seven? No, he's not. He still holds station. This looks like it's going to come down, Chris, to another case of last sector, last lap, potentially last corner. Yeah, Leo Living's has got a lot to gain here. He's only three points back from Schwerz, so if he can get past these two, he might be able to assert himself onto that front row, but an inside row to start would not be bad either. That's currently where he would be. Right, onto the start, finish straight we go. Who is it going to be that takes the win here? Schwerz is going to go to the inside of Ben McLaughlin and goes back into the lead of the race, so we have another change of lead in this super heat in the T4 minutes. It is it is uh, Schwerz that gets the lead back from McLaughlin. Leo Livings there in third place, but we're going to have another change. Fighting back there is Ben McLaughlin in towards turn number three, and that's going to be another change through turn four, now into five, and now they roll around turn six, and Ben McLaughlin once again in front, so two changes of lead on the penultimate lap. Are we going to see another into turn seven? Not an attempt there, so surely into the last chicane we might see something going on, but it's all setting up for a very tasty last lap. Leo Living's yet to show his hand, but I think he's just waiting to do so. He's there in third place in the background is Svoboda in a very comfortable fourth place Leo Livings has not played a part in terms of fighting for the win but I'd say he's about to do so on this final lap doing a great job to keep these two honest here we go then on to the last lap a look over the shoulder for Ben McLaughlin at the moment would be on pole position for the final but that could change very quickly on this final lap if he drops to third place and this is crucial for Ben McLaughlin. I was talking with him there during the break. He's very excited to see how he does in this super heat. With only one, well, only one and a half sectors to go, really. He does seem to have it all in control. Look at how close Leo Livings is to the back of Miko Leon Schwerz, though. This could turn into a battle for second, but Leo Livings knows that he doesn't really have to do too much. All he has to do is stand there with his mop, ready to mop up any mistakes that the front two make, but it doesn't look like that's going to happen very easily. Neither of 
Ben McLaughlin or Miko Leon Schwerz seem to be making any mistake. Look at how defensive Ben McLaughlin is moving to the inside line. He desperately wants this win. He goes defensive again into the last chicane. Miko Leon Schwerz outbreaks him and he takes the lead. That is incredible from the young German. Leo Living's in there as well. And Miko Leon Schwerz take a bow, son. That is absolutely sensational. Great move from Miko Leon Spears there to take the race win with the move of the weekend. There is no doubt about that. That was absolutely superb. Round the outside to come through and take the win. Ignore the graphic at the top of your screen. That was a fantastic drive uh, from uh, going round the outside into the final corner. Fantastic stuff there uh, to go round the outside and take the race win. Superb end to the race a uh, fantastic end t4 minis once again delivering we have another race of them uh, coming up a uh, great racing between all the top three once again nico leon schwerz with that move round the outside into the final chicane in that 177 car to go through and take the win there's the updated result on the left hand side of the screen leo livings with that went up into second place and ben mclaughlin dropped to third so that means Miko Leon Schwerz takes pole position for the final and because Ben McLaughlin dropped to third he will start the final from the outside of the front row with Leo Livings on the inside of row three so that is what it has done that move has not only won Miko Leon Schwerz the race it's put him on pole position for the final. So a round of applause and a gold star there for Miko Leon Schwerz, the German, taking the victory at the final corner around the outside. An incredibly difficult move to pull off, but pulled off absolutely sensationally. Then came Leo Livings, as we say, mopping up that mistake by Ben McLaughlin, who fell down to third at the final hurdle, just in front of Yindra Svoboda in fourth, who just missed out on a podium. Thomas Harper finished in fifth, in front of Luke Millwood in sixth, Yaramir Arkhipov in seventh, and Logan Rolf in eighth. Steinbeck and Sebastian Venkov rounded out the top ten, in front of Billy, Cl Billy Clancy, Ronan Campos, Federbacher, Matthew Reinol, Hudson Hidalgo in fifteenth, Ewan Gavin Bugayon in 16th, Lorenko Denis in 17th, and Petra Milosavlovic in position number 18 and rounding out the final classification. So that does mean that one of our T4 mini superheats has been decided and decided in fantastic style as well. And we have even more to come. Another nine lap sprint with the T4 minis and we hope sincerely that this is going to be just as interesting as the last. Next race is in just under five and a half minutes time and it will be the T4 Mini Superheat Group 2 followed by the Junior Superheats Group 1 and 2 respectively, T4 Senior Superheats Group 1 and 2 respectively also throughout the afternoon and then after the T4 Senior 165 Superheat it will be lunchtime for us and we will all refuel ahead of the finals, which, if today's racing is anything to go by, is set to be absolutely spectacular. I've been given my set of notes here for the uh, T4 Senior starting grids and uh, T4 Senior 165, so uh, muchas gracias to all the folks here at the International Cartodromo Lucas Guerrero here just outside of sunny Valencia where the heat is high, the stakes are higher, and everything is about to get a whole lot more interesting as the afternoon goes on. So do make sure to stick with us if you're watching along on the live stream. Make sure to have it on in the background and make sure to take note of what time your favorite classes are going to be racing so that you can be there to cheer them on and observe the action with us, with both myself and Chris and all of us who are here at the Cartodromo. Internacional Lucas Guerrero just outside of Chiva only 30 kilometers as the crow flies to Valencia city center and only roughly 10 kilometers or 10 miles I think it's 10 miles to the circuit Ricardo Tormo which is not too far away and uh, I believe that Chris who I mentioned is down in the pre-grid area Chris what can you tell us about this mini grid that we are about to watch race well, I can say that was a fantastic, uh, I, I guess, teaser as to what could be uh, an amazing final, right? Move 
from Mika Leon Schwerz round the outside into that chicane uh, over there. Superb stuff, absolutely superb stuff. So uh, uh, congratulations uh, to them. Uh, now, I want to try and speak to some people I have not spoke to. We'll certainly be speaking to a lot of these guys before the final. Uh, I think we've speak to, spoken to these guys before, so uh, we're going to move uh, down. We've spoke to uh, Kick. I don't think we've spoken to our South African driver over here. I don't think we've spoke to you before. Uh, hello. Uh, how's it going so far this weekend? Um, it was pretty bad in qualifying, but I made my, my way back to fun. It's good fun. Seemed like you're enjoying yourself. Yeah, I am. Good weekend? Yeah, it's been pretty fun. Excited for the race now? I really am, yeah. Good. Thank you. Wait for me there to fire it up. Thanks a lot for that. Uh, oh, I'm going to come and sit for it. Thank you. Uh, you. You can just, uh, I tell you what, I'm going to, so the fans, I'm going to come around here. That is a hell of an idea. Oh, hello. Uh, how are you doing? Good, you. Uh, what's your name, sorry? Craig Malone. Ah, yes. Uh, you had to come in, did you have to come into the pits at one point yesterday? Yeah, I'm um, my fuel cap. Ah, that's what it was. Yeah, could have been worse. But otherwise, it's been a really good weekend, no? Yeah. And that's not bad. Got a fan on you? Yeah, nice. Oh, very good. Uh, I, I'd ask to take it up to the commentary box. Feel free to come up to commentary and bring it with you. <laughs> yeah. You enjoying it? Yeah, very good. Well, good luck for the weekend. There's, there's, thank you. Uh, I, th I think we spoke to that young driver yesterday. Uh, I'm not sure we spoke to this this driver here, Martin Gomez. Hello there. Are you having a good weekend? Having fun? It's going to get better now? Any, are you got people watching at home? Maybe, maybe. I'm sure you do. I'm sure you do. They're cheering for you. Have a good weekend. Have a good weekend day. We're getting to the end of it now. Uh, I think we spoke to, to them. Uh, I don't know if we spoke to this driver here, so we'll come and speak to yourself. Uh, hello, uh, are you having a good weekend? Sorry? Uh, what's your name, sorry? Ethan Winnesky. And are you having a good good weekend? Yeah. Uh, how did the races go yesterday? It was good. Uh, all right. Has it been really good fun? Having good fun in the paddock? Yeah, been one, been a good track as well. Sorry. A good track as well. It's a very nice track. Yeah. Good stuff. Best of luck. Uh, and I think I'll speak to one more driver if I can. Let's speak to yourself here. Uh, do, 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 do. Hello. Uh, what's your name, sorry? My name's Ronnie. Uh, and Ronnie, you having a good weekend so far? We're having a good weekend. In the first two heats yesterday, I got taken out in the first lap, but it's been overall good. Have you got a lot of people supporting you? Yeah, I have a lot of people at home, family and friends, uh, all supporting me, watching the live video. Well, they're going to be up there watching you. I'm sure you're going to have a great race. Yeah, I will. Good I'll luck. Go. Thanks. Good luck, mate. Good luck. Well, off they go. And that is it. We will go back to you in commentary. Well, thank you very much, Chris, once again for uh, all of your insight and to all of the mini drivers for taking part in the interviews. Great to see so many of them with uh, interesting things to say and uh, surely enough, they will be fully focused now on the job at hand. It will be Taste Van House who leads them towards the light with George House along next to him. That is going to be an incredible battle, particularly given that we've got Mariano Axel Nocom right next to them in third. Then comes Cas Mancha, Kick Dober, Taylin Patel, Jack Harney, Tig Malone. Lots of very skilled drivers. Martin Gomez in there as well. Then comes Raimi Guzman, Fernando Wheeler Jr., Valentina Helena, Deacon Oliver, Jim McClarich, and Evan McLaughrey. And then rounding out the grid, we have Bernie Gamares, the only Spaniard in this race. Then comes Ronnie Legg, who we just spoke to, and Diego Baradon in the final position on the grid. As they round their way through the final sector, all very well behaved, you have to say, getting into their uh, formation nice and early with, you could say, more than a sector to go. That's uh, fantastic behavior given uh, what we saw from the minis yesterday with uh, their freestyle attempts at uh, starting races. Obviously, they've learned their lessons, as we see. I believe that is uh, 
That looks to be the 146. That looks to be Tig Malone there, weaving heavily, trying to warm up the tyres. And it is indeed Tig Malone. And those tyres aren't going to take too long to come up to temperature. With the 24 degree air temperature and very, very little wind, that tarmac is going to be nice and hot. And that rubber is going to be nice and sticky to pull these T4 Mini drivers through the corners as they round the final corner. They get into the tram lines and we get ready to go racing in the minis. And we're away now and it looks to be a good start. George House has fallen down the order. Tace Van House with a good start. However, he is going to lead into turn one. What can George House do? George House, I think he's made it into second position, although I can't quite confirm that as they come past the commentary box. Look at this. George House has fallen down to fourth. And it is, I believe that's, I believe it might be Mariano Axel Nocom who has managed to get up into a very competitive position. It is the 114. It is Taste Van House who. No, it is. It's the 184. It's the 184. It's kicked over. Kicked over has inherited the lead from fifth on the grid. That is an incredible start by the young Dutchman. We haven't seen a whole lot of him today, but surely enough he's had an incredible start he's now lost the lead to the 118 machine that's Mariano Axel Nocom the fast starting Filipino who is being chased down by Tace Van House and in fourth position we've got the 117 of George House this is turning into look at this they're too wide through arguably the fastest corner on the track down into the chicane who's it going to be who comes out on top it's going to be the 184 machine of kicked over still leading the race in front of Tace Van House Mariano Axel Nocom and George House. Then comes Cass Mancha, Taylin Patel, Tyg Malone, Jack Arney and Martin Gomez in front of Fernando Wheeler Jr. What a start to this race. Yeah, kicked over up four places on the opening lap as he uh, heads through turn number three. Tace Van House just in behind. Then it is Axel Nocom in P3 as they uh, head now through turn number five. George House, not the best start to the race for George, who apparently came here with a bit of a fan club after doing so well last year, Stu Stratton was telling me. And uh, now we're going to have a change for lead. Three wide, Axel Nocom down the inside of Taste Van House and kicked over. The, well, that's the power of the toe down that back straight towards turn number seven. Great driving from Axel Nocom. Not the first time we've seen drivers doing that this weekend. Here we go. Axel Nocom trying to get drivers to go with him, but kicked over. Thinking about a move back down the inside into the final chicane. It's Axel Nocom leading the way from kicked over in second. Third place is Tate Van House. Then it is George House. Behind that is Casmante as they come up towards the first corner. There goes George House in fourth place down the inside of Tate Van House. Van House trying to hold on around the outside. And also there was an attempt of a move for the lead. And now George House in trying to go up to uh, third place has dropped back down to fifth. Change for P2 now. Van House getting on the attack, having felt that threat from George House. He's gone past kicked over in towards turn number four. Will we see a change into turn seven? I think we might do. Here we go. Watch second place. Is he going to get out of the slipstream and go for a move? Possibly no. Doesn't quite do so this time. Kicked over this time. Deciding to sit back in behind Axel Nocom as they go on to the back straight. And in fact, these two now with an ever so slight gap as we head on to the back straight. Axel Nocom giving the push signal there to Taste Van House. Let's get away from uh, those guys. They've got uh, maybe a slight opportunity to do so, but uh, kicked over, not letting them get away at all as we come across the line to complete lap number three. And what a fantastic race it has been so far. An incredible start. And the leaders just starting to stretch away now. Mariano Axel Nocom still leads the way. Taste Van House in second position, starting to stretch out a gap about half a second to his fellow Dutchman in third position. Taste Van House also setting the fastest lap at 1.065. That's a very competitive lap time given what we're seeing. The track beginning to heat up and those tyres serving well, provided courtesy of Maxis and they are performing fantastically well in the Spanish sunshine. As long as the pressures are good, as long as they're set up correctly, they can produce some serious lap times. These minis lapping this circuit about a second faster last year than a Rotax Minimax cart. It was absolutely incredible to see. And as they come onto the back straight, they are going to be topping out. Now a slightly stronger headwind down the back straight than there was this morning. The wind beginning to pick up. So that is going to increase the effectiveness 
of slipstreaming and as they come down now onto the start finish straight a lovely tailwind pushing them all along it is still Mariano Axel Nocom from Tace Van House kicked over his fellow Dutchman and then Cas Mancha it is a Dutch 2-3-4 then followed by George House who has fallen down from from uh, second place on the grid I believe that is and uh, is surely looking to get back up into a more competitive position in this race. Kicked over now with the fastest lap, a 106 flat. That is a oh. five-tenth improvement on the previous best. And we got an instant at the chicane. Uh, coming, not coming across the line was uh, Bernie uh, Gomez. Unfortunately, the uh, cart is stationary at the chicane. The driver is in a safe position, walking away, and the marshals will click quickly have to clear that cart as the rest of the field is coming through turn eight, which they are doing so now. So good work by the safety team around but a uh, uh, disappointing end to the superheat there for Gomez as the rest of the field now comes back to uh, the scene of where that stricken car was into view they come great camera work there as Mariano Axel Nocom makes his way onto the start finish straight we'll look over the shoulder at Tace Van House Van House just settling into this race as is kicked over and in doing so look at the gap they have pulled to Casmante and George House those two will not give up on catching these three down there is no doubt about that at all but uh, Mariano Naxal Nocom continuously just looking over to monitor the situation behind him still only two drivers to deal with so far can it become three we'll keep an eye on the lap times next time around but uh, so far he has two drivers behind him who are willing to work with him in the background Casmante and George House are doing the same then we have uh, uh, four drivers all in a line battling over sixth place Patel Malone uh, Harney and also Olivier as well they're all battling over sixth place as we head down to the chicane into the chicane now good braking there from Mariano Axel Nocom managed to stretch a cart length on the exit he's got that one absolutely nailed and in the background it looks like we've got a possible change of position yes we do George House sells the dummy on Casmante look to the outside switch back across to the inside and that is textbook stuff from George House to go through into fourth but he's not going to stay there you may see it in the background now Casmante just ahead so those two swapping around and and in doing so, they've fallen now around two seconds back from our lead three. And it's amazing just how much time can be lost through a small little battle like that. Only two or three corners they were battling for and so much time lost to the leaders. That really has allowed Mariano Axel Nocom, Tace Van House and Kick Dober to really check out in front with more than two seconds, as Chris said, to George House behind and then Cas Mancha, who has been trying to catch back up to them and was probably hoping for a bit of... Bit of uh, international cooperation from George House, the reigning champion. Um, but nevertheless, that hasn't happened. And so it is just a fight to the finish now, it seems, between House and Casmanche. See who comes up to the line. There's Casmanche saying, come on, man, let's work together. Tapping the back of his helmet. George House is not interested in listening. Casmanche goes defensive. House unable to do anything as the battle for first is beginning to heat up with, uh, that is... Uh, Kick Dober starting to look at, uh, a bit hungry at the chance of overtaking his countryman, Tace Van Huys. But nevertheless, nothing can be made of it just yet. And I wouldn't be at all surprised if it's this time next lap that we begin to see some serious moves being contemplated by the Dutch contingent of Kick Dober and Tace Van Huys at the front. No action as of yet, but they are so close together. All it would take is one mistake, and we're seeing slightly different lines there. Mariano Axel Nocom taking a slightly more defensive line, running a bit wider, and as they come down into turn number nine, you could cover these three with a blanket. There is Mariano Axel Nocom going defensive to the inside and manages to maintain the position. No real threat posed there by Tace Van House, but a good insight 
into the mindset of the Filipino, who's failed to defend this time. And up the inside goes Tace Van Haus, and he takes the lead on the final lap at turn one, snatches the position off the Filipino, who is now under pressure from kicked over behind, but he's not done yet. His eyes are forward, his attention is forward. Can he take the position back at turn number four? The answer is a firm no. Tace Van Haus eliminating that opportunity, but it's not over yet for Mariano Axel Nocom, nor is it over for Kicked Over. He's going to be thinking, what can I make of this coming down into turn seven? And the final sector, look at Tace Van Haus up the inside, trying to make the pass again. Oh, look at that. Oh, my goodness me, this is absolutely fantastic racing. Mariano Axel Nocom retakes the lead. And look what I said about Kicked Over. For once, I was right in commentating. Kicked Over takes the lead, but only just in front of Tace Van Haus as they flow through the final sector, down into the final chicane. Is there going to be any moves of heroics? No, there is not. And it looks like it's going to be Kicked Over who will win the T4 Mini Group 2 Super Heat. And look at that how much it means to him. He is absolutely beside himself. And the young Dutch driver who has kept himself to himself, he's kept his head down and his eyes forward all race, allows a burst of emotion as he comes across the line and is absolutely ecstatic with that victory. Yeah, an engine problem for someone coming over the line there. Not too sure uh, who that was exactly. Uh, pulling over to the uh, side. We'll pick that up. And I think it might be Valentina Helena uh, who uh, uh, maybe had a problem, but uh, we'll turn our attention back to Kick Dover because uh, great driving, great move out of this corner here. Found a gap on the inside and uh, still shaking his head. Can't quite believe what he'd managed to do there. Managed to find a gap on the inside, got through and kicked over. You can see what meaning a super heat wins you never know could be the final later on if he's to put off a performance like that again it was a superb race from himself tapes van house mariano axel no com as well all three would have been deserved winners in the end it was kicked over and Tog malone as well we spoke to him on the grid well done he came up to fourth place at the end passing casmanta and george house as well so well done to Targ malone recovering well after the missing fuel cap he had yesterday but uh, that's the gap between the top two 75 thousands kicked over winning the race and a fantastic performance it was the flying dutchman of kicked over who managed to take the victory having climbed four positions started p5 finished in position number one in front of his countryman Tace Van Haus who was always up there but didn't manage to clinch the victory in the end they finished in front of Mariano Axel Nocom who just missed out on securing a victory and then came Tig Malone and Cas Manche. then came the uh, the number 117 of George House in front of Jack Harney and Taylin Patel and came Deacon Oliver and Raimi Guzman finishing out the top 10 positions. Martin Gomez finished in position number 11 in front of Jim and Claridge and Fernando Wheeler. Evan McLaughry finished in 14th place in front of Ronnie Legg and Diego Baradone. Then came Valentina Helena and unfortunately Bernie Gomares not able to finish that race. Now comes to the part of the day where the commentary box begins to get increasingly warm and uh, unfortunately we can't figure out how to work the air conditioning. Um, we've tried and unfortunately we have failed and no amount of uh, chewing gum and duct tape unfortunately can uh, fix this issue it seems. It was the 192, it was Fernando Wheeler Jr. who was stopped on the entry to turn one. Uh, disappointing for the young Guatemalan racer in his third Nations Cup appearance and a uh, disappointing end to that super heat for him being stranded on the inside of turn number one and uh, we'll be looking to make up more positions in the finals and those will be coming up after the t4 junior heats super heats excuse me and then the t4 senior and senior 165 super heats and then after lunch we will have the finals the t4 minis kicking off at half past three local time the juniors at 10 to 4 local time Seniors at 10 past four local time and then the 165s at half past four with the podium presentations being made at five o'clock. So do make sure to stay tuned. And if you are watching along and you're enjoying the racing, 
I don't know under what circumstances you wouldn't be enjoying the racing, but if you are enjoying the racing, please do remember to leave a like on the live stream and make sure to follow Tillotson on all of our social medias to stay up to date with all of the Nations Cup action. Big thank you to all of our sponsors as well, IPK, Marline Fuels, PVL Ignition, Maxis Racing and uh, also Tidal Sports for all of their support in this T4 Nations Cup and for the T4 Series more widely all around the globe, more than 30 regions world worldwide the T4s are raced in and it's great to see such an international contingent with 28 of those nations being represented here this weekend. Thanks also must go out to the Cartodromo Internacional, Lucas Guerrero, the RGMMC, and also the RFEDA for all of their support in running this event. And uh, also to the unsung heroes of motorsport, the Orange Army, the Marshals who sprung into action no end of times yesterday and also have been very active today. And uh, we do have Chris down ready in the pre-grid area. Chris, what can you tell us about this T4 junior heat that we are about to witness? Thank you very much, Simon. Uh, there goes Three Minute Board. Um, uh, this Noah Rossa, uh, who's going to come and join us in commentary. Uh, what's, your th what's your thoughts on uh, what you've seen so far in juniors? Oh, it's, it's pretty tough. Everybody's, you know, same speed. Uh, it's just whoever plays the draft card right, and I am both. It's super, super competitive. Um, whoever can get a good start, it's a million things can happen. Yeah, uh, yeah. Look, you're gonna come and join us. We'll let you get in the zone for your race. Uh, thank you, thank you. Uh, so I'm gonna walk down. Uh, there's Stu Stretton. I mean, look, look at what this man is wearing. Look at what this man is. How, how on earth are you wearing that, Stu? I'm ginger. I gotta be covered up. <laughs> Having a good time. Uh, yeah, brilliant event. Absolutely loving it. This is the, I'll give the... Him and Josh are the best karting photography team out there. Yeah, I'm better than Josh, though. <laughs> <laughs> Who haven't I spoke to? That's what I'm trying to think. I want to speak to some new people. Uh, 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 have we spoken? We've spoken? Okay, cool. Uh, I believe I've spoke to Martin. Very good race so far. Uh, we had Damon in commentary. Um, We've spoken before. Uh, I want to speak to some new faces. Uh, I don't know if we spoke. I don't think we have. Uh, hello. Uh, how are you doing? Uh, what's your name? Uh, my name is Richard Chika. And uh, how's your weekend been? Yeah, my weekend's been uh, pretty good. Uh, and enjoying enjoying the whole experience of it all? Yeah, I am really enjoying the lot of Good stuff, good stuff. Best of luck. Best of luck for the race, young man. Um, cool. Let's go over here. Um, I'm going to speak to this guy. Uh, how, what's, what's your name? Ma Matthias Lohen. And are you having a good weekend? Good weekend. Very good. Yes. We're going to get P1. Yes. Good stuff. Good stuff. <laughs> Best of luck. Uh, and we'll speak to uh, this guy here, Richter. Uh, hello there. Uh, what's your, uh, introduce your, what's your name? Uh, my, my name is Matteo Richter. And uh, whereabouts are you from in America? How are you enjoying Spain? I'm doing pretty good, but I'm looking for top 10, top 15. It's yeah. good for me. We think we can do it. We got the pace and the car to do it. Yeah. yeah. About slipstream in this, isn't it? And working your way through. Yep. Team USA is going well. For sure. Team USA all the way. Yeah. yeah good stuff. Best of luck. Uh, thank you very much, guys. I think that will about do it. Uh, this this young man looks fired up. I'm going to speak to the Spaniard here very quickly. We're ready to go for this one. We're going to make some places. Yeah. Uh, ten places. Ten? Yeah. Let's do it, man. Ten places. Let's go. I like that. I like the enthusiasm. I'm looking out for that one. We're going to be looking out for that one, Simon. Uh, whistle's going to go. Now, carts are going to go. Back up to Simon with the grid. Well, thank you very much for that, Chris. And uh, it is set to be a brilliant junior superheat now. The first of two that we have for you this afternoon before the finals. And it is going to be Sean Canivet, the Frenchman, who will be leading all of the drivers down into turn one, down past the lights, alongside Daniel Hartley and Chase Gassiet Lee just behind him. Then comes Aaron Coogan and Nico Franca, and then Eric Cuesto and Antonio Martinez in front of Martin Wright and Lachlan Shearsmith. Damon Vitter in front of Mark Fleming 
Joey Carney, Matthias Glover, Richard Seker, Matteo Richter, who we just spoke to. And then comes Brooke Loretti, Edward Clark, Jesus Asuncion, William Omar, Patricia Alcaraz, and Aston Sanchez. And it is set to be an absolutely fantastic final. As we say, Shan Canivet with a fantastic performance this morning, battling right up at the front during the T4 Junior Heats that they had earlier on today. And a fantastic job by all of our competitors. Daniel Hartley having a good showing, as did uh, Chase Gassiat Lee. He finished in, I believe it was fifth position. Aaron Coogan was, was also up there. Nico Franca, he's one to watch as well. Fast starting German, many a time. Eric Cuesto starting slightly further back than arguably he should be. His pace is more reflective of the, uh, the top five than his starting position of sixth and uh, many of the drivers will be looking to climb their way up. There can only be one winner in T4s, however. That will be decided after lunch. The T4 Super Heats are designed to give us a prediction as to who will come out on top in the finals. But it is the Super Heats that we have to be concerned about now. We all look to the lights and we go racing immediately. It's a brilliant start by Daniel Hartley. He immediately cuts to the inside and takes first position off Shan Canive, who gives him a, a bump into the turn one. But it is a fantastic start by the Briton of Daniel Hartley taking Shan Canive off the start. Shan Canive is not done yet, though, as there's some battling going on slightly further down the field into the midfield. But it is Daniel Hartley who leads from Shan Canive and then Taman Vitter, I believe it is in, uh, no, excuse me, not Taman Vitter. It looks to be perhaps Chase Gassiat Lee in third position. Yeah, we had a problem for a couple of cars there. I think Brooke Loretti is going to go no further in this race. There you can see uh, Loretti being dragged away, unfortunately. So uh, an early in for Brooke Loretti, but uh, a good start uh, out front for Daniel Hartley, who leads us on to the back straight for the first time. He is under investigation. Could be for the start, but he's being pushed along for Shan uh, Canave. We won't say much more of that unless we hear of it. Into the final chicane we go, and carrying a lot of speed into there was Daniel Hartley. Here we go. Canave uh, pointing forward as he makes his way now down the inside, changing his intentions within a couple of meters. Now gets down the inside of Daniel Hartley. Daniel Hartley not fighting it at all. These two look like they might try and work together here they've got to be very conscious that the likes of Coogan and Gassio Lee just behind them so they've got a chasing back in chase in Coogan Martin Wright is in there as well who's been on fire all weekend then Gassio Lee then Cuesto uh, as well who's been putting in great performances as well remember this is their final chance to score points for their nations and the final chance to score points for their grid positions as well so at the end of group two we will know the top eight positions on our timing screen as for the grid for the final on to the back straight is daniel hartley going to take the lead here martin wright we've seen him throughout the weekend not wanting to wait around he likes to get to the front pretty quickly did not go for the move that time on coogan though let's see if he changes his mind on the exit coogan aware that there could be a threat incoming looks to the inside to defend and martin wright will now perhaps launch an attack coming through turn three or four we watch him up towards turn three now daniel hartley staying in behind shan canavay here's turn four this has been a popular overtaking spot but not on this occasion they stay as they were canavay hartley coogan wright cuesto that's your top five all in a line out of turn number five on lap three and what a start it's been. It's emerging into a five-cart battle for the lead now as we make our way down into sector number three. A little bit of bumping go. Shan Canive has gone deep, and that is going to leave him vulnerable. He's been taken by Daniel Hartley, and he's vulnerable to Aaron Coogan. Coogan's been pushed onto the grass. Shan Canive has just about held onto the position. No, he's been taken by Martin Wright. Martin Wright up into second position in front of Shan Canive, and Shan Canive is going to have serious momentum issues if he's not careful. He's got Eric Cuesto, the American behind him and he is going to be looking to get past Aaron Coogan has been dumped right down to the back of this train into position number seven that's a terrible turn of events for the Irishman determined as ever tucking down behind the wheel trying to make up that lost time but this has given real breathing room to Daniel Hartley 
Seven tenths of a second is the gap now, caused by that small little mistake from Shan Canive, who is trying to defend desperately from Eric Cuesto. Taman Bitter has set the fastest lap. He's currently sitting in position number eight and could easily come into the fray towards the end of this race. But it is still Daniel Hartley, Martin Wright, Shan Canive defending desperately from Eric Cuesto, who's sitting just behind him there. And a warning flag for Daniel Hartley there. It remains to be seen what that is for but uh, we will bring you that information if we receive it. As we look, Shan Canive still defending from Eric Cuesto, and it has all gone downhill oh, since the days. Someone's off at turn number eight there. Not too sure who that was. Rejoins very slowly. We'll see the sector times and see who comes through the last sector slowly, but I'm not too sure. It might have been Nico Frank uh, who went off there, has dropped down to 10th place, lost five places on that lap, so I fear Nico Frank is the driver that unfortunately found them off the circuit and dropped down. Yes, it is. Nico Frank is now down to 13th place. What a shame uh, for the German. They've had a great morning so far in terms of the Nations Cup, but uh, Nico Frank uh, having a, a little bit of a disappointing first half of this race. Right, we're back with Daniel Hartley, the leader, as he now has company in his countryman, Martin Wrights. This is good for Team UK as they make their way on turn six, but they've got the French driver of Canavet just in behind and then the American of Cuesto as well. They hit the brakes in towards turn number seven. Martin Wright working with Daniel Hartley here. Canave in behind him. Then it is Cuesto next along. The gap to Vita who joined us up in commentary earlier is 1.3 seconds. That's how far away he is. He's got Coogan with him in P6. Then it is Martinez and Gassioli. Uh, Omar is P9 and Fleming is in 10th place. Out of the final corner. Five laps in the books now. Are we going to see a move here from Martin Wright? No. Pushes uh, Dan Daniel Hartley along in towards turn one. So that shows his intentions and his plans for this race get away and it's working ever so slightly they've got a gap of four tenths now to the chasing pack but uh, these gaps can go up and down very quickly the quickest driver on circuit speaking of lap times is Gassioli down in p8 and he is part of a four-way battle for p4 and this could turn into another very interesting battle we've got the battle for the top three that we're looking at four carts involved there with uh, Hartley Wright, Canive and Cuesto all line astern currently. There could be another very interesting battle emerging for position number five, as Chris says, as they all make their way onto the back straight. Still no drama from the leaders, all just sort of trying to stretch out a gap. Shan Canive having fallen back by probably about five cart lengths there to Martin Wright in front. Still no heroics through the final chicane, and as they come on to lap number six, the next lap will be the penultimate one, and so it will be all to play for between the leaders. So there's a move there for the lead. That's Martin Wright up the inside of Daniel Hartley into turn one. Oh, and there's contact between Canive and Hartley. Hartley getting all kinds of out of shape. He maintains the position, though, just about Shan Canive down to third. Hartley still in second, and here comes Eric Cuesto up the inside of Shan Canive through turn four. Can he get the move done? Yes, he can. The American is through. Sorry, Chris, I bumped into him there while he's trying to fix the air conditioning, and Eric Cuesto says come on let's work together Shan and uh, gestures to the Frenchman that we need to get moving after Martin Wright who thanks to this is able to pull out a six tenth gap as Hartley's gone deep he's come back onto the track he's just about maintaining his position but there's Canive mopping up the mess and retaking second place what a move by the young Frenchman this is absolutely sensational racing from him as we have Daniel Hartley now down to third Eric Cuesto down to fourth and Taman Vitter is now involved in this as well as a multitude of other drivers that looks like Coogan Gassio Lee is also getting involved in that and William Omar could also come into this but as they come down into turn one Daniel Hartley up the inside of Shan Canive Shan Canive fighting back Hartley's going to have the inside line into the chicane can he do anything no Shan Canive just about holds on to the position with Daniel Hartley falling back Eric Cuesto behind him and that looks to be Taman Vitter trying to make moves in the 246 machine I think that is 
can't actually see because the bumping and barging has caused the numbers to be blacked out. There's Aaron Coogan, though, making opportunistic moves. They're three wide with Coogan. That looks like Martinez and perhaps Gassio Lee. Oh, my goodness me. This is absolutely exceptional racing for position number five. Great stuff in the middle of the top ten. Meanwhile, out front, Martin Wright has escaped. Currently, he would be starting in P5 in the final. He's going along really well in this race. 1.1 ahead of Shan Canave with one to go as they come over the line. Now, main battle is for P3, and Cuesto knows that maybe Canave is a little bit too far ahead, and he goes down the inside of Daniel Hartley. Good move from the American to get by, uh, and Daniel Hartley there. Great driving from Cuesto, gets himself up into P3. Daniel Hartley will no doubt fight back. Trying to catch in on these guys is Vita as well. And I tell you what, he will have an opportunity to be a part of this come the final chicane as well. He won't be alone either. We've got Coogan there, Gassio Lee as well. And also Martinez, Antonio Martinez, also in there in P8. William Omar is then in P9, having having had a really good race so far. Come up 10 places in this race. Out of turn eight they come. There goes Vitter to the outside of Daniel Hartley. Curesto defending furiously. Here they go. Daniel Hartley thinks he's found a gap on the inside at turn nine. It shuts immediately. Now they come into the final chicane for the final time. There's our leader, it, Martin Wright. He's going to take the win. Second will be Canada. Who will be third? It will be Eric Curesto in a drag race to the line. Daniel Hartley finishes in fourth, Tame and Bitter in P5, Coogan in P6. So Martin Wright it is then, yet again, on the move, seven places gained. He's gained probably over 25 places coming through the order this weekend. Seven more places gained in that one, and he takes a very deserved race win. He's got to be one of the favourites going in to the final, the way he's been driving. Shan Canave continues his good performances. Currently, he's going to be the man to start on pole position in the final later on. The young driver in the yellow crash helmet there. And Eric Cuesto will start P5, but we still have another super heat still to go so that is your lot from group one just a couple of shout outs William Omar up 10 places tonight and we spoke to Aston Sanchez on the grid and he said he was going to gain 10 places and that's exactly what he did P11 for Aston Sanchez so a well done to him plenty to recap from that one here's the order for you so it was the Briton Martin Wright who managed to take the flag in front of Shan Canive, the Frenchman, and Eric Cuesto from the USA. Then came Daniel Hartley after that fantastic start, falling down the order slightly. Then came Taman Vitter and Aaron Coogan in position number six. Then came Chase Garcia Lee and Antonio Martinez, the leading Spaniard, in front of William Omar, Mark Fleming, and the aforementioned Aston Sanchez. Then came Richard Saker in position number 12. Matteo Richter gained two positions to finish in 13th. Joey Carney finished in 14th. And then Nico Franca having that unfortunate off, losing 10 positions from where he started, finishing down in 15th place. Matthias Glover finished 16th in front of Lachlan Shearsmith, Jesus Asuncion and Edward Clark. And then our non-finishers were Brooke Loretti and Patricia Alcaraz. Very unfortunate there to see both of them going out. Um, but nevertheless, they will have a chance to redeem themselves in the final. And uh, we can only hope that the action in that final will be even better than the action we've witnessed so far, which has been absolutely top draw. This is why we love karting. There is no motorsport purer than go-karting, and there is no karting better, in my opinion, than the T4s. Between the atmosphere, the action, and everything else, it is an absolutely brilliant series, and I sincerely hope that you are getting the correct impression that we are trying to put across today of Formula One without the money, and uh, also Formula One without the politics for uh, this weekend, as everyone working together and having a good time. It is a party atmosphere, very much so, in the tents, and uh, I learned that firsthand when the uh, South Africans gave me some pizza for uh, the 20 minute break that we had, which was very nice of them. And uh, I'll be sure to join them later for uh, a beer or a can of Coke or something, provided that I am allowed to. Next race is coming up in five minutes flat. It will be the T4 Junior. No, it won't be the T4 Junior final. I believe it will be the T4. 
I, goodness me, I cannot remember. No, it will be the T4 Super Heat 2 for the juniors. Goodness me, I thought that we just had the second one. No, thankfully, we do have another T4 Junior Super Heat, and that will be absolutely sensational if anything that we've just seen is going to happen again, which it more than likely will because T4s are just exceptionally close when it comes to pace. They are all exactly equal. Every single ounce of these carts is equal. Everything is made to be balanced in performance. And Chris, you are down in the pre-grid area. What can you tell us about this next T4 Junior Superheat? Time to go racing with this. Time uh, in the T4 Juniors. Welcome down to the grid, everyone. T4 Juniors getting ready to go for their final uh, Superheat. That was a good one to get us started, uh, wasn't it? Uh, we are going to try and find some new faces uh, that we haven't really spoke i don't know if we really spoke to our pole sitter too much so we'll, we'll come to uh, yourself first um on pole for for this one last chance to get some good points in uh clearly it's been going very well so far yes going well yeah. uh, and tell us about, about how tough the racing has been uh, out there how hard it's been to get yourself in this position it's quite tough we've got good drivers in this t4 Tillerson cup so you must you must work hard to be in front How's the atmosphere down in Team South Africa? Yeah, it's, it's good. It's not. It's good. It seemed very good in Drivers' Parade, so it seems like we're having a good time. Yes. Good stuff. Best of luck. Uh, South Africa actually set up next to Team UK as well, was down in that awning uh, earlier. I want to try and find some new faces that I haven't spoke to uh, before yet. I don't know if I've uh, spoke to this person here, so I'll wait to they get fired up. Yawn. Hello. Uh, and what's your name there? Bjorn Howler. Uh, and you're having a good time so far? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Ice weather. Hopefully with this one we're good. Can't go wrong. And you're in a good grid position. Yeah. You're in a good grid position as well. Yeah. So it's going very well. Yeah, for sure. We have the inside, so hopefully we can gain place. Are we going to gain, well, what's that? Seven, five or six places here? Yeah, for sure. Definitely. Yeah, good. Go get them. Go get them. Good luck. Good luck. Thank you. Uh, okay, let's keep walking down. Let's keep walking down. I think we've spoken to these guys. Uh, let's go. Let's go over here. Let's go over here and speak to this driver here. Hello there. And, and what's your name? My name is Elia. And how are you going this weekend so far? It seems like you've been going very well. Sorry, I didn't know you were yeah. you, you had you had some good pace so far from what I've seen. Uh, pace has been okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Very good. Oh, one, one, it's okay. So that's good? No. Uh, are we gonna get how are we gonna do today? B1. B1? Yes. Hundred percent. Good luck. <laughs> good stuff, good stuff. Sorry, uh it is very loud down here, so I don't always catch everything the guys are saying, but I'm doing my best. Let's go down here. I don't think I've spoken to this driver. Hello there, and what's your name? And how's your weekend been so far? A bit tough? No. Are you having a good time? Yes. Enjoying it? Yeah. Enjoying the weather? It's very good. Very good. Yeah. Carts are good. Good. Good to drive. It's okay. And good track. Good stuff. Good stuff. Best of luck for this one. Um, we'll speak to uh, a couple more. I don't know if we've spoken to... Uh, this driver yet, so we'll squeeze in. Uh, hello there. Uh, so, uh, how how are we doing so far? Are we enjoying the weekend, or it's been a bit tough? Uh, enjoying it, but it's been very tough making my way through the field. Think we can make some places here? Yeah. Yeah. Send it. Nothing to lose. Yeah. Have, having good fun though. That's the main thing, right? Yeah, it's very fun. Good yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff. Be best of luck for this one. Uh, and I think that will be a lot. Let's come and have a. How are we doing? What? How are we doing? Are we, gonna, are we looking forward to the race? Yes, yes. Are we going to make some places? Yes, I do. Ten? Ten places? Yes. Fifteen. Fifteen. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. I'm looking forward to that. Fifteen places. I like it. I like it. Uh, well, best of luck to all the drivers. Uh, thank you for speaking to us. I'm loving the enthusiasm. There goes the whistle. Here's Simon with the grid. Up to you. Well, thank you very much, 
uh, for that, Chris. Great to see so many drivers taking part in interviews. As I say, thank you to all of them. And uh, it's very nice to have the opportunity to speak to the drivers. You wouldn't really get this in many other karting series where the drivers are so open to having conversations right before race starts. So it is great to see um, such open drivers. Anyways, let's take you through the grid. It is going to be Ricardo Tabut from South Africa who starts on pole. Amelie Ackett will start alongside in second. Then comes Chase Pascalia and Brian Wilson in front of Trudy Adams and Jakob Josef Havel. Then comes Jorn Helder from the Netherlands in front of Phil Becker and Josh Allen. Then comes Keith Burke, Elias Fornes, Pri Trevino and Tara Keneally. Then comes Daniel Brunetsky from the Czech Republic, Daniels Petris Bazins from Latvia. Then comes Anastasia Jurassis from South Africa, Mika Sprentz, Victor Hampel, Kirill Zmitrievs, Warren Russell. And then rounding out the grid is Juan Diego Perez. So a fantastic grid here for this second T4 Junior Superheat. And it should be a fantastic occasion. And uh, the marshals, it's a, it's a rare occasion when the marshals have to tell the drivers towards the rear that they need to speed up to catch up with the rest of the pack. But I do believe that we should be all in position in, in time for the race start. And that looks to be true as they round the final corner as uh, Juan Diego Perez forms up to the back of the queue. They get into the tram lines and we prepare to go racing. We're away now and it looks to be a pretty good start by Amelie Ackett, but I don't think she'll be alongside enough to make any headway into turn number one. It is going to be Ricardo Tabut who leads into turn one. Amelie Ackett's being hung out to dry on the outside. Chase Bascalia up the inside. Has Chase Bascalia taken the lead? He has. Bascalia up into the lead in front of Ricardo Tabut. Then that is the uh, the 472. That looks to be Brian Wilson perhaps who has made his way up into third place as Ricardo Tabut is getting shuffled down constantly in the 244. That is, no, it's truly out Adams, truly Adams from fifth on the grid all the way up to second. That is an exemplary start by the young Californian and uh, alongside his countrymen currently occupying first place but not for long. It is American Civil War round two going into turn seven but alas nothing comes of it for truly Adams. Chase Pascalia still holding on to that position in front of truly Adams, Ricardo Tabut and then comes, I'm trying to see which number it is, I can't quite see it. it's the 267 machine, that is Jorn Helder with a fantastic start, Jorn Helder the Dutch driver getting up into position number 4 as they make their way down through the final chicane and onto the start finish straight, Bascalia leads across the line in front of his American compatriot Ricardo Tabut, then comes Jorn Helder Amli Ackett, Brian Wilson, Jakob Josef Havel, Phil Becker, Keith Burke and Josh Allen as they flow their way through turn one and down towards the chicane close start out front as ever in t4 junior we're seeing chase pascalia leading the pack now in towards turn three and we're seeing a move for third place as well side by side is to uh, and helder there so akits is going to make a place and get up to fourth place as the two leaders of pascalia and adams come down the start finish straight and we see akits is now up a place in towards fourth you can see that uh, her in the blue race suit and black crash helmet ahead of 267 which is at Jorn Helder who we spoke to out there on the pre-grid here they come down the back straight truly Adams looking over his shoulder and a big burst of encouragement there as he can see they've got a gap over the rest of the field it's six tenths of a second there is a chance here possibly to break away very hard to do in this level of racing but they're going to certainly give it a go Chase Pascalia assessing this situation Amelie Ackett getting third place down the inside in towards turn number one goes by Ricardo Tabut she's been driving very well all weekend is Amelie Ackett and so far she would be starting on the outside of the second row that might move her up onto the inside of row two the move she's just made there so we'll review that at the end of this lap she is in a battle for a possible front row start with Ricardo Tabut and Chase Bascalia as well. So plenty at stake here. Shan Canave, it's gonna, he's going to be the driver to start on pole. There's no two ways about that. It's, who gonna, it's who's going to join him on the front row. 
and who will be directly behind him on the inside of row two, which is a very valuable spot at this level of racing and at this circuit. Here they come. Let's uh, see how the points change when they come in towards the final chicane. Biscalia and Adams trying to help USA win the Nations Cup. They come across the line now, and Chase Biscalia moves onto the front row of the grid provisionally, and Amelie Akis onto the inside of row two. And the inside of row two, arguably better than starting in second, as we saw. Amelie Akis has a lot of experience with starting in that second place slot around the outside at turn one. Very, very difficult being on the disadvantageous line. Very easy to get shuffled out and lose two, three, four, even five positions at times. As we see a move there, that looks to be uh, Elias Fornes getting past Keith Burke for position number nine. As we watch the leaders coming down into turn number seven, still Truly Adams and Chase Biscani are working with each other. No battling happening just yet, but we can be sure that that, will, uh, that rule will go out the window in but a few laps time when it comes down to the thick of it. Truly Adams desperately wanting to take a victory in the superheat, having had a fifth place in yesterday's heat number four and a fourth place in his first heat yesterday. And uh, having pretty much dominated this class last year, winning two out of the three heats. He's looking to regain that form ahead of the final and try to defend his title, which he looks to be doing reasonably effectively if you look at his pace. He's only got less than a tenth of a second between himself and Chase Viscalia, but Ricardo Tabut in fourth place is one to watch. He's coming through the field quickly, 105.4, very fast lap. Amelie Akits is going to be coming under pressure from him if she's not careful and uh, I don't have a feeling that he is going to want to uh, wait up for her and I'm not entirely sure that there will be too much uh, team orders involved there given that they are from two completely separate nations. Obviously Amelie Ackett's the Briton and then Ricardo Tabut, the quickest South African here this weekend, one could argue. Certainly in the T4 Junior category, he is right up there constantly. Whenever he gets in the cart, he is very, very quick indeed and potentially a contender for a podium when the final comes along. As they make their way out of the chicane, onto the start-finish straight, it is still the two Americans bump drafting each other down into turn one, trying to break away, not having too much success though. Still two tenths to Ackett's in third place. With Ackett setting the fastest lap now, a 105.3. This is going to really put them under pressure and look how close Ackett's is now. Less than probably a foot separating them. There is confirmation of Amelie Ackett's fastest lap. And Chase Biscalia is going to really start feeling the pressure from behind, as will Truly Adams, who is going to be thinking, right, we really need to get a move on here. Yeah, um, Amelie Ackett, as we mentioned, inside road to start currently, so uh, might be tempted to stay there. But she, of course, has Ricardo to boot right behind, who has also places to be made when it comes to that grid as well he can also get himself onto the front row if he's to get back past Amelie Ackett's then he goes back onto the inside of row two down the back straight we see a change there Helder just got a better run out the corner then to Butt, and they both sort of looked at each other for a second they both want to get moving here so uh, in the end to Butt allowed Helder to just take that place and go through and now they're going to try and work together and get off to these top three once more which should happen very quickly given the power of the toe around this circuit round turn number two now in towards turn three we go and there we see them coming up towards turn number four and this into the opening section of corners now round five and into six we can see the top five all together here it's a fantastic battle we've seen so far and it's going to get even more so because Trilly Adams is now gone for the first attack on his countryman he's gone past Chase Biscalia he's currently seventh on the grid for the final wants to try and get himself further up the order and truly Adams gets himself into the lead of this race that's the best he can do so far head down for truly Adams as we now come in towards the final uh, chicane we've got Chase Biscalia just behind then it's Amelie Ackett's in P3 round the final chicane they go Helder is there in fourth place having 
probably the best race he's had all weekend as we now head down to the first two corners we can see them in towards the first couple of corners now and Amelie Ackett's getting down the inside there to go through into P2 getting by Chase Pascalia great driving from Amelie Ackett's and that should put her onto the front row of the grid and does so so Amelie Ackett's is now onto the front row but Chase Pascalia fights back in towards turn number four great racing from our juniors and this just the first of two races we've got coming up from these guys Helder drops back uh, behind Ricardo to put as they now come down towards turn number seven it's Trilly Adams leading from Chase Muscalia the two Americans have done very well to get a gap over the remaining pack they may push each other to the line here now but Chase Muscalia let's see what he does he's uh, might work with his countrymen here might open up a battle for the lead all still to be decided one more lap to decide who's going to win this super heat in the juniors five of them could possibly win it here they come up to the start finish line now and truly adams tapping the back of his helmet saying let's work together and look at amelie ackett's how defensive she is driving into turn one not ceding any positions to anyone though ricardo tabut and also jorn helder behind her who are eager to get onto that top three but alas, nothing can be done for now. Look at Truly Adams up the inside of Chase Pascalia through turn four. That is a fantastic move. American on American. And Tr Truly Adams takes the lead in the last lap, the second sector of the last lap. How many times are we going to see this where the final finishing order is decided in the last two sectors of the last lap? Chase Pascalia has no defense as they come in to turn number seven and out through eight there's nothing that he can do really the gap is large enough that truly Adams has a little bit of breathing room look at him how defensive he's driving not quite all the way to the inside but it wouldn't be far if he needed to he moves all the way to the inside though for the final chicane defends hard Chase Pascalia tries his best but there's nothing he can do truly Adams all the way to the line Adams takes it in front of Pascalia and Ricardo to boot Amliakic's just missing out on a podium by the skin of her teeth but uh, does walk away with the fastest lap and then came Jorn Helder and Phil Becker in sixth position. Yeah, well done to Trilly Adams. Lost the lead on that last lap going into turn one, but regained it back straight away just three corners later. And Trilly Adams taking a very deserved win there. That puts Trilly Adams on row number three for the final. We know the top four rows. Shan Canivet, who's been exceptional all weekend, will very deservedly start on pole position. He's had such a consistent weekend. Ricardo Tabut, who finished third in that race in the 282, will join the Frenchman on the front row of the grid. Amelie Akis, she will start on the inside of row two, arguably the best place to start in a final like this. Uh, Chase Piscalia will be alongside her on row two. Row three uh, will be Chase Gassioli and Trilly Adams, the winner of that race. And then Coogan and Cuesto will be row four. But here is the finishing order of Super Heat 2. So it was Truly Adams who saw the flag first in front of Chase Piscalia and Ricardo Tabut, who finished in third. Then came Amelie Ackett in fourth position in front of Jorn Helder in fifth and Phil Becker in sixth position in front of Brian Wilson and Keith Burke. Josh Allen then lined up in, well, didn't line up, he finished in ninth, I should say, in front of Elias Fornes in tenth. Daniels Petrus Bazins finished in eleventh, having gained four positions and Jakob Josef Havel fell from sixth to twelfth in his final finishing order. Tara Keneally and Daniel Bronetsky both finished where they started in 13th and 14th respectively, with Juan Diego Perez gaining six positions to finish in 15th. Then came Pri Trevino in 16th, Warren Russell, Anastasia Jurassis and Kirill Mitrievs in front of Mika Spence and Victor Hampel in the final position, which was 21st place for this, the second T4 junior heat, the super heat. And uh, next up will be the T4 Seniors for an 11-lap affair. Now, it is time for me to give my voice a rest and to give Chris a bit of time to get down to the pre-grid. Here is a quick ad break to see all of our sponsors who have helped to put this Nations Cup together.
When everything hurts, you need relief that's deeper than ice. You need Tidal, the cryotherapy spray that goes beyond cold to take control of the pain. This was just easy, and it felt so good. I was like, wow, that actually smells good. It's like penetrating into my skin, which I really love. Tidal's powerful plant-based formulation was developed to help world-class athletes recover faster. Tidal cryotherapy spray can contribute to total body recovery because it can alleviate muscle pain, joint pain, even back pain. A 360-degree continuous spray relieves pain in even the hardest to reach areas, dries fast, and lasts. When you get older, the joints start hurting. The spray is easy. You just bring it wherever you are, spray it, and it feels great within minutes. It changes my life in a way that I can still be active and yet not feel aches and pains when I'm sitting there for long hours. Tidal Cryotherapy, available at Walmart and these fine retailers. Visit Tidal.com for locations. Ciao Gian, preparati che ho portato una cosa per te. Provala e fammi sapere. Ok, mi infilo il casco, andiamo? Andiamo, subito. Welcome back to The Grid, everyone. And thank you to all those sponsors uh, there that we just showed you. We wouldn't really be able to do this event without them. So massive thanks to all of those. Uh, uh, here we can see the drivers. Bigger thanks goes to all of these guys here and all the other racers we've seen uh, out there. We can see them getting ready to go. It's about to get very loud. There you go. That means carts have to be fired up. Three minutes to go. Okay. Noah Rossa appears on the grid. Cameron Reed, American versus American on the front row. It's going to be interesting, but similar to all the other super heats, I want to try and speak to some new people. So let's try and find some new faces. Uh, we've been finishing P5 every race so far. Is it going to be P5 again? Yeah. The P1 this time. Yeah. Good yeah. yeah. <laughs> <Good> stuff. <laughs> Uh, good stuff. Um, let's uh, let's go and chat to uh, some drivers. Uh, I don't I don't recognise this driver. Oh, we've spoken. How, how, how's it going, Philip? All good. Uh, the second heat was much better. Uh, uh, got a P9. Uh, the third heat today. The first of today uh, started a P7, dropped down to P11, which was a bit of a disappointment, but it was a good comeback drive considering that we uh, got hit up at the first corner. Uh, and for this super heat now starting P11, we're, we're just hoping to make hopefully top 10 in this super heat so we can have the best uh, chance for the final. Good stuff. Good luck. Good luck. Thank you for that. Uh, uh, I'm going to see if I can. Hello. Uh, how are we doing so far this weekend? Yeah, it hasn't been easy. I qualified P46 and I've been making bad places in the heat. So I'm now 17th overall. So almost 30 positions gained. So hopefully a bit more now for the final. A lot of overtaking then, yeah? Yeah, it's been fun. We're going to get some more. Hopefully. <laughs> good luck. <laughs> good luck. Uh, good stuff, good stuff, good stuff. Uh, let's uh, find some new faces. I don't think I've spoke to this driver here. Hello there. Uh, how are we getting on so far? Uh, so far, yeah. Um, the speed's been great. Just uh, a little bit of bad luck. I hope I can just turn it around here because uh, we came here to fight for the World Championship and that's what we're going to do. In this event, I mean, it all just comes down to the final, doesn't it? Yeah, that's true. So let's just get through here cleanly and let's hope we can get enough points to uh, score a good starting position for the final. Best of luck with that. Best of luck. Uh, good stuff. Uh, 40 seconds. 40 seconds. Uh, I'm going to see who kind of invites me over. Uh, let's speak to another Spaniard because uh, last time I spoke to one, they ended up gaining a lot of places. Uh, how, how, are we, how are we enjoying the home event? Oh, I got on the front Good, 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 good weekend so far? Yeah, not really. Yeah, yeah. Make some places? Yeah. Good stuff, good stuff. Best of luck. I think we'll, uh, we'll end it there and uh, go.
Got some more drivers at the back. We can see everyone ready to go. Very relaxed, but uh, drivers all get around. I'm loving the relaxed, relaxed pose. Very, very good, very good. We'll go up to the commentary now, where I can tell you Simon is definitely not relaxed. Up to you. Well, you would be correct, Chris. I am sweating buckets because we still don't have any air conditioning or a working fan up in the commentary box. So it is getting quite hot. It is a matter of standing outside during the, uh, the ad breaks to try and cool down. Let's take you through the grid in any case. It will be Noah Rossa who starts on pole with Cameron Reed starting alongside in second. Andrea Tobias starts in third in front of Danny Christian in fourth and Jack Dillon in fifth. Then comes Christopher Sauna, Nicholas Stanev and Jason Bradbury in front of Frederico Peters, Yuri Bechtold and Philip Ganna from Nigeria. Then comes John Nuttall, Marco Aurelio, James Andrus the third, Bram Osavada, Matt Villerman and Leo Geisler. Then we have Santiago Garza Brizeno, Riley Jones Rodway, Elisabetta Joanna Sulz and Malk West in front of Jason Herrera Silva, Fabian Feliciano Rebello and Handong Huang in front of Francis Francisco Gambin and Emilio Vasquez. Then comes Miguel Paraguete in front of our final starter, Aaron Doyle from the Republic of Ireland. As, oh, there's a, a rather cool looking small aircraft just overflying the circuit. That is very interesting indeed. I wonder if Josh East owns that. That could be uh, his next uh, big boy toy now that he's got his drone. He set his sights further. Although, uh, personally, I would have gone for a helicopter. Anyways, let's look back to the racing action. All of the drivers getting ready as they round turn number nine. Getting ready to start this race. The T4 Senior Superheat 1, who will have another Superheat with the seniors after this. And then the T4 165 Heat. For those of you watching along on the live stream, we do hope you are enjoying. Leave a like if you are. And make sure to follow us on all of our social medias as we get ready to go racing. And we're away now, and it looks to be a pretty good start from the front row. Cameron Reed doing well. Not sure she'll be able to make headway into turn one. It is Noah Rossa who leads down into turn one. Oh, contact there between Cameron Reed and Andrea Dabaya. That's going to knock Cameron Reed down the order slightly. Let's see where she ends up in all of this. It is going to be Noah Rossa who leads, and then comes. That comes, oh, the, oh no, there is absolute chaos there for a few moments. Yuri Bechtold is involved there. I'm not sure who else. It looks to be the 315 machine. That is uh, Santiago Garza Brizeno also involved there, cutting across the chicane as uh, everyone settles down into a race at long last. In fairness, we haven't seen nearly the same number of collisions at turn three as we had last year, where it was almost complete carnage every single lap of every single race so I mean we have to take what we're given in that regard but it is Noah Rossa who leads the way and uh, has maintained his lead unfortunately for Cameron Reed she has a lot of work to do to try and catch up to her compatriot as they make their way down now through the final chicane for the first time of this 11 lap affair two more laps than the minis and it is going to be Noah Rossa who crosses the line first Let's take a look at his Jack Dillon, who has managed to get up into second position as there's a move there. That's the three for seven. That looks to be um, not in touch. That that's Andrea. De that's no, that's Nicholas Stanev. That's Nicholas Stanev getting past Andrea Dabaya for third place. A fantastic maneuver by the Bulgarian. He has had an absolute corker of a start. He's made up three positions on the first lap and has now managed to get himself up into third. So it is Noah Rossa from Jack Dillon, the Irishman. Then comes the only Bulgarian in the competition of Nicholas Stanev. Then Andrea Dabaya. Then Frederico Peters. And then Cameron Reed all the way down in sixth. Great start from Noah Rossa on the front row. Leads us round on this opening lap. Jack Dillon uh, looking to move through the order. Currently would be starting on the second row. We've talked a lot about those guys towards the front, but uh, remember for some, this will be their last race of the Nations Cup. Only the final 36 go through to the final. So similar to the juniors, the seniors, we will wave goodbye to several drivers at the end of the super heat. So a lot at stake. Expect fierce racing over the next two super heats in the seniors, just like we saw in the juniors. 
there is absolutely nothing to lose and just as we say that the 3-2-0 in the wall what a shame uh, for the driver there going off into the barriers uh, that's a, a real shame on the approach down to uh, turn one the number 320 car uh, of Doyle uh, who was running P16 well hopefully uh, his points position was okay because uh, that uh, could threatened to drop him out of the final if uh, he was at risk but uh, uh, that's how quickly things can change change in this event yellow flag is out for that Noah Rossa looks over his shoulder Jack Dillon looking out of the toe to maybe uh, have a, a look down the inside Stanner with uh, one of his best performances uh, of the weekend so far in the start of this race is in P3 and I think that's about to become P2 as we head down the start finish straight Jack Dillon giving instructions to Stanner to go with him there and Stanev has done just that Noah Rossa now drops to third Dubaya is in fourth place and then there's a gap back to Peters in fifth and Stanev takes the lead there in his distinctive orange and white overalls the first ever Bulgarian to lead the T4 Nations Cup and what a style to do it in nipping up the inside cheekily into the turn three chicane Nicholas Stanev leads and he's saying come on let's work together he's trying to urge Jack Dillon into a some kind of a, a partial truce but Jack Dillon isn't listening and he goes back up the inside it is Jules all the way this is only the second lap of the race and there's already a fantastic amount of action Noah Rossa is also up there and oh no no forgive me it is Noah Rossa who has taken the lead my mistake I do apologize for that ladies and gentlemen it is Andrea Dubaya who is going side by side through turn nine with Nicholas Stanev and as they come through the final corner, that is the 387. That looks to be, that is Andrea Dabaya who has cut across the chicane there. And uh, Andrea Dabaya in some serious battles now, it seems. Yeah, Jack Dillon's had a disappointing lap there. We'll wait for the uh, timing to update, but he's dropped back to P6. Uh, so apologies, the timing on your screen. Just uh, having a, a little bit of a, a pause, but uh, we, st we still have it uh, on the timing screen in front of me. And uh, I can tell you, Jack Dillon is down into P6. Noah Rossa is leading uh, ahead of Nicholas Stanev. Frederico Peters is in P3. Cameron Reed is P4. Then it's Danny Krischer, Jack Dillon, uh, Christoph uh, Christopher's Kane, uh, Jason Bradbury is then in P8. Andre Dubai is P9. Bram Osiward is next in P10. Those are your top 10. Ignore the left-hand side of your screen for the time being as they make their way down through turn nine and in towards turn number 10. Noah Rossa stamps on the brakes. This is now lap number five of 11. We are about to go on to lap six. And you can see there, pointing forward, Nicholas Stanev just trying to tell Noah Rossa that he wants to work with him here and he's happy to just work alongside him as they come out of turn two make their way down towards turn number three Stanev this definitely one of the best races he's had so far uh, of his Nations Cup campaign uh, and as such he wants to just get away from the rest of the pack it's a chance to score points this this isn't the final so no podiums trophies at stake here just yet this is a chance to get yourself into the final, first of all, and then up the grid as well. As they now come down towards turn seven, looks like timing has returned to us. And Noah Rossa will lead us out of turn eight with Stanev tucked in behind. And uh, Stanev now has to be wary of the fact that Frederico Peters is right behind him with Cameron Reed, who's been uh, flying the flag for America very strongly this weekend. She's going well in fourth place along with Krisha and Jack Dillon, all six of them separated by just over one second. And Frederico Peters having a good start to his race, having started in position number nine, having made his way up to third place. You have to say, that's very Change good. Oh, fit. look at this now. Chris, you saw more of that than yeah, I did. Jack Dillon down the inside of Danny Krisha through turn two and gets P5. It's created a bit of a gap to the top four, but Jack Dillon is into fifth place and that is the start. And he, well, he wasn't there for very long. There goes Danny Krischer back down the inside. So uh, these two need to decide who's going to do the leading and who's going to be the one pushing the other along. At the moment, they're struggling to do that. Uh, and as such, they find themselves in fifth and sixth place. As I fear for Stanev here that he might be under a little bit of pressure from Frederico 
Nico Peters trying to pull back as much time as he can out of turn eight. Peters jumping in the seat there. We spoke to him uh, on the grid as well. He's talked about how he's been moving up the order all weekend. Now he's staring at a possible race win as we hit the brakes in towards the final chicane sign. And I don't think that Noah Rosser will have a chance to repay the favour that uh, was extended to him last time by Cameron Reid. As uh, they were bump drafting each other, Cameron Reid still down in fourth position, trying to fight her way back up, but it does look to be very challenging. Such fast drivers with Rosser, Stanev and Peters, as we say, showing well in uh, this race with Stanev up five positions, Federico Peters up six as Jason Bradbury sets the fastest lap of 105.7. Quite a competitive time, you have to say, at this stage of the day where the heat is arguably the most intense. The uh, track conditions reacting with the tyres as there's a move for second place. Up the inside goes Frederico Peters on Nicholas Stanev and takes the position. Frederico Peters has no reply for the moment. He's saying, come on, work with me. But I don't think Nicholas Stanev is going to be particularly in the mood to oblige in that request as we've got the 319 machine of Cameron Reed also having a look at the back of Stanev. Not able to make any attempt at a pass but that's not going to stop Stanev who makes the move on Frederico Peters and the request to work together was swiftly denied and Frederico Peters is very annoyed about that he's shaking his hand saying what are you doing we need to catch Rosser in front oh and off off who is that that's the 353 that is Danny Krischer the German who was going so well spinning out at turn one I'm not sure was there contact there with anyone else but Danny Krischer off at turn one and that is hugely disappointing for the German. Yeah, contact into turn one and Danny Krischer, sadly the biggest victim of that, has found himself uh, going wide uh, at turn one, spinning round uh, into the grass. Not didn't quite catch who was the other driver. I think the other driver might have been Cameron Reed uh, was the other one involved because she came through the first sector a couple of seconds slower than usual. So it looks like, uh, judging by what we saw and by what the times tell me, I think Cameron Reed was the other driver uh, who was involved in that incident. She's still going in seventh. Krisha rejoins, albeit down in 18th place. And uh, that's going to affect Krisha's chances of starting on the front row here. And that's going to open up the door. Danny Krisha now drops down to P5. Let's see, make that he was third on the grid for the final. Let's see when he comes across the nine, he, line. He's now down to P6 on the grid uh, for the final. So uh, Danny Christian, in fact, make that P7. So he's dropped all the way down to uh, uh, seventh place uh, in uh, this one. Uh, oh, hello. We've got some uh, guests possibly coming up to join us for uh, either this race or the next race. We'll talk you to uh, the end. But uh, uh, Noah Rossa is currently the man who's going to start on pole. We still have another super heat to come with Cameron Reed, Andre Debayer, uh, Jack Dillon, then Khan Stanev, Krisha, and Peters. That would be your top eight. Krisha losing four places in total with that incident in his final grid spot. That could get worse after the next heat as well as a uh, head now down in towards the uh, final chicane. Out of the chicane they come and on to the final lap and it's Noah Rossa leading and good communication now between Stanev and Peters but that all goes out the window as we go on to this final lap of the race and the battle intensifies for P2. It certainly does, and with a five-tenth gap to Noah Rossa, it uh, does look to be signed, sealed, delivered for the young American, but this battle for second place is still very much on between Frederico Peters and Nicholas Stanev, who are still battling hammer and tong through the second sector of the final lap, still trying to chase down Noah Rossa, but to no avail, it seems. It seems like Noah Rossa, now with a seven-tenth gap, has got this signed, sealed, and delivered to his home address in the United States. And it is Frederico Peters who leads, but only just by less than a well, from, I don't actually have the live timing, but a fractional amount. Oh, dearie me, there's the 393. I'm not entirely sure who that is, unfortunately. It's Marco, Marco Aurelio is uh, out, unfortunately, as Noah Rossa rounds the final corner and comes across the line to take the T4 Senior Super Heat victory in front of, that is, Frederico Peters in second place, Nicholas Stanev in third, and a thumbs-up exchanged between the two of them. 
in recognition of the fair fight that they engaged in almost for the entire race. I've, I've got to say, uh, fair play to Federico Peters. He did tell us on the grid he's going to make some places here. He did, yes. He said he's going to go for P1. He, he came very close to it, didn't he? The other driver who said they were going to be moving forward was Bram Ossiwad. And he gained 11 places here in that one. So well done to him. Malk West gaining nine places uh, to come up to 12th place. So that was a good drive from him. And we spoke to Emilio Vasquez as well, who uh, uh, did uh, we look very ambitious on the grid and came up six places here in that one. So uh, great driving uh, all around. Uh, a great race. A shame for the likes of Aaron Doyle, Marco Aurelio, uh, Danny Krischer losing uh, some places on the grid. Drops to P6. Uh, but we still have another super heat to come before we know who are the 36 who've made it through and what order they're going to start in. Here's the order they finished super heat one in. So it was Noah Rossa who took the flag, as we say, in front of Federico Peters and Nicholas Stanev. Then came Bram Osterwada, the leading Dutchman, in front of Jason Bradbury and Cameron Reed. Then came Jack Dillon and John Nuttall in front of Christopher Zauner and James Andrus III, rounding out the top ten. Then came Andre de Bayer in P11, having dropped down eight positions from where he started, very unfortunately for him. Malk West gained nine positions in 12th, and then Leo Geisler finished in 13th place in front of Jason Herrera Silva and Philip Ganner in 16th. Then came Danny Krischer and Jordi Bechtold, followed by Riley Jones Rodway, Emilio Vasquez, Handong Huang, and Fabian Feliciano Rebello. In front of Santiago Garza Briseño, Francisco Gambin, Miguel Paraguede, and Elisabetta Joanna Sulz. And then Marco Aurelio and Aaron Doyle failed to finish the T4 Senior Super Heat 1, unfortunately. Now, obviously, the uh, T4 Senior Super Heat has concluded, the first one at least, and the nature of the Super Heats is that some drivers, their weekend will end here and they will not be able to take place, take part in the final. And uh, it is a very unfortunate end to the weekend for any driver but we do have to make the reminder that can you please remember to pick up your license and bring back your rented transponders to the RGMMC at the end of your day of racing, be it now or be it after the final, you do have to bring back your rented transponder and the brackets and also pick up your licenses. I think there was something like 11 drivers last year who forgot to pick up their licenses, left the track, went to the airport, got on their flight and uh, left their licenses here at the track and they had to be posted back out to them, which is uh, inconvenient and can be quite expensive depending where you are from in the world. So please, please, please do remember to bring back your rented transponders and brackets and to pick up your licenses at the end of your day's racing. Now, I'm delighted to say that I'm being joined in the commentary box by Anastasia Jurassis. Now, uh, you've had a strong season down in South Africa in the T4 series, finishing third overall, the first time that we've seen the top three positions in the championship, in any T4 championship, being occupied by three girls. It's great to see you here for this weekend. How have you been finding the racing out there? So I'll start by saying I love this track. Like, okay, the South African tracks are really cool. I love Swart Corps. I love my home track, FK. But I came here and it's a whole different story for me. It's been really enjoyable to race here and race with people on such a high level and such a prestige level. And I've really enjoyed it. I've got into a new level of aggression because down in South Africa, we don't have any drivers, so we don't get to learn what aggression is. And coming here, there's like... 30 people in a session and it's like wow okay that's a lot of drivers and you've also been doing a lot of work with fabian lance who's also from south africa nearly scored a podium here last year you've been doing a lot of work with her she's here this weekend she's our woman's ambassador how important has her experience here last year been in getting yourself and also the other girls the other dozen or so girls up to speed for this track so having gone on a girl camp with Fabian that she hosted earlier this year and having to spend time with her and get to know her, she's taught us so much. She's given us tips and tricks, even today, yesterday and practice. She's just been there for us and she always motivates us. She does photo shoots with us time to time. It's been so much fun. And just having her there as a public figure to all girls and not just girls, races in general has been so much fun. She's good to learn from. She does so well. And you know what? She deserved that podium last year. 
Yes, it was uh, such a shame to see her engine just yeah. failing on the last lap. It was really was, it was very sad indeed, yes. And uh, luckily, we're uh, seeing some very fast girls this year. Cameron Reed, most notably, for the USA. Uh, what, do you, what, what do you make of her performance? Because we're seeing more and more and more girls getting involved in the T4s, and now we're seeing someone like Cameron who has a real chance of taking the overall victory in the final. What do you make of her pace so far? So I didn't watch many of those heats, but the ones that I did watch, I noticed that there was this really quick driver. And at first, I didn't know it was a girl. So I was like, Mom, look at her. She's so quick. And I was like, wow, OK. And then she took her helmet off. And I'm like, there's no ways that is a girl. And she's really inspiring. I mean, I don't think our age gap is very big. So I was like, I don't want to be like her. Like, how can you be so quick? So. She's definitely someone I'll look up to now on the track, and I'd love to get to know her. Fantastic stuff, Anastasia. You can stay up here if you like, and uh, you can do a bit of commentating if you uh, if you so please. We do have the T4 Senior Superheat number two coming up now, and it will be Colin Warren who leads the field down towards turn one in front of Tim Van Ellersveik and Tyler McIntyre. Another American, very fast, who we were speaking to earlier, in front of Wesley Bowden, who I had the pleasure of chatting with yesterday evening. Then comes Owen Roberts and Santiago Hermida in front of Jose Gomez and James Tracy. Then comes Jose Itobide and Rudy Schussler in front of Ricardo Gasparini and Calvin Pratt. Colin Munley then lines up in front of David Salmans and Omar Perez. Then comes Hannah Fridberg, another lady racer from South Africa, in, in front of Václav Strakati and Mauro Camacho Balboa. Alexander Fleming then lines up in front of Sebastian Alvarado and Yanis Judovs. Then comes Roisin Sweeney, former Motorsport Ireland T4 champion, in front of Chan Anta and Jarrett Forheis. Then comes Andres Klinkan and Joseph Garbo in front of Jose Casada and Ellen Donnelly. Well, I seem to be joined by uh, many a driver in the commentary box now, and uh, I'm delighted to see so many drivers coming up. And uh, the start yeah. of the race approaches. Yeah, we'll, we'll come back to that. We'll, we'll, we'll go through the start first. Yes. We've got Warren Russell with, yes. with us uh, to have a little chat through. But uh, T4 Senior, Super Heat 2. We've got uh, driver analysis on the way and opinion uh, as well uh, from Irish driver Warren Russell. Right, well, let's go. We've got some Irish drivers in this. So I'm sure he'll be rooting for them. We are off for the final Super Heat in T4 Senior. Colin Warren leads us down towards the first corner. Tim Van Ellerswick uh, getting hang out to drive from Tyler McIntyre, who was up with us in the box a little bit earlier as well as a uh, head now through turn number three. A lot of curb there from Tim Van Ellerswick, and uh, that's going to be a place gained and possibly the race lead for Tyler McIntyre, who's had a really good start to this race. He now uh, leads the way in this one, Tim Van Ellerswick going up into uh, second place. Uh, Warren, I'm going to uh, bring you in for this as our, our two leaders coming down towards uh, turn number one. And uh, uh, very quickly, they seem to have a bit of a gap here over the rest of the field. So a chance to break away, do you think? Uh, yeah. If they just work together, don't battle and just keep working until they gain maybe a three-second gap, they'll, they'll be able to pull away and just keep for a second. What's it like when you get onto the back straight, you're in a good position, you look behind, you see there's a big gap. Must be, must feel good. Yeah, it does. <laughs> it, feels, it feels very good. Yeah, absolutely. Come across the line once more. The power of the toe down there as well seems very high, doesn't it? Talk us yeah. through, talk us through it. Um, it's, it's very high because you can gain, like you could be at the corner and they could be like maybe a second ahead and you could be then just two tenths behind them at the end of the street. So it's really good with the toll. Oh, great weekend. So are you having a good weekend yourself so far? Yeah. Enjoying the experience? Yeah, it was been a very good experience. Been, been good. What do you think of the Valencia circuit? Lucas Fun, Guerrero. very yeah. fast. Yeah? Uh, which, which parts have been the most challenging to, to pick up, would you say, this circuit? Uh, probably the middle. Middle bit. Middle bit yeah. Yeah, when you look at the track map, that looks a little bit messy, doesn't it? When you when you have a look at it. All uh, right, let's go back to our leaders. They're coming out of uh, turn number eight now, down to nine, and it's separated very quickly. As you were saying there, Warren, they've just worked together here. Now they have a gap of six tenths of a second. How far away do you think they need to be before they can relax in this one? Do you need to be over a second? You were saying three seconds there, maybe. Yeah. Do you think the work's not done yet for those two? Uh, no, because the, the third is still just in the slipstream, I'd say. So they just keep pulling, keep 
keep uh, slipstream and don't battle, and they'll they'll be able to just pull way ahead. So it's and we've got some Irish drivers in this one as well. How are we doing so far? In the lower order of the top ten, and uh, maybe just outside as well. So uh, hopefully trying to uh, work their way through. Team Ireland seems to be going along pretty strong this weekend. Yeah, we he two yesterday, both mini drivers got P1, so that was good for us. And then Junior is doing good as well. He has a few in the top ten. So, And then same with Senior. Top yep. tens, so it's looking good. It's going very well, isn't it? Uh, different view from up here, of course. There they come in towards uh, turn eight and now down towards the uh, final chicane, and that is where it can be all won or lost. We've been asking all the drivers about this. We have to ask yourself about this before we let you go. What is that final chicane like uh, on the last lap of a race? Just see it, it, uh, It's hard to tell because... You d you can't really judge if they're going to make the move until the red line, and then they then they just move. So you have to either defend or just trust that they're too far behind. So <laughs> I, I lost it in the last corner there. Well, it's been great to have you up here. Are you going to be back next year? Yeah. I know we might not see you in the final, but it's been oh, fantastic. It's and you're fine. welcome to come and join us up here for a while. Thanks very much. We'll let Thank you go, you. Warren Russell, and we're going to switch in a, another driver, Noah Rossa, who we were just. Uh, watching as well uh, and Simon I guess uh, we'll uh, have uh, no Noah Rossa uh, now in this one great to have you up here Noah um, uh, how have you I know you've been keen to get up how have you been finding it so far uh, it's been great I've managed to find a lot of success uh, as well as Team USA um, just gonna keep it rolling managed to uh, win the super heat so going to try to carry that momentum to the final. We can see you're currently starting on pole position. Uh, that doesn't look to be under threat. So now you get to watch who's going to join you. Uh, feel free to step, step closer. Step closer. Uh, you get to see who's going to join you on the front row. You can see the live point standings uh, here. So we've got currently Colin Warren is going to be joining you on the front row. Tim Van Ellersvig there in second will be right behind you. McIntyre, who's leading this race, would be alongside on row two. And Cameron Reed would be row three. So a lot of American drivers up there at the top. Yeah, I think in qualifying it was um, three of the four drivers in the top four were um, a part of Team USA, so that's that's good to see. Well, we can see now the uh, American of Tyler McIntyre coming on to turn eight. So I'm going to ask you if you can do us something. We, have, we haven't really been able to do it. We've never really had a driver talk us around a lap. Would you be comfortable in telling us a little bit about how the corners yeah, are course. to take? Right, here we come then. Down towards... Let's hope they all don't crash and spin yeah, off yeah. at this point. Yeah. Right, in towards the chicane. Noah Rossa, provisional pole sitter. Over to you. Tell us what it's like doing a lap in these carts around Valencia. Okay, so long front straightaway. Um... Going into turn one, you want to roll a lot of speed in, manage to uh, hook the turn one curb, uh, flat out little turn two. You want to break a bit early in the first chicane, get on the throttle early, get a good exit. Going to the right-handers, you want to drive in super hard in this corner without gra uh, grading the tires. Uh, flat out left-hander to the back straightaway. Okay, this is where I've this is, and this managed is, to block a lot. And this is where you just yes. take a breather, I imagine, Going as well. into uh, the first hairpin, I break where I feel like I'm about to fly off the track. <laughs> Going into the right-hander, <laughs> flat-out right-handers, stay as close to the curb as possible without hitting it. Onto the long, long back straightaway. No. Notorious for being driven around on the straightaway. No, it's head down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a lot of headwind up there. Going right. to the last chicane break it where the, the exit curve starts, kind of hop on that curb a bit to get the car rotated, and that's a that's a lap. And that, that was fantastic. Yeah. So it was, that was brilliant, actually. Uh, fantastic can, stuff. One of us can go. Yeah, so, you uh, take my uh, microphone, <laughs> I'm off. Is it gonna I'll be? drive your car, you take my mic. <laughs> well, I don't know, but <laughs> would you be comfortable starting on pole position? <laughs> well, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be there for long. I wouldn't be there for long. Uh, well, I'll tell you what, uh, we, it's, it's great stuff here. Two groups of two. What do we reckon? I know you've got your the countrymen uh, there leading the way, but do we reckon this chasing pack can catch? It's, it's pretty close. That top three of Colin Warren and Tim and McIntyre, it's super close. Everyone's relatively the same speed. I'm hoping the order stays like this so I start pole, but no matter the order, I'm happy to race in the final. Glad 
I didn't really get into any crashes this week, so just here for the ride, here for the fun. And Jose Gomez, I've got to say, he's gained a lot of places. He, he, yeah. he's, he's come up with the order very well, hasn't he? I know yeah. he's not quite part of Team USA, but uh, yeah, uh, impressive so stuff, fast. isn't he? He's so fast. He's just, when he's behind you, he's just so consistent. He's always on your bumper. He's a super, he's one of the, one of the smartest drivers that I was with in practice on Friday. And tell us about Tyler McIntyre a bit and uh, Colin Warren as well, what they're like. Tyler, I, I, I grew up with Tyler at the racetrack. Um, and Junior, man, he was he was so fast. He was like the kid to beat everywhere. He moved up. He moved up to senior. He's he's a upfront national national race contender in X30 senior. He's super fast in the Tillotson. He's always a contender in races like these in the T4 Nations Cup. And yeah, it's it's always fun to race with him because we we give each other room, but we always we play pretty dirty sometimes. And Colin, Colin, he's. He's like a robot. He's so fast in the four-stroke engines and chassis. He's just, he's so fast. He makes no mistakes. I'm lucky the first heat I won, he made one mistake that whole race, and I managed to capitalize on it. But if you go through a race and he makes no mistakes, there's hardly a chance that you'll ever catch him. Good stuff. Great insight, honestly. I, I hope you can stay with us to the end. Simon, I'll hand back to you quick. We've got a great battle going on here, uh, which is slowly developing, isn't it? Feel free to, to step in here, Noah. Uh, I'll let you have my microphone for a bit as well. And Simon, uh, you can uh, help call us to the end with Noah. Yes, and it is, as we say, Tyler McIntyre, who we were very fortunate to have up in the box earlier on who is leading the way, but under a lot of pressure from Tim Van Ellisweek behind, less than a tenth and a half between them as they make their way down through sector two and towards turn six, this fast flowing left-hander where they will stomp on the brakes at turn number seven and uh, have potentially the opportunity to overtake. Obviously not, not uh, availed of by Tim Van Ellisweek on this occasion. We can almost guarantee that in two laps time, it will be a different story when Tim Van Ellersweek decides, oh, actually, I do want to finish first and will invariably try his best to surpass the young American of Tyler McIntyre, the T4 Nations Cup veteran. He knows what he's doing around here in Valencia. He knows how to drive the T4 and he knows how to drive it very quick as they come across the line and down into turn one. Fantastic race so far by Tyler McIntyre. As we say, very, very consistent. And more, I'm just wondering about the the team mentality within Team USA because we have seen, particularly yesterday, Cameron Reed and uh, Colin Warren bump drafting each other and playing the team game to try and benefit Team USA. Is there a, a strong um, a strong camaraderie in Team USA this year? Do you think? I'd say for most drivers, yes. I I think we all want to be as upfront as possible and any not, not really any specific order but i just want to say jose gomez running down tim and mcintyre absolutely flying those are two drivers that it's pretty hard to catch and he's managing to run them down fairly well i just i think that's amazing because i i don't think i could do that <laughs> and and homemaker home oh gee home home jose Oh, no. Homer's a character yeah, on no, the TV. Um, honestly, um, honestly, mate, he's take not the microphone. Here. He's not here. All right, Jose Gomez tucks right in with final lap. So this is it, Noah. Now it all comes down to this. Any one of these three could win. If you're Jose Gomez, I guess you're going to be sending it. But what are you thinking now if you're Tyler McIntyre? Uh, first place blocking, it's, it's important to white line it when you're blocking because if you leave a car length, there's a chance that anybody will capitalize on that, so he needs to block the best he can for him to win this super heat. Oh, there goes Jose Gomez for the pass. Great overtake. Oh my goodness, I did not expect that at all. Well, he's, he's, he's trying to get by, but hasn't quite been able to get through, is he? He's yeah. going to try again into turn seven. Is wow. he going to come up? Oh my, three wide, oh my goodness. <laughs> Great stuff from Jose <laughs> Gomez. Is he going to get by on the exit? Oh, it's oh, going to be close. Seems so a little close. bit frustrated. Tyler McIntyre, he got it. He He's got gonna it. do it. He you played that really smart. He played his cards right. You want to call your friend across the line? Yeah, you have to. Here okay. he comes up Tyler to the line. Tyler McIntyre, perfect drive. Congrats to him. Super heat winner. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> Good stuff. Good stuff. Tyler McIntyre takes the win uh, in Super wow. Heat number two. That was fantastic, Noah. That Thank was. you so it was. much. It was very good. In Thank fairness you, well and look, and, and you brought the luck. You Team USA won two. Are, are we going to be the team?
Oh, one, two. Are we gonna? Are we Colin gonna be Warren. one two for Tyler ah, McIntyre, well, Colin Warren? Colin Warren P two. Are Colin we gonna Warren be a? P2. Are we gonna be a team's champions? Constructors champions. Yeah. Oh, we'll call that, it that. That'd be cool. Yeah, I like that. He drove fantastic though, didn't he, Tyler? <laughs> yes, he did. He's Super on. clean. Yeah. He, look at him <laughs> for the picture. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow, I can tell you. Did you happy. do that as well? When you I did. That? I know. Do, I actually stuck up top? two fingers, like the peace sign. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I did. So do you always say when you're coming onto the start finish straight? Is, if you're if you're miles ahead, with let's talk ten seconds, so you're like, what's my celebration gonna be? I probably stand up in the go kart. Probably <laughs> stand up on it. <laughs> <laughs> so have you thought of that before? You're like, oh, I have. Yeah. I have. Do yes, we have one plan for later? Don't fall out of it. <laughs> <laughs> I think we'll end it there. <laughs> uh, you, fantastic, no. Thank, thank you, so you so much. much. Thank you so much for coming out. Feel free to join us anytime. Okay, thank uh, you. I'll, I'll head out with you now, but uh, Simon, we'll leave you to go through the order. But no, Russell, thanks so much. And good luck later. Pole position, and you're going to have Colin Warren alongside you on the front row. How does that feel? Uh, a bit nervous. Everybody's super fast in the top four. Uh, just got to. Keep it close, make sure everyone's clean, working together, pull away in the end. I like to battle the last two laps, have a gap with anybody really. Uh, just praying for the best for everybody. Anyone at home you want to give a shout out to? Oh, Anyone I want to give a shout out to my mom, uh, my stepdad Logan, my mechanic Chris, M Chris McCrone, uh, of course Team USA, my grandparents, all my friends watching at home. Uh, I've, I've been gone for a while, I miss it back home, but I love it here. Uh, you're doing them proud, mate. You're doing them proud. Thank well you. done. Uh, Simon, we'll leave to you to go to the result and, uh, and we'll step out. There's a fantastic result there for Tyler McIntyre and more widely Team USA. McIntyre taking the spoils in front of Colin Warren in second place, making it a US 1-2 in front of Tim Van Ellersweg and Jose Gomez in position number four. Owen Roberts finished in P5 in front of Wesley Bowden and Santiago Hermida in front of Rudy Schussler and James Tracy in position number nine. Jose Etebide rounded out the top ten in front of Calvin Pratt, Omar Perez, Ricardo Gasparini, Mauro Camacho Balboa and Davis Zalmans from Latvia. Then came Jose Casada from Guatemala and Jarrett Vorhais and then in front of Václav Strakati, Yanis Chudovs, Colin Munley and Hannah Fridberg with Chan Anta finishing in 22nd place in front of Ellen Donnelly, Alexander Fleming and Sebastian Alvarado with Joseph Garbo rounding out the top 26 and then our non-finishers unfortunately or at least I believe that uh, yes our non-finishers unfortunately were Roisin Sweeney with a technical issue and Andres Klinskans who uh, unfortunately didn't make it to the flag either. Terribly unfortunate day for uh, Roisin Sweeney having had uh, having had some technical issues on Friday as well, but uh, not managing to make it to the flag this time. Having had a technical flag early on in the race and having to re return to the pit lane. But we will now get ready for our T4 Senior 165 fi uh, not final, gee whiz, no, the final is later. The final is later, so do stay tuned for that. The T4 Senior 165 Super Heat, and that will be our last race before lunch. And after lunch, we will get geared up for the finals, which are set to be absolutely fantastic. So make sure you're watching, be it here at the track or on the live stream. And a big shout out, as Noah said, to all of the friends and family of all of the drivers who are watching along at home. Here is the timetable, as ever. Times are in GMT plus two, Spanish local time. T4 Senior 165 Superheat is up next. And then the T4 Mini Final at half past three local time. That will be the start of our finals. Chris is down in the pre-grid area. Chris, what can you tell us about this last superheat? Welcome back to the grid. It's very loud down here. Uh, we do not have a lot of time at all. So I'm just gonna walk down and see who we can speak to. We're going to go towards the back mainly uh, because I'm drawn to an umbrella. I'm drawn to an umbrella. Uh, hello there. How are you doing? Uh, what's your name? Peter McBride. Are you having a good good time? Loving it. The weather. You know, so, we still get weather like this. It's amazing. Brilliant. Loving it. And the racing? The racing's coming good. Are we going to find later all the way from 30 back up to 18, so I'm doing good. Are we going to be in the final? I'm going to try. Good luck. Not the worst two yet. 
good, good luck. Good luck. Uh, let's try and get one more. We'll go down the back for this one. I'm going to speak to someone on the back row. Uh, let's go to this driver here. Hello. Uh, very, very quickly. Um, could we? Uh, how, how's it been so far? How's the experience of the event been for you? Yeah, it's fun. Uh, it's fun event and uh, enjoyed a lot. So let's keep it going on. Yeah, are we going to move forward? Good game to play. I will try. It. Let's see. Full send. Huh? Full send into turn one. Just going to gain some places on the first lap. Yeah, let's see. Good luck. Good luck. Right, that'll do us. That'll do us. They're all going to send out now. I'll go back to you in commentary. Thank you very much for that, Chris. Great to hear from even more of our T4 Senior 165 drivers before their 11 lap sprint around this Cartodromo Internacional Lucas Guerrero, where they will navigate 11 times this 1,495 meter track. It will be Andreas Matisse who leads them towards the lights next to Chris Alcock in second place. Then comes Casey Cook in third in front of Anwar Beryl Smith and Julian Granvo. Alessandro Marchini starts beside him in front of Jan Zastrau and Yanni Fokin in front of Kyle Lawrence and Phil Pignataro. Peter Janssen then lines up in front of Asbjorn Rolfing and Anthony Holland. Christoph Wenske starts in front of Esteban Yanguas and Zachary Valvin in front of Hill Angiano and Peter McBride. Then comes Bass Peters and Haddis Gladkins in front of Stefan Osman and Daniel Bowden. Then comes Gert Lapskelns in front of his countryman Rudolf Toms Bazins. Then comes Dirk Proknov, Aaron Doyle, Fernando Wheeler Sr., Adan Enrique Ibarra Castro and Manuel Gamez. Then comes Walter Kessler and as I load up the next page, Gian Maria Gabbiani starts ahead of Juan Pablo Glover and Milan Milenkovic with Seamus Lawler rounding out the grid. So it is set to be a fantastic 11 laps to take us to the lunch break. The T4 Senior 165 always producing action and uh, many a time we have seen a multi-cart train. We're talking six, seven, eight, nine, ten, sometimes even 12 carts in a train all headed up by the leader. And so it is sure to be a fantastic 11 lap heat that we are in for today. Now it is longer than the heats we have seen previous for the T4 Senior 165s. And as they round the final corner, they will get into the tram lines and we will get ready to rock and roll with the T4 Senior 165 and T4 Masters. Up to the lights they come. And we're away now, and it looks to be a good start by Andreas Matisse. And a relatively poor start, unfortunately, for uh, Chris Alcock in second. He's going to fall down the order. He's been shuffled out by KC Cook up the inside, and he looks to have fallen down to about fourth. He's lost out to Anwar Beryl Smith as well, as they all make it through turn one reasonably successfully. Down into the chicane. No drama as of yet, which is good to see for the T4 Senior 165s. Andreas Matisse still leading the way, though, in front of Casey Cook. And then comes then comes Julian Granvo. Julian Granvo recovering well in this initial first sector. And then behind Julian Granvo, let's take a look. That looks to be the uh, 460. I can't tell quite who that is, but it is Andreas Matisse from KC Cook from Julian Granvo is your top three for now. Then comes, I believe that might be Chris Alcock. As there's, oh, there's an issue there, and I'm not entirely sure. Is that Julian Granvo? Is that Granvo? There's the 466. That's uh, Rolfing, and I think the other was 422 as well. Well, a terribly unfortunate start to their super heat. It is Andreas Matisse in control thus far, under pressure from KC Cook and gesticulating to each other. I'm not entirely sure what the message was there, but that looks like Chris Alcock trying to take Julian Granvo up the inside, not managing it and just having to hold station for this moment in time. Still plenty of time, though, in this race to make up those positions. It is important to settle oh. into a rhythm at this early stage, Chris. Change for third. That's Chris Alcock going down the inside of Julian Granvo, uh, who made a mistake through turn three, ran too wide into the left-hander, and Chris Alcock on the right-hander helped himself to a place and gives the point forward there to Granvo and co, who are in behind. Chris Alcock going along very well on a first international event here. 
currently would be starting on the front row of the grid. But Casey Cook trying to challenge him for at Matisse would need an absolute disaster in this race to lose pole position. He's well clear from the rest. All these guys will be in the final, so uh, there's no uh, making it to the final in terms of what we had in the juniors and the seniors. Uh, we're not going to be waving goodbye to any drivers. We will be seeing them all out there. It's just a case of what order they will start in. So uh, I think I did ask someone that if they're going to make it to the final on the grid, it'd be an absolute disaster if they didn't. Uh, to round turn two, in towards turn number three. Matisse just needs a clean race. He does not need to win this. Anywhere in the top uh, eight positions, I'd say, should do it for pole position for him. It's down to the others to try and win this race and hope things go wrong for him if they want to take pole position. We see Chris Alcock third, Granvo is fourth, but for how much longer? Anwar Beryl Smith is in behind him now as they head in towards turn number seven. And Beryl Smith was thinking about a move, but he's also under pressure himself uh, from Fokin as well. Uh, likewise, Marchini, we're seeing the two leaders heading out onto the back straight on lap number three. And will we see that line to the middle of the circuit? Of course we do. That's become the new racing line in the 165 class down that back straight. Same will apply on the start finish straight, I'm sure, as well as Matisse hops over the curves in the final chicane and heads down the start finish straight now. Chris Alcott, watch for him in third. He's getting after these top two. Beryl Smith about to challenge for P4. I think. And I wouldn't be at all surprised. Straight away, we're seeing a very tactical fight, and particularly down towards the midfield and down towards the back of the pack. There's a huge train emerging. Fastest lap there by Alejandro Marchini there, with a fantastic time of 1 minute 6.7. That is very competitive indeed. I think the first man to break into the 1067s and uh, making his way up, having started in seventh. Oh, no, excuse me, having started in sixth, he's now occupying position number seven, lost out one place, but uh, it pales in comparison to the unfortunate incident that he had in the last race when he came together with Julian Granvaux. As we see, speaking of Granvaux, this looks to be Anwar Beryl-Smith making a move up the inside. They're side by side coming down into turn number nine. Is it going to be Beryl-Smith or Julian Granvaux? I would hedge my bets and say the former and I would be right and while Beryl Smith takes the position down into the final chicane and he's saying come on let's go let's go chasing after those in front but as we see there Casey Cook up the inside of Andreas Matisse Matisse surrenders the position he doesn't want to but he knows that it's not worth losing a huge amount of time at this stage in the race only lap four as they make their way through the chicane so we do have a new leader as Chris Alcock sets the fastest lap Casey Cook from the USA takes the lead and makes it another lap led for Team USA who have been absolutely extraordinary in their abilities to perform at a high level in this competition. There is always an American towards the front of every single grid, it seems. Many, many, many fast drivers in that team and it's a delight to watch them all competing against each other and with each other. Onto the back straight in this senior 165 race. Uh, Casey Cook uh, leading the way ahead of Matisse. Matisse would still be on uh, pole position. Uh, and I'm joined now by Mark French, uh, who uh, is gonna, uh, just going to doorstop him. You're going to be commentating for a lap or so. Uh, first of all, uh, how do you think the race has been going so far today? Hi, I mean, you, you look like you've been getting your hands dirty, getting the podium ready. But yeah, uh, uh, how's it all been going? You've got you? me at a good time and working. We've just been putting up the, the podium and ready for the final presentations. I can, this is one of the first bits of racing I've actually got to see. So I, we're seeing your 165, is it? Yeah, can you stay Super for a lap or so? Yeah, of course. Yeah, of course here, so. here. Right, let's, yeah. let's have a little look on and see what's happening. I see it's quite bunched up at the front. We've got two groups of six, seven drivers. It looks like, right, we've got three for the lead and then some in chase. But uh, Casey Cook, we, we've also got a battle going on here for second on the grid, which now is being led by Casey Cook. So some tactical elements out here. Anwar Beryl Smith is trying to get the drivers, in, he's in fourth place, he's trying to get the others to work with him uh, because there's that gap. You can see him on the back straight now, Mark. Absolutely. There it is. Uh, and he's given the thumbs up there. So it looks like Beryl Smith now is getting assistance. Do we think he can close in? Eight tenths of a second can, he can come down very second. quickly. I, I think if these drivers at their front, if they start to battle, it can bunch up quite fast. And 
I can see here from the, the live points on the side, it looks like we're at that point of the weekend where some drivers are probably playing a tactical game. It's all to do with their grip position for the final and depending on who's had good heats and who's had uh, not so good heats at the front. But yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's very exciting to be up here in the commentary box with you guys. Yeah, it's fantastic to uh, have you out here as uh, they come through turn three. Bit too much curb there maybe for Casey Cook. You see that slightly unsettled the car, didn't it? And I think momentum is everything in, in these carts, isn't it? Absolutely. You, one one uh, hop of a curb like that unsettles the rear and you lose all momentum. Yeah, I think with, with the four-stroke engine, you really got to keep, uh, keep the momentum up and keep the corner speed high, keep it smooth, keep the cart moving and flowing out of the bends. I can see um, we're, we're, these guys are probably going to bunch up but not do anything too crazy we're only at the midpoint of the race so it's, it's usually the the last two or three laps when the um the big moves start to happen <laughs> you say that with your fingers crossed i think <laughs> i can see quite literally uh they make their way in towards turn number nine and we've created a new racing line down there mark in senior 165 which is the middle of the road basically the road, we all come out and we snake across to the inside <laughs> is that what you'd be doing every lap down there yeah yeah it's uh, unfortunately i haven't been driving in quite a while so i don't know if, if i was out there i don't think i would be with that front group but um it's good uh, to be here and to look along and see what's i tell you what's what happening. we've got an, the american driver casey cook is leading andreas mattis he was actually last year's champion in this category yeah uh, from germany so we've got some similar some of the same drivers from last year are again pushing at the front there's a big move yeah that's chris alcock that was a good move wasn't it down the inside of turn four waited late for the corner but uh, got through nice and clean in there very very good yes it's nice he didn't lose much momentum obviously it's given casey cook a little bit of an opportunity to pull four cart lengths but I see some hands in the air and these guys are working together a little bit to reel them back in. <laughs> and he's done well, isn't he? Third in the queue there, Beryl Smith has broken clear from these guys here and he's now attached himself onto the lead group. So done very well to do that all by himself really. And I think we could have a move incoming for third. Here it is, Q overtake for third incoming, Beryl Smith down the inside and that's gonna be the easiest overtake he makes all day i think yeah, so i think that was his uh, his teammate the other driver from great britain it looked like a helping, him out. helping him out helping him out on you go i think you're faster let's catch these guys ahead <laughs> right so there we go so chris alcock and beryl smith now working together matisse I, I guess for him if you're matisse you don't have to score a huge amount of points to get pole position here so for him yeah it's he can let these guys go past and i think that's, that's the thing about a super heat like this at the end of uh, such a long event you know the drivers it's, it's not about who wins this race they've all got their eyes on the prize and their eyes on the starting position for the main event being the final next so it's tactical it's interesting and i'm going to leave you two gentlemen well, at it because you're just doing a fantastic just job. quickly uh, yes. your event organizer i know uh, we're going to have a move very quickly there goes beryl smith he's going to take second from chris alcock uh, when you when you're up here though watching these guys out there i know you're running the event but you think oh could i just put a spare entry in for myself i'd love do, it do the seniors <laughs> unfortunately i think uh, when i get an opportunity to do that i'm gonna have to uh, not be doing the job that i'm doing so it's a catch 22 situation i think for quite some time i won't be able to race but hopefully before i'm not too old and too big to fit back in the go-kart i can, can get that opportunity and it won't be seniors it'll be senior 165 <laughs> i was trying to be generous I was I know, to be I <laughs> thank you very much uh, we've, we've two laps to go you guys are doing a great job right Keep at it. thanks very See much mark cheers Thank you uh, very Simon, much, I'll hand back to you as we on to the final two laps. Well, I'm, I'm sure Mark could see to it that he creates a, a new weight class for himself if he really wanted to. And, uh, I mean, he could give himself a trophy at the end of the day if he really wanted to as well. But as we see, Casey Cook leading by half a second almost from Anwar Beryl-Smith in second place. Chris Alcock there in third. Andreas Matisse really fallen off in the recent laps. He's OK. He doesn't need to, to go for the victory, but it would be nice for him to uh, have said that he has more or less completely dominated the entire weekend but he's sitting reasonably comfortably down in fourth in front of Yanni Fokin and uh, Julian Granvo being overtaken by Alessandro Marchini as we see on the live timing there they're both battling away look how defensive Marchini goes to the inside Julian Granvo sat right behind him is there going to be a move into the final chicane between them no there is not they maintain their positions they hold station and it is still Casey Cook defending strong to the inside as they start the final lap with Anwar Beryl Smith in second and Chris Alcock his fellow Briton in third yeah I tell you what they've worked really well together here haven't they Beryl Smith and Chris Alcock to uh, work together Chris Alcock since being passed has just pushed Beryl Smith along and now trying to push him uh, to the lead and up the inside of Casey Cook couldn't quite do it there 
but there is still the run down to turn seven and there is still the run down towards the chicane and Beryl Smith did not get a good exit out of turn five at all. We saw him jumping uh, in the seat. He's eyeing up that final chicane. I think Casey Cook's done too much of a good job in this race, but we won't speak too soon because that was a good exit out of turn eight for Anwar Beryl Smith. Chris Alcott will help him out down the back straight and Casey Cook is taking no risks whatsoever. Defensive line, he's getting closer. It's less than a cart length now into the final corner. He won't quite get there in time unless he can get a great exit. No, it's going to be Casey Cook who wins the race and puts himself on the front row of the grid for the final. That is the man who will join Andreas Matisse on the front row for the final. Chris Alcock will be on the inside of row two with Anwar Beryl Smith. Those two displaying a great partnership there. Granbo will be fifth with Marquini. Folk in seventh. Zastro will be eighth. But Casey Cook, your winner in that one. And off the back of that, he will carry a lot of confidence into the final. And Casey Cook lifting the visor almost as soon as he crossed the finish line, taking a deep breath, obviously pushing right until the end. And that was a fantastically tactical heat, super heat for uh, the T4 Senior 165s. Big thank you to everyone who came up uh, during the last couple of races, including Mark French there for uh, a quick word, sticking his head in the door and uh, obliging us with uh, a quick word about the Nations Cup. It's a huge success and uh, full credit to Mark for uh, all of the efforts that he's put in, along with the rest of Team Tillotson and uh, also all of our partners and uh, sponsors for this event. So here is the classification for the T4 Senior 165 Super Heat. It was KC Cook who took the spoils in front of Anwar Beryl-Smith and Chris Alcock in front of Andreas Matisse and Yanni Fokin in front of Alejandro Marchini, Julian Granvo, Phil Pignataro, Jan Zaskow, Kyle Lawrence, Esteban Yanguas, Peter Janssen, Zachary Valvin, Christoph Wenske, Anthony Holland, Harris Gladkins, Bas Peters, Hill Angiano, Dirk Proknov, Adan Enrique Ibarra-Castro, Daniel Bowden, Stefan Osman, Peter McBride, Jan Maria Gabbiani, Gertz Lapsgarns, Walter Kessler, Juan Pablo Glover, Manuel Gámez, Asbjorn Rolfing, Aaron Doyle, Rudolf Toms Bazins, Milan Milenkovic, Fernando Wheeler, and Seamus Lawler was our final finisher. Yep, that is all from the Super Heats. Uh, some drivers now we have sadly waved goodbye to across some of the classes. We are down to the final 36 in each of the categories and the finals is all we have left. We begin with those at 30 minutes past three local time. Uh, 50 minutes past three is when we will have juniors. 10 past four will be the senior final for the T4 Nations Cup and the 165 senior will be at 30 minutes past four. The driver's presentation will be at five o'clock. On the live stream, we're gonna be taking a break until 25 minutes past three. So just shy of 40 minutes, join us at 25 past three local time as we build up to the finals here in Valencia. For now though, very quickly from myself and Simon, it's goodbye. Attention panic, attention panic. Tutto a posto? Ciao Gian, preparati che ho portato una cosa per te. Provala e fammi sapere. Ok, mi infilo il casco, andiamo? Andiamo, subito.
Everything hurts. You need relief that's deeper than ice. You need Tidal, the cryotherapy spray that goes beyond cold to take control of the pain. This was just easy, and it felt so good. I was like, wow, that actually smells good. It's like penetrating into my skin, which I really love. Tidal's powerful plant-based formulation was developed to help world-class athletes recover faster. Tidal cryotherapy spray can contribute to total body recovery because it can alleviate muscle pain, joint pain, even back pain. A 360-degree continuous spray relieves pain in even the hardest-to-reach areas, dries fast, and lasts. When you get older, the joints start hurting. The spray is easy. You just bring it wherever you are, spray it, and it feels great within minutes. It changes my life in a way that I can still be active and yet not feel aches and pains when I'm sitting there for long hours. Tidal Cryotherapy, available at Walmart and these fine retailers. Visit Tidal.com for locations. Ciao Gian, preparati che ho portato una cosa per te. Provala e fammi sapere. Ok, mi infilo il casco, andiamo? Andiamo, subito. Everything hurts. You need relief that's deeper than ice. You need Tidal. 
the cryotherapy spray that goes beyond cold to take control of the pain. This was just easy and it felt so good. I was like, wow, that actually smells good. It's like penetrating into my skin, which I really love. Tidal's powerful plant-based formulation was developed to help world-class athletes recover faster. Tidal cryotherapy spray can contribute to total body recovery because it can alleviate muscle pain, joint pain, even back pain. A 360-degree continuous spray relieves pain in even the hardest-to-reach areas, dries fast, and lasts. When you get older, the joints start hurting. The spray is easy. You just bring it wherever you are, spray it and it feels great within minutes. It changes my life in a way that I can still be active and yet not feel aches and pains when I'm sitting there for long hours. Tidal Cryotherapy, available at Walmart and these fine retailers. Visit Tidal.com for locations. Ciao Gian, preparati che ho portato una cosa per te. Provala e fammi sapere. Ok, mi infilo il casco e andiamo? Andiamo, subito. When everything hurts, you need relief that's deeper than ice. You need Tidal, the cryotherapy spray that goes beyond cold to take control of the pain. This was just easy, and it felt so good. I was like, wow, that actually smells good. It's like penetrating into my skin, which I really love. Tidal's powerful plant-based formulation was developed to help world-class athletes recover faster. Tidal cryotherapy spray can contribute to total body recovery because it can alleviate muscle pain, joint pain, even back pain. A 360-degree continuous spray relieves pain in even the hardest-to-reach areas, dries fast, and lasts. When you get older, the joints start hurting. The spray is easy. You just bring it wherever you are, spray it, and it feels great within minutes. It changes my life in a way that I can still be active and yet not feel aches and pains when I'm sitting there for long hours. Tidal Cryotherapy, available at Walmart and these fine retailers. Visit Tidal.com for locations.
posto. Ciao Gian, preparati che ho portato una cosa per te. Provala e fammi sapere. Ok, mi infilo il casco, andiamo? Andiamo, subito. When everything hurts, you need relief that's deeper than ice. You need Tidal, the cryotherapy spray that goes beyond cold to take control of the pain. This was just easy, and it felt so good. I was like, wow, that actually smells good. It's like penetrating into my skin, which I really love. Tidal's powerful plant-based formulation was developed to help world-class athletes recover faster. Tidal cryotherapy spray can contribute to total body recovery because it can alleviate muscle pain, joint pain, even back pain. A 360-degree continuous spray relieves pain in even the hardest-to-reach areas, dries fast, and lasts. When you get older, the joints start hurting. The spray is easy. You just bring it wherever you are, spray it and it feels great within minutes. It changes my life in a way that I can still be active and yet not feel aches and pains when I'm sitting there for long hours. Tidal Cryotherapy, available at Walmart and these fine retailers. Visit Tidal.com for locations. Ciao Gian, preparati che ho portato una cosa per te. Provala e fammi sapere. Ok, mi infilo il casco, andiamo? Andiamo, subito.
Everything hurts. You need relief that's deeper than ice. You need Tidal, the cryotherapy spray that goes beyond cold to take control of the pain. This was just easy, and it felt so good. I was like, wow, that actually smells good. It's like penetrating into my skin, which I really love. Tidal's powerful plant-based formulation was developed to help world-class athletes recover faster. Tidal cryotherapy spray can contribute to total body recovery because it can alleviate muscle pain, joint pain, even back pain. A 360-degree continuous spray relieves pain in even the hardest-to-reach areas, dries fast, and lasts. When you get older, the joints start hurting. The spray is easy. You just bring it wherever you are, spray it and it feels great within minutes. It changes my life in a way that I can still be active and yet not feel aches and pains when I'm sitting there for long hours. Tidal Cryotherapy, available at Walmart and these fine retailers. Visit Tidal.com for locations. Ciao Gian, preparati che ho portato una cosa per te. Provala e fammi sapere. Ok, mi fido il caso, andiamo? Andiamo, subito. Everything hurts. You need relief that's deeper than ice. You need Tidal, 
the cryotherapy spray that goes beyond cold to take control of the pain. This was just easy and it felt so good. I was like, wow, that actually smells good. It's like penetrating into my skin, which I really love. Tidal's powerful plant-based formulation was developed to help world-class athletes recover faster. Tidal cryotherapy spray can contribute to total body recovery because it can alleviate muscle pain, joint pain, even back pain. A 360-degree continuous spray relieves pain in even the hardest-to-reach areas, dries fast, and lasts. When you get older, the joints start hurting. The spray is easy. You just bring it wherever you are, spray it and it feels great within minutes. It changes my life in a way that I can still be active and yet not feel aches and pains when I'm sitting there for long hours. Tidal Cryotherapy, available at Walmart and these fine retailers. Visit Tidal.com for locations. Ciao Gian, preparati che ho portato una cosa per te. Provala e fammi sapere. Ok, mi filo il casco, andiamo? Andiamo, subito. When everything hurts, you need relief that's deeper than ice. You need Tidal, the cryotherapy spray that goes beyond cold to take control of the pain. This was just easy, and it felt so good. I was like, wow, that actually smells good. It's like penetrating into my skin, which I really love. Tidal's powerful plant-based formulation was developed to help world-class athletes recover faster. Tidal cryotherapy spray can contribute to total body recovery because it can alleviate muscle pain, joint pain, even back pain. A 360-degree continuous spray relieves pain in even the hardest-to-reach areas, dries fast, and lasts. When you get older, the joints start hurting. The spray is easy. You just bring it wherever you are, spray it, and it feels great within minutes. It changes my life in a way that I can still be active and yet not feel aches and pains when I'm sitting there for long hours. Tidal Cryotherapy, available at Walmart and these fine retailers. Visit Tidal.com for locations.
posto. Ciao Gian, preparati che ho portato una cosa per te. Provala e fammi sapere. Ok, mi infilo il casco, andiamo? Andiamo, subito. Everything hurts. You need relief that's deeper than ice. You need Tidal, the cryotherapy spray that goes beyond cold to take control of the pain. This was just easy, and it felt so good. I was like, wow, that actually smells good. It's like penetrating into my skin, which I really love. Tidal's powerful plant-based formulation was developed to help world-class athletes recover faster. Tidal cryotherapy spray can contribute to total body recovery because it can alleviate muscle pain, joint pain, even back pain. A 360-degree continuous spray relieves pain in even the hardest-to-reach areas, dries fast, and lasts. When you get older, the joints start hurting. The spray is easy. You just bring it wherever you are, spray it, and it feels great within minutes. It changes my life in a way that I can still be active and yet not feel aches and pains when I'm sitting there for long hours. Tidal Cryotherapy, available at Walmart and these fine retailers. Visit Tidal.com for locations. Ciao Gian, preparati che ho portato una cosa per te. Provala e fammi sapere. Ok, mi infilo il casco, andiamo? Andiamo, subito.
Everything hurts. You need relief that's deeper than ice. You need Tidal, the cryotherapy spray that goes beyond cold to take control of the pain. This was just easy, and it felt so good. I was like, wow, that actually smells good. It's like penetrating into my skin, which I really love. Tidal's powerful plant-based formulation was developed to help world-class athletes recover faster. Tidal cryotherapy spray can contribute to total body recovery because it can alleviate muscle pain, joint pain, even back pain. A 360-degree continuous spray relieves pain in even the hardest to reach areas, dries fast, and lasts. When you get older, the joints start hurting. The spray is easy. You just bring it wherever you are, spray it, and it feels great within minutes. It changes my life in a way that I can still be active and yet not feel aches and pains when I'm sitting there for long hours. Tidal Cryotherapy, available at Walmart and these fine retailers. Visit Tidal.com for locations. Ciao Gian, preparati che ho portato una cosa per te. Provala e fammi sapere. Ok, mi infilo il casco, andiamo? Andiamo, subito. Everything hurts. You need relief that's deeper than ice. You need Tidal, 
the cryotherapy spray that goes beyond cold to take control of the pain. This was just easy and it felt so good. I was like, wow, that actually smells good. It's like penetrating into my skin, which I really love. Tidal's powerful plant-based formulation was developed to help world-class athletes recover faster. Tidal cryotherapy spray can contribute to total body recovery because it can alleviate muscle pain, joint pain, even back pain. A 360-degree continuous spray relieves pain in even the hardest-to-reach areas, dries fast, and... And on the inside is Ben McLaughlin. We'll come and speak to you, uh, Ben. Uh, how excited are you for this pole position uh, for the final? Yeah, very excited. Second last year. Hopefully better this year. So we can maybe go one better this year. We've qualified uh, on pole position, so uh, excited for it? Yeah, very excited. And we're here on pole position. We can see the run down. It talk us uh, how it feels looking down towards turn number one. It's a little run, long run down there, isn't it? But uh, uh, assessing how, how we think we can do it. Yeah, just kind of go down and try and keep first place. Then we away we go. And, and enjoyed the event overall so far? Yeah, very. Cool. Think we can get the win now? Yeah. Definitely. Oh, good luck, good luck. Uh, best of luck. Let's go to Taste Van House uh, on P number two. I'm going to let him have a word uh, with uh, his mechanic first of all, uh, and then I'm going to jump in. I think I'm okay to jump in now. Okay. Uh, Taste Van House, uh, fantastic racing all weekend. Uh, well done for what you've done up until this point. Uh, front row, that's a really good way to get started. Looking forward to the final? Yeah. Yeah? Nervous? Excited? Bit of both? Yeah, gone through a bit of a plan in our head. You don't have to tell us it, but uh, you planned out how you're going to attack this race. Uh, don't want to tell us. Don't want to tell us. Uh, but best of luck for the race. Uh, uh, you like this circuit? Yeah. I, I should think so. On the front row for it. Yeah. Very bit of bit of nerves, bit of excitement, but uh, I wouldn't expect anything less. Leo Livings is down here uh, on row number two. Let's let him jump in his car, and then we'll go and jump. Over, Leo. Inside of row two, some would say that's probably the best place to start. You're on the inside. Get to get the run down there uh, on uh, Ben as well. You're in a really good position, it. Yeah, really good. Excited for this now? Yeah, definitely. We're going for the win. Definitely, I'm going to get Britain the win for sure. You're going to do it for your country? Yes, definitely. Good stuff, good stuff, good words from Leo. Let's go over to the outside of row two. Axel Mariano, no com, uh, comes next. And uh, I'll speak to you. Axel, been great to speak to you all weekend. And you're in a really good position here, aren't you? Uh, tell us how excited you are. I'm very excited because I might get into the podium for the first time at Europe. So it seems like you've had really good racing with these three drivers here all weekend. You really enjoyed it? Good stuff. Well, best of luck for the final. Thank you very much, Speak. Thank you. Best of luck. We'll let some final words of encouragement uh, come in. How long have we got? I think I'm being told we're going to call it. So uh, there we can see all the drivers lined up on the grid. If you point the camera that way, you'll see they are going to be sent at half past. So 35 seconds time, they are going to be sent and that will be the T4 Mini Final. So I'm going to be going up to Simon Byford alongside myself, Chris. Oh, bring that in. There we go. So alongside myself, Chris McCarthy, Simon Byford is up there in the commentary box. This absolute legend is calling me down. So I'm going to stay here all race. Up to you in commentary, Simon. If you could bring the uh, DeWalt fan with you, that would be very much appreciated there, Chris. But uh, welcome along, everyone at the track and on the live stream to this, the creme de la creme. It is the T4 Mini Final. The top 36 drivers in the Mini category of this weekend are all lined up on the grid. They are ready and waiting to be sent on their way for what will be a fantastic 12 lap final around this 1,495 meter long Cartodromo Internacional Lucas Guerrero here just outside of Valencia playing host to the T4 Nations Cup for the second year running and what a location it is. Such a fast track, such a technical track and encourages a huge amount of battling. And what a view I have here up in the commentary box listening to all the engines roar and seeing the sun tinting off of all of the visors, some of which are up, some of which are down. But 
they will all be going down momentarily as we get ready to get on our way and set these eight to 12 year olds in action against each other. There is the whistle and away we go. Ben McLaughlin pulling away from pole position with Tace Van House starting alongside him. They begin their warm up lap and it is sure to be an absolutely incredible occasion for these young people. Many of them racing for the first time at the T4 Nations Cup. Many of them their first taste of international competition. And it will be an incredible learning experience for all of them involved. Be they winners or losers, they will all come away with a huge amount of knowledge from this weekend. And that is the most important thing, the knowledge and the memories. We're all here to have fun. That is the nature of the T4 Nations Cup and fun is what we shall have. Let's take you through the running order. So it will be Ben McLaughlin on pole in front of Tace Van House and Leo Livings. Mariano Axel Nocom starts in fourth in front of George House. Miho, Miko Leon Schwerz starts in front of Luke Millwood and kicked over in front of Cass Mancha, Yindra Svoboda, Jeremy Arkepol, oh no. Thomas Harper. Oh, Problem. disaster. That's uh, Axel Mariano Nocom. Axel Mariano Nocom has stopped at turn eight, and he's not the only one. Four drivers have stopped over there. Uh, just going to see who's not coming through the sectors. Uh, but, uh, the number 147 has stopped. I think Ronnie Legg has stopped uh, as well. Uh, and also Diego, uh, the number 188 car as well. So Diego Baradone. So four carts have stopped. I wouldn't be surprised if they're sent back round here one more time because we have four carts being currently cleared up down at turn number eight. There you can see it on the live pictures. What a shame. Axel Mariano Nocom was within no doubt a contender for the podium here. The drivers are being sent round to the final corner now. It looks like the track is clear. We may get going at the first time of going. If we do, to the left of screen will be Ben McLaughlin. To the right will be Tate's Van House. And we are, in fact, we are going to go around one more time. No surprise there, Simon. The track still being cleared up at turn eight. But what a shame for those four drivers. And we saw something similar last year. We saw a number of drivers. In fact, Amelie Ackitts, who's racing in juniors, was one of them where a number of carts just stalled from going so slowly on the formation lap. Yeah. And ultimately, the race was red flagged and all the drivers were given an opportunity to start the race. Now, I'm not sure if that's the decision that's going to be made by race control. They will make that decision in due course. But as we say, four carts, we believe it is, three or four carts, I think it's four, have stopped on the formation lap between turns seven and eight and a disastrous start for the t4 mini final with many of them going to be hoping to get a chance to race many of them having put a lot of effort in to get this far mariano axel nocom most notably supposed to be starting in fourth this mm -hmm. race and unfortunately stopping on the formation lap a bitterly disappointing turn of events for the young Filipino who has shown such incredible pace all weekend long. But I do believe yeah. that we are going to go racing this time round, providing everyone is in the tram lines and in their correct positions, Chris. Yep, yeah, hopefully it's a clean start this time. Uh, we have the track now clear, albeit four carts down. And uh, once again, a real shame how quickly things can change in a weekend. Uh, but I hope all four of those drivers are, are back to fight again next year. For now, though, we have to decide a winner this year, and we still have 32 drivers out there to fight for the title. Ben McLaughlin will be to the left of screen. To the right will be Tate Van House. We are go for the 2023 T4 Mini Final down towards the first two corners, and it's going to be McLaughlin leading from Leo Livings, who goes straight into second place using that third position and inside row to get himself into second. He takes George House with him up to P3, going into fourth place there. I think might have been uh, Luke Millwood looks to have made a, a good start to the race as well as they make their way out of turn number five now and make the run through six and up to seven. Are we going to see drivers working together straight away or is there going to be more action on this first lap? It's been a great start from the Irishman out front, leading away Leo Living's George House right there, reigning champion in third place. And then we've got them queuing up behind. Tace Van House is the driver in fourth place. So he didn't drop too far back. He's still got a great chance at this as they come down towards 
the final corner and we get ready to complete the first of 12 laps in this T4 mini final. It all comes down to this race, winner takes all and across the line at the end of the first lap is Ben McLaughlin. And Miko Leon Schwerz under investigation, the 177 machine. That's a very unfortunate start to his final here in Valencia in his first Nations Cup appearance as the leaders file their way through turn three. It is turning into a five-cart pack for the lead and there is a significant gap between the leading five and uh, it is more than a second in fact already having only completed one lap in anger the gap between fifth and sixth already more than a second this just goes to show how close this racing is it's absolutely incredible, Chris. Yep, there's still a long way to go, though, isn't there? As they come out of turn eight, it can change very quickly, but uh, those gaps can also extend. But, oh, uh, those gaps can extend very quickly. I did see a stricken car and got uh, slightly called out. Thought we may have had someone else in trouble, but uh, uh, everyone else still going round OK. One has uh, dropped off the back, so there may have been one driver hitting a, a couple of problems early uh, in this race, uh, which uh, may have been Petra M Mila Slavlovic, uh, who's out a bit of a rough weekend but other than that we're all going round okay and it's still Ben McLaughry leading from Leo Livings in second George House in third place these three now have a gap over Taste Van House who's under pressure for P4 get ready to the left of screen you're going to see that action going on there battle going on for fourth change going on for fourth in the back of screen that's Svoboda taking fourth place away from Taste Van House it's as you were in the top three but we have a new driver now in fourth place Svoboda takes fourth away from Taste Van House as the top three coming towards turn number seven and we have to be wary Simon of that battle for sixth as well which is being led by Luke Millwood in the red race suit he's trying to lead that pack up to the battle for fourth place no doubt about what the leaders are doing they're working together to break clear and the top two threatening to break clear of George House and this is a great opportunity to see where all the different groups of minis come together, where they slot in pace-wise. And you have to say, George House has discovered his pace in this final, having had a performance that wasn't representative of his pace last year. He has managed to climb his way up to P3 and is still in contention for the victory as we see a move there from the 177 machine. That is Miko Leon Schwerz up the inside of, I believe that was kicked over, or Luke Millwood perhaps, as Ben McLaughry sets the fastest lap a 106.4, which is about a tenth quicker than the best lap of Leo Livings behind him and trying to stretch out his gap. This leading group of three really pushing with each other, using the slipstream, using the bump drop to try and break away and break away. They have the gap. 1.4 seconds, in fact almost 1.5 seconds between George House in third and Yindra Svoboda in fourth. On to the back straight, here come the top three now into view, George House still with these guys, it looked like for one second he might have been dropping back but uh, he is hanging on to them the best he can, that is why George House did as well as he did last time he was at these, this event. But fourth and fifth well and truly have dropped back here we go change for the lead leo livings about to hit the front of the nation's cup as he dives down the inside and on the exit of turn two he is our new leader in the t4 mini final leo Livings said to us on the grid he was going to take the win in this race and he's gone through into the lead at the start of lap five and taken with it the fastest lap of the race Ben McLaughlin in second, George House in third. It's then two seconds back to the chasing duo of Svoboda and Tace Van House, who are being caught by Schwerz, who's now come up into P6. Has been very, very quick this weekend. May not have had the best of luck, but the German is P6 ahead of Luke Millwood. Kicked over is in that queue as well. He's had some really good heat. So some big protagonists in that group as well. If they can catch these guys, it could turn into some battle. But these guys want to keep it just a three-way battle at maximum. And Leo Livings leads us on to lap six. He does, and George House falling away slightly, and then we've got that two-cart battle of Yindra Svoboda and Tace Van House. Tace Van House, you could say, not representative, of, not representative of his pace in the previous heats, but I'm sure he has more in his locker that he's waiting to deploy once he dispatches Yindra Svoboda towards the end of this race. That is going to be his attempt anyway. 
Indra Svoboda having raced here last year. He took the T4 Mini title on the track at least. Now that wasn't seen in the final classifications as George House won it. But Indra Svoboda this time last year won it on the track. And look at this, a move for the lead there. Keith McLaughlin up the inside of Leo Livings. And a fantastic move there to retake the lead by the young Irishman. Fantastic stuff there from Ben McLaughlin, the man from just outside of Waterford, retaking the lead on lap five of 12 here. And that does demote Leo Livings down into second position and creates a British 2-3 once again. Yep, good move that from uh, the 173 of Ben McLaughlin down the inside at turn seven. So the Irishman hits the front once more. We are officially halfway through this T4 mini final. The top 10 is a so. It's Ben McLaughlin leading from Leo Livings and George House. Those are the top three and look like the only three unless they all take each other out that can win this race. The gap just seems far too big to the chasing pack. It's 2.6 seconds back to Svoboda and Tace Van House. Then it is Schwerz in sixth place. He is just over a second back from the battle for P4. He has kicked over just behind along with Harney Millwood. That rounds out the top nine. Thomas Harper rounds out the top ten. Here are the top three that we've been talking about that are going to be battling for this race win. Halfway through the race, two of them have shared the lead. What about George House? Are we going to see him fight through and potentially lead this race as we come on to the run now down to turn number 10? On to the brakes we go. Good braking there from Ben McLaughlin. where you can see really pushing the car and he's rewarded for it on the exit. Gets a little bit of a gap. George House now closing right in. This is certainly the closest he's been to these two. Is he now going to make a move on this lap? possibly into turn four. That's turn two. This is now turn number three. Through the left hand, into the right hander. What about into turn four here? Doesn't quite go down the inside. George House, fastest driver on the circuit, is now the time for him to take second place. Well, it's a matter of strategy at this stage, but it is a strategy that will have to be finalized in a few moments time, as we see Leo Living still chasing down Ben McLaughlin, almost looking at a move there coming into turn number seven, but not able to make it work. And George House is just sitting happily behind, thinking, I can make something of this if these two go squabbling too much. We did see it before in the final heat this morning, where Ben McLaughlin led for practically the entire race and then was just pipped at the post. I'm sure he is anxious not to have a situation like that happen again as we look back to the battle that is headed up by Yindra Svoboda and it consists of Svoboda, Schwerz, Dober, Carney and Millwood and a cracking battle it's turning into as well as Ben McLaughlin still leads the way from Leo Livings and George House both of these drivers have shown very good form recently Ben McLaughlin fast all weekend Leo Livings he won the uh, the first heat yesterday morning and since then, he's had modest performances, nothing record-breaking, but it is the final that counts. And then George House needs no introduction, having been quick here all of last year and now in the running to defend his title as the T4 Mini champion. I tell you what, uh, Jack Harney on an absolute charge in P6, one of the other Irish drivers out there, up 10 places now in this race, and he's staring at a possible fourth place finish, and that could get better if anything is to happen to these three. I can see out the window, he's right on the back of P5, Svoboda heading down the run towards turn number 10. He might even be by now and into fifth place. Let's see them actually across the line they go. No, Jack Harney's still in, t in P6 for now, but he's up 10 places in this race so far. Sebastian Venkov, the South African, up six places to uh, P14. And we have Campus up eight places to 17th. Bernie Gomez, who spoke to us on the grid, before one of the heats earlier and said he was going to make 15 places uh, is up 11 places to 23rd so plenty of hard charges out there whilst these guys follow each other around until the last lap that last lap is fastly approaching this is lap number 10 of 12 so last lap on the way shortly Jack Harney can he get that fourth place because the way he's going I'd say he certainly deserves a couple more he's absolutely flying and with a two-tenth cap to Yindra Svoboda, it only takes one mistake from Svoboda 
to close that gap up and then it only takes one opportunity to get past the young Czech driver who has shown decent pace all weekend and uh, also decent pace this time last year as we mentioned as they come across the line this is the penultimate lap this is the second to last lap next time round will be the last opportunity for any of these drivers to make moves and it is still Ben McLaughry who is in control of this race his eyes are forward his mind is focused on the corner in front rather than the cart behind but Leo Livings having a look round the outside and making an attempt almost through turn five but not able to make anything of it through the fast sweeper of six coming down into turn seven is Living's going to go for a move he's up the inside of McLaughlin and he takes McLaughlin through turn seven McLaughlin isn't done and he retakes the position but surely Leo Living's is going to have the cutback no fantastic exit from turn number eight for Ben McLaughlin there defending his lead having lost it momentarily he says no thank you I want to win this it's my track it's my race and it will be my T4 Nations Cup title as they come round to start the final lap, you can see that Leo Living's means business. George House is thinking, I can still win this. Ben McLaughlin goes defensive to the inside and is just about able to cover off Leo Living's, who was looking at making a move, wasn't able to make good of it. As they round their way through turn number three, George House is right on the back of Leo Living's and this could turn into a significant battle for second place. If Leo Livings makes any mistakes, it is going to be George House, who is right there and ready to pounce. But look at this. Look at how tight it is between McLaughlin and Livings. And I'm seeing a red flag being waved. There is a red flag being waved outside of the commentary box. And yes, the, the yeah. session has been... Now, that is very interesting. The session has been red flagged on the last lap. Yeah, we have a driver in discomfort at the chicane, uh, unfortunately. Uh, a car... Uh, as stopped there, there is a driver being attended to. Uh, I don't know who that is, and I wouldn't like to guess either. But uh, until we have any more uh, uh, information on that, we won't bring you anything to it. The driver, I can see out the window, uh, is now on their feet. And the marshals are uh, and medical team are around the driver. The driver is standing up and being attended to, but that means the race uh, will be red flagged. It has been stopped. The result will go back one lap, and that will be the final result as we are at 75% distance. So uh, not the end to the race we would have wanted, but the most important thing is that all the drivers get back in one piece and the medical team are out there attending to the driver that has found himself in some discomfort at the uh, final chicane uh, we don't have any information on who the driver is just yet and until we get confirmation uh, we wouldn't like to hazard a guess either so we'll bring you more information as it comes uh, our way but uh, for now the race has been a red flagged and that is the end of the t4 mini final Simon. and the winning position has been given to Leo Livings in spite of the fact that it was Ben McLaughlin who was leading at the time of the red flag bringing it back to the lap previous Leo Livings is the T4 Nations Cup mini champion and what an achievement it is for the young Briton George House will take second position and uh, now these are results I'm not sure is the timing on the live stream completely reliable if it respects the final position we will wait for the final classification to be brought up, but it is Leo Livings who is champion. The young Briton can be delighted with that result. But as was said, a very, very unfortunate end to an otherwise fantastic battle between the top three. Here we are, Leo Livings is champion in front of George House, who just misses on retaining his title. Ben McLaughlin is classified as finishing in third in front of Yindra Zvoboda in fourth. Tace Van Haus finishes in fifth position in front of Jack Harney. Miko Leon Schwerz and Kick Dober in eighth with Luke Millwood and Tyg Malone rounding out the top ten. Then comes Kasmancha in eleventh place and Thomas Harper in twelfth. Taylin Patel from South Africa finished ahead of his countryman Sebastian Venkov in in 13th and 14th respectively. Then came Billy Clancy in 15th, Ronan Campos in 16th. And then in 17th was Logan Rolfe and Deacon Oliver in 18th position. Ewan Gavin Bugayon finished in 19th in front of Hudson Hidalgo. Yanomir Arkhipov, who fell down 
10 positions from where he started. A disappointing result for Yadimir in his home race, with Fernando Wheeler Jr. finishing in 22nd, in front of Evan McLaughrey and Jim McClarich Jr. in 24th. Bernie Guevara's finished in 25th position, in front of, Bel in t in front of Valentina Helena in 26th, Matthew Reinald in 27th, and Lorenko Diniz in 28th position. Martin Gomez finished in 29th, and Raimi Guzman rounded out the top 30 in front of Fedebaka and Petra Milosavlovic, who unfortunately was forced to stop. Our non-finishers, to my knowledge at least, based on what I'm seeing on the timing, were Raimi Guzman, Fedebaka, Petra Milosavlovic, Mariano Axel Nocom, who was unfortunate to DNF on the formation lap, as was Steinbecker, Ronnie Legg and Diego Baradone. And the conclusion to the weekend that none of us wanted to see in the T4 minis. But nevertheless, it is Leo Livings who has taken spoils here and will be crowned the T4 Nations Cup champion in the mini category. Yeah, I'm getting a confirmation. The driver involved in the incident was Rami Guzman in the 168 car. But the driver uh, was up on their feet, was OK, but... Uh, uh, for checks is now being taken away by the ambulance team uh, and uh, uh, will be uh, assessed further but uh, what we can say is that the driver was uh, up appeared uh, okay but it is going to be now taken away by the ambulance team to be uh, treated further and for more checks so uh, uh, we, uh, we hope everything okay but it appears uh, on that front on the safety of the driver that uh, it is good news a shame that uh, that the race had to end that way for uh, Rami uh, and for the, the T4 mini class uh, in general but uh, uh, the main thing is the driver appears to be uh, okay so uh, we move on with the event uh, next uh, will of course be junior so I think I'm gonna uh, head down to the grid and uh, greet some of the drivers so I'll leave you to uh, build up to the race yes thank you very much Chris as we say the most important thing is that Rami Guzman is okay obviously the ambulance in attendance that is as much procedure as anything else when there is a red flag incident. It is mandatory for drivers to attend to the ambulance. And in this case, the marshals deciding that it is best for the ambulance to uh, meet the driver at the scene. And as we see, all of the carts being brought back. Now obviously, we won't be getting underway and we won't be showing anything on the live stream of the incident in question. Um, but as we say, the ambulance crew in attendance. We are very, very lucky here at the... Cartodromo Internacional, Lucas Guerrero, to have such skilled medical personnel and uh, marshals who are on the scene so promptly. We really could not do it without them. And so full credit goes to the marshals, the ambulance crews, and uh, all involved in uh, ensuring the safety of our drivers here this weekend. Safety is, of course, the number one priority while we are all here to have a good time. It is important that that is done safely. Unfortunately, the end of the T4 mini final coming prematurely, but the most important thing is that all drivers are safe and well, and we can still take solace in the fact that we received 99% of the race that we were guaranteed to. We didn't get to see the chequered flag, but the price for that is rather small in comparison to what could have been. We do, however, look forward to the T4 junior final, which will be coming up in a few moments' time when everything has been cleared up and uh, as we say Chris will be down on the grid and he'll be meeting the drivers for one last time before they set off on their 12 lap race around this 1.495 kilometer circuit here in the heart of the Spanish countryside just outside of Valencia just outside of the the Autodromo Ricardo Tormo and uh, I can tell you that the ambulance has now left the track and uh, is going away to treat uh, the drivers in question. So we can expect to see the T4 Juniors being brought out onto the grid in a few moments' time. Obviously, the atmosphere around the track in recent moments has uh, dulled down significantly and has depleted as a uh, mood of concern comes over the track. But we do have the best medical crews in the business and the best marshals in the business as well on the scene so promptly and I'm sure that all will be well since uh, such a prompt response was initiated by all of the medical and marshal teams. 
So let's look ahead to the T4 Junior final. And uh, we can take solace in the fact that we will get to see another 12 lap sprint around this fantastic facility here just outside of Chiva in Valencia. The T4 Juniors, catering for ages 12 to 16 years, will be taking part in uh, a few moments time. Now obviously we do need to clear everything up and uh, there are still a number of, oh no, never mind, the carts have all been cleared from the circuit and so I believe that we can expect to see the T4 Juniors out on the track in a few moments time. We wait for the RGMMC crews, the fantastic event organizers that we have here today. We wait for the uh, instruction to bring all of the T4 Junior carts out onto the track where Chris will greet them, wish them good luck and ask them how they're feeling. And it's times like this, the height of the day here in Spain with an air temperature of 28 degrees and very little wind compared to yesterday. So those drivers who you can see there on the live stream standing in the pre-grid area, many, 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 many umbrellas to be seen. That's purely in an effort to keep cool. Hydration and shade is the name of the game at the moment for these T4 Junior drivers as they prepare to embark on their final 12 lap quest around this Cartodromo Valencia. We are still waiting, as I say, for the juniors to be brought out onto the track as the recovery van returns through the pit lane, I believe we can expect. And here is the signal being made to bring out the T4s onto the starting grid. And we will finally get an opportunity to speak to our leading drivers and understand their psyche going into this 12 lap sprint as we see a light aircraft flying over the track. That's very interesting. I've never seen that before. As all the drivers make their way out, we will be going down to Chris in but a few moments' time to gain his insight for this T4 Junior Final. Yeah, welcome down to the grid. Uh, Stu and Josh have just brought out, uh, just for me uh, in particular, right guys? Right. Uh, the Nations Cup trophy. Uh, as you can see, uh, it is a beautiful, beautiful uh, piece of kit. This is part of what the guys uh, are fighting for, the Nations Cup. And speaking uh, to the guys upstairs, it is very, very close for the Nations Cup. So we'll keep you posted for that. But in the background, here come our T4 Junior drivers. Guys, up on the roof, let's give some support for our T4 Junior jump finalists as they make their way onto the circuit. Let's give them a round of applause, please. Starting on pole position is going to be Shan Canave. Alongside will be Ricardo Tabut from South Africa. On row two from the United Kingdom will be Amelie Ackitts. And from the United States will be Chase Biscalia. We are going to speak to the guys uh, as they get down towards us. I think we have about five minutes uh, before uh, we go live. So we'll uh, let them get the cards down. In fact, I'm going to just go straight over to Shan Canave. Ah, so, uh, uh, you know, a few words in French for us? Oui, yes, yes. Bah, je suis très heureux de participer à cette finale en tant que premier, en tant que leader. Euh, J'espère que ça va bien se passer, finir sur le podium. Et euh, je tenais à remercier mon sponsor euh, Wetio Project, sans, sans qui cela serait rien, serait pas possible. Quoi. Merci. 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 Uh, there we go. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Ricardo Tabutz. We'll come to you next. Uh, this is very good position to be in front row, uh, outside uh, of the uh, front row. But uh, uh, nevertheless. Uh, we're up here. Uh, plan for, for the start. You, you, you've gone through it in your head? I'm just going to try and push my hardest and the best that I can. It's been a, it's, it's a hard weekend overall, I imagine. Uh, but uh, have you enjoyed it? Yes, I have enjoyed it so much. It, the racing seemed very tough all, all the way throughout. It seemed pretty relentless out there. Yes, it's, it's, it's good racing. And now it all comes down to this. Uh, it's going to be a long race, but uh, I imagine good fun. Yeah, it's going to be good. Good stuff. We'll leave you to get ready. Uh, follow me. Let's go to third place, uh, Amelie Ackitts over here, who we spoke to on a couple of occasions. Hello again. 
we meet again. Um, uh, how are we doing? Oh, inside row two, yeah. <laughs> we're in a close battle uh, for for the lead or for second in the last race. Yeah. And uh, I think a couple of moves you did in the last lap meant you got this inside row two start. So yeah. it was good. Um, I think um, I think that uh, we well, I think we had a really good um, it, super heat and it w it went really well but yeah we finished fourth i think in the end but it was so close over the line but finally got the inside so <laughs> hopefully we'll actually have a good run to the corner this <laughs> next time because we've been on the outside pushed wide every time you can't really do much from second so it's been making a it's been making a bit of a difference yeah hopefully your competitors can hear that so you can say that as loud as you want <laughs> Best of luck for the final. <laughs> so, sorry. Uh, okay, let's go to uh, Chase Pascalia uh, next, who is on the outside. Row two, though. Uh, I'm going to spin you around uh, so the guys can see you from this way. Uh, we've spoken to you a couple of times now. It's going really well this weekend, isn't it? And for Team USA, woo, you don't want to, you can hold that if you want, but uh, it's going very well. Yeah, it's been going well. Uh, we got a penalty that we're not sure. It, fell, it made us fell back a lot, but we're back up here and we're going to go for the win. How are you feeling out of this one now? Um, of nerves building up. How does it feel at this point? Talk us through it for, for those guys who haven't raced a Nations Cup race before. I'm feeling really good. All I got to do is just get to the inside as quick as possible and then just go with my teammates. Uh, trying to get out of USA 1, 2, 3, 4 and I'm come out on top. I imagine after your super heat, you just want to get out there and get going now. Oh, yeah. I definitely screwed up a blocking over there and I want to get it back so bad. Good stuff. Thank you. Good stuff. Best of luck. Uh, we're going to try and get through the front three rows. I think we've got enough time. Oh, I don't want to photobomb anyone. Hey, Adams. Uh, yeah. Uh, right inside row three. That's, that's, that's pretty solid. Uh, you got a really good chance on that. Yeah. This is where we started last year, so hopefully we can do the same thing we did. Maybe it's yeah, almost meant to be then, that you start fifth. Maybe fifth is the, the place to be. Who knows? Um, it's just up to the drivers around me and me and just see how many the, of the drivers can just help around and so we can just push away from the pack and get this. It's, it seems your weekend's had a little bit of everything yeah. uh, so far. Do you think you've learned from all of that and can go full out attack now? Yeah, I think I've learned a lot just from my competitors from last year and this year is just a, a lot different and hopefully this year we do, we do better. I'm going to let you jump in. Uh, good luck. Uh, uh, I think uh, we are being told to clear. So uh, I'm going to start walking away. Uh, we're being told to. One, one minute. Uh, we're being told to clear. So uh, we're going to go. Uh, so uh, Simon, uh, I'm going to hand back uh, up to you. Nations Cup trophy. That's what they're fighting for at the front. Those are the drivers who are racing in this. T4 Junior coming your way. Here's the grid. Enjoy it up there. Well, here we go then for the T4 Junior Final. It all comes down to this for the top 36 ranked junior drivers, aged 12 to 16, are about to get underway. And it will be Shan Canivet, the Frenchman, leading us down into turn one on this formation lap. Alongside him, Ricardo Tabut, and in third place, Amelie Ackett, alongside Chase Biscalia. Then we have row, row three, an All-American third row, consisting of Truly Adams, last year's champion of the T4 Junior category, and Chase Gassiot Lee in sixth position. Row four is Aaron Coogan, alongside Eric Coesto, another American. And then we have row five, Martin Wright and Brian Wilson. Antonio Martinez and Daniel Hartley, line up alongside each other on the fifth on the sixth row of the grid in front of Phil on in front of jo Jorn Helder and Phil Becker excuse me and then we have Tyman Tayman Vitter in front of Nico Franca and we have Jakob Josef Havel in front of Josh Allen Keith Burke Elias Fornes Lachlan Shearsmith Mark Fleming Joey Carney Richard Saker Matthias Glover Matteo Richter Tara Keneally Daniel Brunetsky Daniels Petrus Bazins, Pre Trevino, Omar William, excuse me, William Omar, and then we have Anastasia Jurassis, Brooke Loretti, Edward Clark, Mika Spence, and the final driver is Jesus Asuncion, the Spaniard, rounding out the grid for this T4 Junior final. This 12 lap sprint around the Carter Drome Valencia, it really is set to be something special. 
led by the Frenchman Shan Canivet, one of two Frenchmen taking part in this year's Nations Cup, and it is set to be an absolute corker. Yeah, I think this is going to be a really good one. Uh, speaking to the guys out there, atmosphere, uh, they they all seem really up for it, don't they? Uh, Amelie Ackett's really excited to be on that inside row, and I do like that she didn't hold back on saying how important the inside row is, but uh, I'd say uh, Ricardo Tabut, Chase Piscalia uh, are going to try and put that right uh, and get a good start from uh, the outside, but uh, look, this is not uh, a full-on sprint there. They've got a few more laps than they did uh, in the heats, and I think that could come into a Effect. So uh, USA push, pushing for a 1-2-3-4. It is close in the Nations Cup as well, hearing just a, a matter of 12 points between the top three nations. So plenty at stake here. Shan Canave is going to be the one uh, who leads us as we get ready to go for the T4 Junior Final, Simon. And here we go. Everybody getting into their tram lines. We look to the lights and we wait to go racing. And we go racing now. And it's a good start from the front row. Shan Canivet gets away well. Ricardo Tabut is also there alongside Amli Ackett, however, gets up into second place. Ricardo Tabut falling down the order. Chase Buscalia inherits third position with uh, Ricardo Tabut being shuffled out down into, I believe that's position number four, and it is. And then we have uh, Eric Cuesto there in position number five, immediately saying, come on, let's work together and chase those in front. Yeah, we had a spinner, uh, unfortunately, through the first sector. Uh, it looked, I think, that Matthias Glover had a problem, but someone spinning as well. Simon. Yes, and there's, there's action there at turn number four oh, yeah, on the outside. The that is the 2-2-1 two, two, machine. Let's take a look that's at Elias who that is. Fornes, yeah. Elias Fornes and the 258, also of Lachlan Shearsmith, the Australian, making his first T4 Nations Cup appearance. Now, Lachlan Shearsmith has been able to get going, but Elias Fornes, unfortunately, not able to take part any further. And Fornes' Nations Cup final is over at only turn four. What a terrible shame for the Spaniard. As we see the leaders coming across, the line it is still Shan Canive from Chase Buscalia and uh, then Amelie Ackett's in third position and I say that Im it immediately changes with Chase Buscalia there taking the lead Amelie Ackett's taking second but with serious fighting going on down behind yeah very very close there it, Amelie Ackett's has got through into second place Chase Buscalia though has got away out front they've got to be very careful here because Chase Buscalia is away and clear he looks over his shoulder he has got a hell of a gap now to all of these three drivers and the remaining pack behind them they have to work together now and decide who's going to do the leading who's going to do the pushing it looks like Amelie Ackett will take the role in the lead of this train and drive it forward as they come on to the back straight now we go six and a half tenths is the gap time for Amelie Ackett to try and chase it down with the help of Eric Cuesto as they come through turn nine down to the chicane at turn ten look how quickly that gap just came down six and and a half tense disappears. Chase Pascalia will look over his shoulder and say, where on earth is that gone? I think we're going to have a new leader possibly down at turn one. If Amelie Akic wants to be there, she decides to push Chase Pascalia along. And all of a sudden, we are back for five for the lead in this T4 Junior final. Chase Pascalia leading from Akic, Cuesto, Canive are pole sitter, and a change for second. There goes Cuesto down the inside of Amelie Akic. She holds on to third place. Place. P4 now goes the way of Ricardo Tabut. He gets down the inside of Canave. Canave having a really poor start to this race. He's dropped down to P5. Gassio Lee is sixth, and it's Martin Wright. Uh, Vita is sixth, and truly Adams has dropped down to P9. Helder is P10. And then Aaron Coogan, who we saw fighting for potentially a podium there in the super heat. He's all the way down in position number 11, so he's going to be, never mind, he's up to P10 now. He's overtaken Taman Vitter, the flying Dutchman who we saw in the heat, struggling for pace, it seems, in this final. But that could all change. Plenty of laps left remaining. Plenty of time to recover a good result. And as we see the lead four going down, Linus turn. Look at Ackett's going up the inside of Eric Cuesto, seizing the position, but Ricardo Tabut says, thank you very much. That second place is mine. 
Great driving from Ricardo to put to get through and ahead. Uh, Amelie Akits, it was a good ambitious pass for her, but uh, just a little bit too wide in the process and she's going to remain in third place. Nevertheless, she's got Eric Cuesto out the way. She now just has to deal with Ricardo to boot, who started on the outside of the front row. Here we go down towards turn number seven. Is Amelie Akits going to make a move? No, she is going to push Ricardo to boot along into that corner. I tell you what, the top 12, top 15, all together in one single line. You can see the gap to the leaders on the left-hand side of screen. There is four seconds only between the top 15 drivers in this T4 Junior Final. It is very, very close out there. Chase Pascalia leads us into the chicane for the fourth time. He takes us on to the start finish straight. Across the line we go. Are we going to see any changes in behind? Not quite. Shan Canivet has got to be careful. He's got Gassio lead now tucked right in behind him then it's Martin Wright he could be one to watch he was always moving forward in the heat and he's getting after Gassio Lee so keep your eyes on Martin Wright and keep an eye on Trilly Adams as well he is the quickest driver on the circuit down in P8 and Trulli Adams, a disappointing start to the race, having fell down three positions. He fell down to P9 initially, now rescued up to P10, setting the fastest lap. He could be one to watch, as I'm seeing, I believe that's Tara Keneally making up a position there on uh, Antonio Martinez. As we see the leaders coming through turn number eight and onto the back straight. This is where we see the most significant headwind we can look at the flags on the opposite side of the track. This is why bump drafting is so efficient along that final, that last uh, back section of the track. Still no action, though, into the final chicane. And as we come across the line, it is still Chase Viscalia who leads. And then comes Ricardo Tabut, Amelie Akits, and Eric Cuesto. And no action into turn one, which you have to say, Chris, makes a change in the T4 Junior final. But it is still Chase Viscalia who leads. Yeah, it's uh, certainly a little bit calmer through there than it has been on other laps, but not into turn four. There comes a move from Cuesto down the inside of Akits, who's getting barged wide, and that's going to see Shan Canave going through as well into P4. This now a jump in the seat of encouragement from Shan Canave as he feels maybe this is his time to get back through into the lead. And going into the lead is Ricardo Tabut goes down the inside of Chase Pascalia with that. Trying to go into his second place was uh, Eric Cuesto there. So out now of turn eight, it is going to be Tabut leading us down the back straight as we head down towards turn number nine. We've got a spinner further back, unfortunately. I think that might be Antonio Martinez the local driver who has spent oh in contact there the 282 running wide of Ricardo to put Chase Pascalia emerges in the lead and a spin unfortunately Shan Canave the pole sitter to respond Amelie Akits going slow Martin Wright also going slow as well we have a bent sprocket a bent axle sorry there for 242 which is Brian Wilson he is out of the race he will go no further what a shame four drivers all caught out in that incident and the final chicane strikes once again at this circuit and that is so unfortunate seeing our pole man Shan Canive getting involved in that collision completely destroying the front of his cart he is still going but I wouldn't be at all surprised if we see a technical flag as Brian Wilson with his head in his hands driving to the pit exit and absolutely distraught at the fact that he's missed out on a strong result in this T4 junior final as we look down the order, it is Chase Pascalia who, among all of the carnage, has pulled out an almost one second gap. And then truly Adams, as we see Brian Wilson there, almost inconsolable, having uh, sustained so much damage, a bent axle there in that collision. As we see, truly Adams has now inherited second position. And this could be great news for the young American with an American 1-2 and Ricardo Tabuk getting involved with Daniel Hartley through turn one and through turn two. Down into the chicane of three, it is still Ricardo Tabuk who leads Daniel Hartley. Aaron Coogan as well, making his way up to P5 and look at that fantastic move there by Daniel Hartley taking third position and now the hunt begins to go after the two Americans in front and suddenly Truly Adams is seeing the dollar signs in front of him as he sees the opportunity only six tenths of a second up the road to defend his T4 Nations Cup title. 
Yeah, Daniel Hartley there taking advantage of a slight mistake from Ricardo to boot, who ran wide out of turn three there. Delayed in his exit, Daniel Hartley helped himself to a third place. Uh, he is now leading this train. We haven't seen much of him. That's because he started down in P12. He's now up to P3. So nine places gained for him in this race. Nico Frank has come up 10 places in this race to P6. Uh, we're also seeing big charges through from Tara uh, Cunnelly, uh, who's come up 14 places to 13th. Uh, likewise, uh, from Daniels Berzins, who's come up 14 places as well to 15th. So great drives throughout the field there. Some drivers really charging through the order and charging up to the lead is truly Adams. Uh, he did sit about one second back from Chase Pascalia, but he's chased that gap down now uh, to less than four tenths of a second. And if Daniel Hartley and Ricardo Tabuk can work together, they could make this one epic battle for the lead once again and I think that's what they will be getting instructions to do from the sidelines. Here they come onto the back straight. Trilly Adams now with his countryman Chase Piscalia looks over his shoulder, points forward to Trilly Adams as they come in towards turn number nine and down into the chicane we go. We are going to be going on to lap number 10 so three to go now as they come up to the line. And it is an American one too but Daniel Hartley is pulling in that gap slightly. It is down to half a second now as we see moves happening into turn one. That looks to be Aaron Coogan battling away with uh, Eric Cuesto, perhaps uh, Jorn Helder in there. Nico Franca seems to be involved and it is Aaron Coogan who has come out on top in that battle. No change of the lead so far. It is still Chase Pascalia, then Truly Adams, then Daniel Hartley, then Ricardo to put Hartley getting a little bit out of shape there on the exit of turn number four. And uh, that shouldn't cost him too much time as they head down. He's still going two by two, two by two, two by two. It's like Noah's Ark, but in T4 juniors. So probably a lot more exciting, dare I say it. And on lap nine of 12, we look to the leaders. The wind arguably stronger than it has ever been at all today. And so this is the moment where slipstream becomes so important along that back straight. That is why everyone is sorting themselves out into groups of two. It is just so much more beneficial to have that bump draft, to have that push. And that gap that I was saying Daniel Hartley was closing has now opened back up to 0.8 of a second. As we see a battle there, that looks to be Jorn Helder getting past. I'm not entirely sure who that is. It's Aaron Coogan who's leading the battle. I believe it's Nico Franca and Jorn Helder battling. And it is Jorn Helder who has taken seventh place away from the German racer who is here at his second ever Nations Cup and doing mightily well for himself holding his own in the top 10 and you have to say Germany with a strong contingent this year as up the inside looks Truly Adams and he takes Chase Buscalia at turn 7 on lap number 10 but Buscalia isn't done yet he retakes the position he says oh sorry about the contact mate Truly Adams says what are you doing man come on let's work together and suddenly here comes Hartley up the inside into turn number 9 is he going to be able to take the lead no but he does snatch second position away from Chase Buscalia and Ricardo Tabut may get involved as well Chase Buscalia retakes Second place, Daniel Hartley cuts the chicane. This is absolutely incredible racing, Chris. On the last lap now we go. Who's it going to be? Trilly Adams leaves the space on the inside, but just closes the door in time before Ch Chase Piscalia can get down the inside. Ricardo Tabut is sat there in third place. Daniel Hartley, having skipped over the chicane, is now down to P4. Here we go in towards turn number four for the final time in this T4 Nations Cup final. There goes Daniel Hartley down into third place. Fantastic overtake from the British driver to get into P3. Now he is staring at a possible win. He's on to the podium. Who's going to be on the top step of it, though? Trilly Adams versus Chase Piscalia. Is it going to be back-to-back -back victories for Trilly Adams? He started fifth last year and won. He started fifth this year. Is he going to win? We're side-by-side side for third. Meanwhile, Ricardo Tabuk gets by Daniel Hartley. Drag race down towards turn number 
number nine for the final time. It's Trilly Adams leading on the brakes for the final time this weekend. Can he hang on? Trilly Adams out the final corner. He has done it again. Trilly Adams is the winner of the Tillotson T4 Junior Nations Cup final. Back-to-back -back wins. Fifth to Thirst in 2022. He repeats that process again in 2023. Trilly Adams retains the title once again. What a fantastic performance. Just, just holds off Chase Pascalia. And Ricardo Tabut takes the last step on the podium. Coogan takes fourth place ahead of Cuesto in fifth. And Hartley finishes in P6. What a race that was. Some hard charges in the likes of Hartley. Frank as well, along with Berzins. Uh, Keneally likewise, uh, and also uh, Daniel Brunecki as well. William Omar was another. But uh, a fantastic race out front. Another good, respectable race between all of our leaders. But the winner is that man you see there, Truly Adams. And Truly Adams becomes the first man in Nations Cup history to defend his title successfully. It is a 1-2 for the USA, and that is going to be fantastic for their Nations Cup points. Truly Adams takes the spoils in the T4 Junior Final in front of Chase Biscaglia and Ricardo Tabut in P3. Aaron Coogan only just missed out on the podium, but a fantastic recovery drive by the Irishman to finish in fourth in front of Eric Cuesto and Daniel Hartley in fifth and sixth. Then came Nico Franca, Jorn Helder, Chase Gassiot Lee, Keith Burke rounds out the top 10 with Martin Wright falling down the order in the latter stages of the race to finish in P11. Taman Bitter with a disappointing result down in 12th, having shown strong pace all weekend. Then came Josh Allen and Daniels Petris Bazins. Then came Tara Keneally up 12 positions and only bested by Bazins, who gained 15 to finish in 14th place. 16th place was occupied by Phil Becker and 17th by Daniel Brunetsky. Mark Fleming finished in 18th in front of Matteo Richter and Jakob Josef Havel. William Omar finished in 21st position in front of Richard Saker and Matthias Glover in 23rd. Joey Carney finished in 24th position in front of Pre Trevino and Edward Clark. Brooke Loretti finished in 27th in front of Jesus Asuncion and Anastasia Jurassis, who we got the opportunity to talk with earlier, finished in 29th place. Lachlan Shearsmith, after being involved in an incident, finished in 30th in front of Mika Sprentz and then Amelie Ackitz in, in 32nd position. A very, very disappointing day for Amelie Ackitz, having shown the pace to be on the podium all weekend and could easily have been the first ever female to take a Nations Cup podium, a disappointing day finishing down in 32nd. And then our non-finishers were Brian Wilson with that bent axe, and then we had Shan Canivet, our pole sitter. Huge drama for the Frenchman, not making the finish, having started on pole and been involved in that incident on the start-finish straight. Then Antonio Martinez and Elias Fornes, two Spaniards, failing to finish the T4 Junior Final here at their home race. A very disappointing day for our non-finishers. But a, what an exciting battle that was, right up at the front with Truly Adams becoming the Nations Cup champion for the Junior T4 Series for the second year running. And that is a huge, huge achievement. Having had the pace to compete for podiums all weekend, very few people thought that we would see him successfully retain his title. But alas, he has pulled through taken advantage of incidents in front of him, capitalized when he needed to, and made some sublime passes. So full credit goes to Truly Adams, and congratulations to him and all of the Adams family, many of whom are here this weekend. I know his father will be very, very happy with that performance indeed, as will all of his relatives and friends watching back home in America. What a final that was. Next up will be the T4 Senior Final, and that is set to be the Creme de la Creme, only followed by the T4 Senior 165s, and then we will have our podium presentation. So do stick around for each of these. Here is the track that is hosting this fantastic competition. It is the International Cartodromo Lucas Guerrero here in Spain, in sunny Spain, with an air temperature of 28 degrees Celsius. Very, very warm. The stakes are high, the temperatures are higher, 
and hydration and shade are the name of the game when it comes to preparation for this final. Getting in the mind space and also getting in the shade is absolutely crucial. Drivers racing for further than they have raced the entire weekend between 12 lap heats, or excuse me, 12 lap final for the minis and juniors and then for the seniors it will be 14 laps of extremely tactical battling to decide who will come out on top. As uh, we see Daniel Hartley is uh, apparently the winner of the T4 Juniors, but uh, that is not the case. It is uh, it is truly Adams who has taken the spoils there, so apologies for, uh, for that graphic. We get ready for the T4 Seniors, the top 36 ranked drivers, and I can tell you their names now while we are waiting for um, Chris to make it down to the grid and for everyone to be given the instruction to head out. Let's take a look at the senior grid. So, on pole position, we will have Noah Rossa, who we heard from earlier on today. Fantastic performance all weekend. And then his countryman, Colin Warren, in second place. Can we expect, this is the important question, can we expect the two of them to work together to achieve a 1-2 for the United States, potentially the second 1-2 in a T4 final this weekend, having just witnessed Truly Adams and Chase Biscalia getting into a 1-2 finish and uh, only broken by, uh, by bad luck and uh, unfortunately weren't able to make it a 1-2-3, which almost in, a, in and of itself would have sealed the deal for the US winning the T4 Nations Cup currently held by the UK but it wouldn't be a bold it wouldn't be a bold prediction to say that the US are in pole position to take the Nations Cup home with them could it be Noah Rossa who wins the T4 senior final could it be Colin Warren or could it be Tyler McIntyre he's starting in fourth alongside Tim Van Ellersbeek who also could take home the title all of these guys are super super quick we've also got Andre Dubai Dubaia and uh, Cameron Reed also in there starting uh, sixth and fifth respectively. And then taking a look a bit further down the order, we've got Hannah Fridberg from South Africa. We've got uh, Matt Billerman. We've got Bram Osavada, who's shown some strong pace starting in 23rd. He'll be looking to make up some positions. Rudy Schussler, very quick South African driver as well. He'll be starting in 19th in front of uh, Riccardo Gasparini, the Italian. Now we haven't seen too much from Riccardo Gasparini this weekend. He'll be looking to make an impression in this, the final race that he has this weekend. Wesley Bowden also starting in seventh. He's one to watch, as is Jack Dillon starting directly behind him in ninth. They have both showed pace to get up onto the podium, and if there are any incidents in front of them that they can capitalize on, I wouldn't rule them out of a podium position. As we see, all of the T4 drivers, you now a significant lack of umbrellas down in the T4 paddock as we get a wave there from one of our competitors. I'm not entirely sure who that is exactly. It looks like Anastasia Jurassic's helmet, but I can't be completely sure if that is the case. But nevertheless, all the T4 seniors, the top 36 ranked T4 seniors, that is, all in the pre grid area, waiting for the opportunity to go out on the track and take a look down at the run into turn one they will embark on very shortly indeed. Currently 29 minutes past the hour almost here in Valencia. We do hope you're all enjoying the live stream if you are following on the live stream or if you're at the track we do hope you are enjoying the racing action that we are able to put together for you. It is fantastic to see so many people lining the edge of the track and uh, on the balcony next to me along the pit wall and uh, also along the stand near the pit entry. It is fantastic to see so many people out there, so we do hope you are enjoying yourself. Now, the gate opening time for the T4 seniors is 15.50, which means to say that uh, we are slightly late, but we shan't worry too much about that. And uh, I believe that uh, I have a message to receive, or are you here to do an interview? Fantastic stuff. We have here we have here Evelyn, who is one of our many fantastic staff here at Tillotson Racing, manning the uh, 
Tillotson Tents for the weekend and doing crucial behind the scenes work. Evelyn, what do you have to say to us ahead of this T4 Senior Final? Well, thanks for having me, Simon. Um, it has been honestly such a great weekend. Uh, thanks everyone for coming out. So this is my first time at the T4 Nations Cup, actually. It's been such a great experience. So I work on the marketing team for Tillotson and we've been working with Tillotson for forever pretty much and uh, it's just really nice you know to see it all in person all come together all the excitement um, you know all the different teams everyone's done such a great job I have to give it out to the media team as well really makes my my life easy as a marketing person all the great footage that they're able to get and um, the behind the scenes stuff so if you guys I've heard you say it but if you haven't already check out the, the social media we've got a lot of cool behind the scenes footage a lot of different drivers on there if you see yourself um, feel free to tag us on it in anything, but yeah, it's been, it's been great. How's it been for you? Well, I mean, I have to say it was fantastic seeing uh, myself on the Tillerson social medias yesterday, myself and Chris up here, as uh, Liza, who runs our uh, social media accounts, came in and was filming my heavily protected notes that, uh, that I hadn't written out yet, and uh, that was fantastic to see. But a lot of effort does go in to the, uh, the Tillerson Racing social medias and the marketing side of things. Of course, with an event like this, marketing is an absolutely crucial aspect. How much credit can you take as someone who works in the marketing for the Nations Cup for the record grids that we've seen? Uh, I don't know, 5% credit, I would say. Um, I help get the word out, you know, about all the awesome events, try to re reach all the people that we think would be interested and want to come uh, attend the event or race in the event. So uh, I do my best to try and get out there, but, you know, just everyone, the organic stuff of people following the pages and sharing it with their friends and, and all that stuff really, really helps. So uh, we always appreciate that. But, uh, yeah, I do, I do, you know, the advertising and all that good stuff, but the, the content and the, the drivers are really what fuels it all, so. Fantastic. Well, I take 6% credit, so uh, there you go. Now, I do believe that Chris is ready to go down on the grid. Chris, what do you have to tell us ahead of this fantastic T4 Senior Final? Well, I tell you, we have some drivers uh, coming out. I can tell you the red flag incident we had earlier uh, got reports. Driver is all okay. No uh, injuries to the driver, so that is very good news. Uh, what we can say, though, is that we are ready to go for the T4 Senior Vinyl. Very good T4 Mini Final, even though it ended under a red flag. Driver okay, though. T4 Junior Final, very, very dramatic, very good. Uh, however, here come now the T4 Seniors, so everyone around the circuit, let's give some support to our T4 Senior Nations Cup finalists as they head out onto the circuit. Guys on the roof, help me out here. We can do better than that. Let's give them a round of applause, please, as they come down. Starting on pole position, heading down. He joined us uh, in the commentary box earlier. Noah Rossa heading down uh, did very well at that as well. Team USA doing a, a really good job uh, so far this weekend. It's going to be uh, an awesome battle as they make their way down. Uh, do you want to put the cart down first or do you want to speak to me first? Uh, we'll put, we'll put, put the cart down first, why not? Uh, great to have him in earlier speaking about Colin Warren uh, and about Tyler McIntyre uh, as well. So we'll have a, a little chat to uh, Noah. Good to see you again. See you. Yeah, this time now on, on the circuit. Uh, starting on pole, uh, we spoke a little bit about this earlier. You got uh, Colin uh, alongside you and you talked us through a lap earlier as well, which was really fantastic. Now you get to go around <laughs> leading a T4 Nations Cup final. How are you feeling? I'm feeling great. Uh, not really much to say. I've just been working as hard as I can, given what Chris Bill me just to the full potential, just giving it everything. I know we've had a bit of a change in the schedule, yeah. so a little bit more time uh, with some clear-ups going on. Yeah. When that happens as a driver, how do you keep the focus uh, and stay calm? I just I don't set expectations um, or goals. I just I just think in my head. Uh, I don't try to predict anything. Just try to keep my uh, my confidence up. Don't doubt myself, and just keep keep my head together. Has Team USA been chatting before this race? We've got plenty of you up here. Not much. I think everybody's just going to race their own race. Uh, we wish each other, of course, the best of luck, but um, best man win. Nations Cup has is, is, is been worked for. Now, now it's, as you said, best 
driver wins and Colin Warren will be hoping uh, that goes to him. Uh, nice to be, I'm going to turn you around this way, uh, as uh, that's what I'll be instructed to do if I don't. Uh, front row, really yeah. good to, to see you up here. Uh, it's been a fa I won't ask you how your weekend's been because it's, it's clearly been going absolutely fantastic. It's been going pretty good. Um, I'm glad to be starting at least in the front row. I mean, I wish I would have been on the inside lane, but you know, can't complain too much. Um, yeah, just keep things clean, hopefully. Yeah, oh yeah, obviously not the not easiest starting on the outside, but given what we saw in the junior race, didn't go too bad. So I guess uh, you know, as long as you're at the front, you can you can tuck in and and then get going from there. Yeah, I mean, good thing I've start I've started on the outside every single heat race so far, super heat. So. Actually, did I start on the outside? I don't know, it's super heat, but You've had plenty of time I've to learn, plenty basically. Of time out here. I have experience on the outside, so it should be, should be good. Good stuff. Well, best of luck for it, uh, and we wish you all the very best. Uh, and I think we'll have time for one or two more interviews. We'll go to Tim Van rig next. Uh, we'll speak to our front two rows. Uh, really good to see you up here. Uh, really good start to a uh, really good weekend so far. Uh, looking for a good start now? Yes. Yeah, uh, and, and tell us, approach, we got, uh, of course, lots of American drivers around, but uh, flying the Dutch flag up here, you, you must be proud. Yes, I'm very proud. And best of luck for, for the race. Uh, hard track to, to race around this, would you say? It's going to be a long race, isn't it? Uh, very tactical. Yes. Very tactical, indeed. <laughs> right, uh, I don't know how far we can get down, but we have some history being made uh, today. Can, can we get far down? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk. I'm going to walk anyway. Uh, we have uh, a driver from Nigeria uh, who has become the first driver from West Africa to qualify in the final uh, for an international race. I don't know how far down I can get. I'm going to keep going until I'm told otherwise. Uh, I'm sure I'll be. Here he is. Uh, there he is, Philip Garner. Um, congratulations. Uh, first driver ever from West Africa to qualify for uh, an international final in, in the A final. Uh, how does that make you feel? Uh, it makes you must be proud uh, of what you're doing for your country. I know you, you do the motorsport games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the motorsport games was also a big achievement for me. Uh, one of my proudest and of course this making the final on merit, you know, it's it's probably the biggest of my career so far. Congratulations. Well done. Well done. Uh, we're going to leave it there. A uh, bit of history for you on Nations Cup. We're going to be told to clear the grid, I think, very, very shortly. Uh, but this gives you a bit of flavour. Final words of encouragement going in for the drivers now. Uh, Danny uh, Krischer here. I don't know where the camera is. Uh, here. Uh, he won our, our kart sim event, so he's going to Silverstone. Congratulations on kart sim, well done. Uh, he gets to go to Silverstone for half a day, so thank you to kart sim for that. He was fastest around Valencia. Anyway, let's keep up to commentary with Simon. Well, here we go then, folks, for the T4 Senior Final. It all comes down to this for each of our competitors. It is going to be Noah Rosser who leads us down towards the lights in front of Colin Warren. Two Americans uh, taking the front row of the grid in front of Tim Van Ellersweg, the Dutch racer, and Tyler McIntyre, who will be starting in fourth and I'm delighted to say that I'm joined by the Tillotson president Charles Demergin up in the commentary box Charles the event is bigger the event is better than last year what do you make of it going into this T4 senior final I can't wait I had to come up to the booth to see it from the starting grid here you guys have the best view in the house as you should but this is the this is the place to watch the race Absolutely. I mean, Charles has figured out how to uh, operate the blind, which is more than we were able to figure out over the last two days. As, uh, I, brought you a, I brought you a fan up here, too, and, you didn't, and, and we couldn't get it running. No, apparently there's no electricity in the socket, so I was saying we need to get a new hamster in the wheel. Um, but nevertheless, we do have 
Only 24 more laps of racing to go this weekend. And then the T4 Nations Cup will be all but over. Apart from the podium presentations, which will be coming up at 5 o'clock local time. So make sure to tune in for that to see all of our T4 Nations Cup champions being crowned as well as the winning nation of said T4 Nations Cup. All of the drivers begin to move away, all 36 drivers on the grid. The biggest T4 senior grid we've seen all weekend. All 36 grid spots being taken up as we see Noah Rossa leading us down into turn one in front of Colin Warren and Tim Van Ellersweg. Tyler McIntyre will start in position number four in front of Cameron Reed and Andrea Debaya in front of Wesley Bowden and Owen Roberts. Then comes Jack Dillon and Danny Krish in front of Christopher Sauna and Nicholas Stanev. Santiago Hamina comes next in front of Jose Gomez and Federico Peters in front of Jason Bradbury, James Tracy, Jose Itabide, Rudy Schussler, Ricardo Gasparini, and John Nuttall. Then comes Philip Ganna, the only Nigerian ever to take part in a T4 Nations Cup event. Then comes Bram Osavada and Yuri Bechtold in front of James Andrus III, Calvin Pratt, Omar Perez, Matt Villeman, Colm Munnerly, Leo Geisler, and then Mauro Camacho Balboa from Mexico. Davis Zalmans lines up next from Latvia in front of Malk West, Václav Strakati, Hanna Fridberg, and Marco Aurelio lines up in the final position on the grid ahead of this T4 senior final. Chris, we've seen two finals already. The senior final in recent years has been the biggest grid in the competition. And then this year, all of the grids, it seems, have been completely sold out. So we can no longer have that stance as there appears to be a piece of debris yeah. on the track. Chris, yeah. you have more. Yeah, we might have a delay start. Maybe not, but uh, we'll go as if we're going to go. To the left of screen will be Noah Rossa. To the right will be Colin Warren. They're going to be sent round once more because we had debris on the circuit. Now, I believe that's a neck brace so that's uh, come off one of the drivers. Uh, so uh, not too sure how that's happened exactly, but uh, uh, someone there uh, has... Uh, lost one. You're not required to wear one, but uh, I think one of the drivers uh, may have lost one as they're going around. Either that or something else, but that's what it looks like from uh, this distance. So if a driver has lost that, they will be able to uh, continue. Uh, the grid will file round. So good to speak to some of the drivers on the grid. Noah seeming very confident, uh, even with a bit of a delayed start. Uh, Colin Warren. Uh, although on the outside uh, seems confident he could get across uh, uh, Tim Van Ellisweg, well, I think just very focused on the race. Uh, a man of a few words, but when he's on the track, has quite a lot to say for himself. And it was good to go and speak to Philip Garner as well, making history today. The first driver from West Afri Africa to become uh, a driver to qualify in an A final at an international karting race. Okay, enough talk now. It's time to get down to business as they make their way down to the final final chicane the t4 senior final for 2023 is about to get underway we've had the heats we've had the super heats it's now time to go racing for the finals to the left of screen will be noah rossa to the right will be colin warren and we are go for the t4 senior final as they make their way down to the first two corners here at valencia noah rossa leads us through turn number two for the first time tim van ellisvig has gone with him there in second place and a change for second an attempted change for second tim van ellisvig's had to go over the chicane Kane at turn three. McIntyre in trying to go to second has now fallen to fourth place there. So a change for third in the early stages and pointing forward was one of the drivers. I think that was Colin Warren who's managed to slot into third. In behind that looks to be Cameron Reed in fifth as they head now up through turn seven out of turn number eight. This one of the most crucial corners on the circuit. Tim Van Ellisweg has made a great start to this race. Can 
Danny now go and take the lead from Noah Rossa. Drivers don't tend to show their hand too early on. He's going to stay slot in behind Noah Rossa as we come in towards that chicane. Wait for the curve on the left-hand side, as Noah Rossa told us earlier when he was commentating with us. Then hit the brakes, then go into the chicane, then come across the line and head down. He completes the first lap in the lead, so a perfect start to the race for the American. He leads the T4 senior final. And you have to say for Colin Warren, that is a respectable start. Starting on the outside in the final, it's very easy to lose many positions, but still in a very competitive position there, sitting in third with Tim Van Ellersweg just in front of him. The very, very quick Dutchman there in that distinctive green helmet chasing down Colin Warren. And then we have Tyler McIntyre just behind Warren. So it is a US 1, 3 and 4 which could be very, very important. In fact, our US 1, 3, 4, and 5, which could be very important indeed for the Nations Cup standings. And I believe that it's the UK that is currently in first place in the Nations Cup standings. Having won it last year, they are looking to retain it, but the US giving a strong run for their money, and they need to do well in this race. So many US drivers on this grid compared to the other age categories very, very important that the US gains a strong result here as we come across the line. Still Noah Rossa from Tim Van Ellersweg and Colin Warren and Tyler McIntyre, Cameron Reed, Andrea Debaya, and then Wesley Bowden, who we had the pleasure of talking to yesterday, says it's a fantastic track that we're racing around, and that much is evidenced by the racing that we have seen all of today and all of yesterday. As there's moves being made, that looks to be... I'm not entirely sure that might be... It's on the fringes of the top 10. That is the best that I can say at the minute. Might be Christopher Sauna who's getting involved in that. Or perhaps Nicholas Stanev. But I cannot be sure, I'm afraid, folks. As they round their way onto the back straight. Strong winds now, having picked up from this morning when it was completely still. And that will be reducing the air temperature down ever so slightly, which will be a blessing for these drivers. As we're getting a nice breeze into the commentary box as well. That makes a... A nice change, having spent all of yesterday basically sitting in a sauna as they come through the final corner. Still, Tim Van Ellersweg is glued to the back of Rossa in front of him. Less than a tenth of a second is the gap, but then seven tenths to Colin Warren behind, and then Tyler McIntyre behind, behind him. No moves as of yet. Still just trying to put in the best lap times possible as Tim Van Ellersweg takes the fastest lap of the race, a 106 flat. That is a very competitive lap time. And the first man to come within distance of breaching the 105s on lap three of this 14-lap affair around the Cartodromo Valencia is set to get an awful lot busier in the next number of laps as we see Tim Van Ellersweg sussing out Noah Rossa in front, trying to find out where he's weak. I'll give you a clue. It's not in many areas. Noah Rossa takes us down towards the final corner. Here he comes then, in towards the chicane. It's going to stay like this, I imagine, for a few laps now towards the end of the race. But what about Colin Warren in third place? Can he close the gap down? He's got behind him McIntyre in P4 as we head down towards turn number one. It was Rossa himself that told us uh, it's all down to that final lap. You just follow each other around, wait for the final lap, and that's when you then attack Colin Colin Warren is there in third place. The gap between him and the drivers ahead is six and a half tenths of a second. Last time around, he matched the guys ahead. Uh, he was only two hundredths of a second slower than them, despite the fact they were working together. So Colin Warren is displaying very good pace, despite the fact he will only be receiving an ever so slight toe from them. McIntyre is a little bit slow, it, uh, is also doing 106.1, so he's uh, about two tenths a lap slower than the three ahead of him. So we'll be trying to find some pace from somewhere. Then comes the battle for fifth. That's being led by Andre Debaya. Cameron Reeve is now in sixth place. Owen Roberts in seventh. Then Wesley Bowden. Then Nicholas Stanif. Frederico Peters has been on the move all weekend. He is now P5. Bram Oziwad has been charging up the order today. Here comes the move. This is Frederico Peters. Gets down the inside. I think that might be Owen Roberts, actually. Gets down the inside of Cameron Reed, who's having a little bit of a, a tough 
day uh, out there so far. Had a really good start to the Nations Cup. Hasn't worked out so far today. She's running in seventh. Still a long way to go in this race. Owen Roberts, that is, up now into P6. Frederico Peters is up six places. Bram Ozewad is up eight places. Calvin Pratt is up nine places as well. So some heavy charges up and down the order. Out front, Noah Rosser is our leader. Tim Van Ellisweg just in behind, but it's going to stay like this, I imagine, until we get to those final two laps. So stay with us in terms of the lead battle. It's one that they are going to wait for the end for. And there you can see a thumbs up coming from Owen Roberts. That's because he's having assistance now from Cameron Reed as they try and charge off the Andre Dubaya, but this is all Tim Van Ellisweg trying to reduce the amount of people he has to fight for the win for. He wants it to be a two-way scrap between him and Noe Rossa, and so far he's doing a good job in trying to make that happen. They have a gap of one second to the rest of the field. They do, and some honourable mentions. It has to be said, Calvin Pratt in 17th position, having climbed nine positions from where he started. That is very, very competitive. Bram Osservada, the Dutch racer as well, climbing eight positions from where he started. So a fantastic job from all of them. Unfortunately, other drivers falling down the order, such as uh, James Andrus, the third, falling down eight positions. Omar Perez down at the back, having lost nine positions. So a very unfortunate start to proceedings there for the Mexican driver. As we take a look at this battle with... Uh, trying to see what number it is it's the 314 it is Owen Roberts who is being pursued by Cameron Reed and Nicholas Stanev who is going to be licking his lips and thinking I can get something out of this and with eight laps remaining it is going to come right down to the flag I'm predicting with this battle as they all come across the line very few moves happening at this stage of the race very much a tactical and strategic race going on at the minute 14 lap affair longer than anything that these guys have raced uh, so far this weekend, racing longer, racing harder, and all while quite fatigued, it has to be said. After two days of hard racing in intense heat, it is going to be hydration that is the name of the game. And those drivers who have prepared thoroughly for the final, it's quite clear to see who they are. Noah Rossa, Tim Van Ellisweg, Colin Warren, Tyler McIntyre as well, and then Andrea De Bayer, who has been up there all weekend. He wasn't here last year. He was at the Nations Cup in 2021 and was a very, very strong performer there. I believe he scored a podium, or perhaps he just missed out. But in any case, he is looking in contention for another one to bring another trophy back home to Ireland with him and potentially Ireland's best option for another trophy in this year's Nations Cup after Ben McLaughlin took third place in the mini-final. Here's a move up the inside. That is the 338 of Tyler McIntyre being passed by Andrea De Bayer, who we were just talking about. De Bayer says, let's go get Colin Warren in front and let's start trying to move forwards towards the podium. And that's bad news for America in the T4 Nations Cup standings with Tyler McIntyre losing a position and the US therefore losing points to Ireland in the standings, which isn't good news, but plenty of laps for this to be drawn back. Another six laps of this circuit another roughly uh, I'm trying to do the maths now I can't think of how many kilometers that would be Chris 1.5 kilometer lap six laps remaining someone in uh, on the live stream or at the circuit can do the maths for us but it is still Noah Rossa who leads Tim Van Ellersveik who are pushing each other and extending their gap out to almost two seconds now so uh, a strong job being done by our front two uh, and Charles, we have you uh, up here. Uh, we, we've got a, uh, we, we, we've got a battle. <laughs> we've got a battle for the lead. That, let's be honest, is going to come down to the last lap. Yes. But want to get your overall view on what we've seen in the seniors as we've got two five two coming across the line slowly there. Uh, sorry, three five three, three five two as well. So, bit of a some sort of coming together. But uh, the overall, uh, yeah, we had uh, three five two and three five three. Uh, running into problems, both got going, uh, but the two seniors, this is becoming 
uh, a two-way fight and being set up for what is going to be some duel at the end. And it is it is important, as Simon said. I mean, as the even if you don't win the race, the the points for to go for the Nations Cup are critical here, particularly for the U.S. because they don't have as many drivers in the other categories. So this is where they need to. This is where they've been scoring all their points and is what has put them in second place right now. Uh, and Ireland is not far behind either. They're 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 in the running also. So the more the Irish teams push, they can be a disruptor. They and the and the Netherlands team can be a big disruptor if they take that first position over. Uh, and when we're, they're set up out there in the paddock within the separate nations, I imagine as the seniors are going out and as the finals go on, more and more encouragement is being given to each of the drivers in the classes going, we only need a few more points. Uh, you know, that one of the things we need to do next year for this event is to have a better tally for people to see yeah. how the point totals yeah, are coming cool. so they can do it. Now, I, from what I understand, a lot of people are keeping their own little spreadsheets. Right, okay. Um, and you really can't tell what goes on until the super heats are over. But, uh, but next year, I think we're going to plan to have a little bit better uh, uh, point system where you can every point counts or every race counts and you're right. watching things in real time. Yeah, a bit, uh, almost a big board up there yeah, in, the, exactly. in the tents would be really cool. And when the senior 165s go out, they'll be under a lot of pressure to, <laughs> to win from the minis and the juniors. It is true. It is true. Uh, great stuff. And uh, I tell you what, get one good thing about these guys here, even if they were to pick up some k kind of a penalty, they would not be dropping back very far. They're putting in a really good performance here. They are away, got a five-second gap to P6 and down. This is great stuff uh, from Noah Rossa and Tim Van Ellis big on map number 12 of 14 now as they come out of turn number three and in towards uh, turn number four Noah Rossa versus Tim Van Ellisvig it's going to be a battle that goes down to the final lap of the race Noah Rossa is the one that leads us Tim Van Ellisvig is the one in second both would be deserving winners sadly there can be only one in racing which one is going to take it? I imagine somewhere around the circuit, Charles, Team USA is cheering, and somewhere else, Team Netherlands is cheering. Well, they were the Team USA was the loudest in the uh, <laughs> yeah, driver's race, so I'm sure they're screaming their heads off. There's no <laughs> doubt about that. I'm sure if we open the window uh, <laughs> uh, enough, we would be able to hear them as Noah Rossa takes us through the chicane. Two complete. They are nose to tail. I do not think they could be racing any closer than that. I, I, the, 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 it's incredible. Uh, and here we go. Andre Dubai thinking about a move there. Do I go for it yet? Not quite on Colin Warren. So Colin Warren has now been caught here. The battle for the last step on the podium is on. The battle for the lead is on. It feels now no Rossa. It's that always saying in karting. Two laps to go is when the battle begins for the lead. And that is now the time we are at in this race. And Noah Rossa feels the need. It is now time to defend. He takes a look over his shoulder. He sees Tan Van Ellisvig behind and Simon. We have that battle for third and we have a change for third. Andre de Bayer for Team Ireland goes into third at turn seven. A fantastic performance by Andre de Bayer trying to break up the US domination as we side see by side. side by side for the lead of the race. This is it's. Tim Van Ellsweg, who has managed to take the lead with only a lap and a corner left to go. Oh, but he's got it wrong over the curbs, and that's going to give Noah Rossa a good run down into turn one. It's Rossa to the inside. It's Tim Van Ellsweg to the outside. Surely Noah Rossa has this in the back, and yes, capitalizes on the Dutchman's mistake and retakes the lead, and with less than a lap to go now, defends hard to the inside for the 3-4 chicane, and then rounding this long right hander, a very difficult corner to master. But Noah Rossa just gluing himself to the inside, making sure to defend hard. There won't be any nipping up Noah Rossa's inside by Tim Van Ellersweg as they make their way through sector two, approaching one of the last overtaking opportunities. Look at how defensive Noah Rossa is going. Tim Van Ellersweg tries it around the outside. This isn't going to work for him. Can he get the cut back is the next question. No, he can't. Brilliant defending there from Noah Rossa onto the back straight for the final time, the final lap, the final sector. 
Rossa defensive again. Tim Van Ellersweg offensive to the outside. Can he hold it around the outside? We've only seen this move pulled off once. It's going to be Noah Rossa who is latest on the brakes. Noah Rossa rounds the final corner and wins the T4 Senior Nations Cup title. And a round of applause goes up in the commentary box and on the balcony beside us as the US takes first and third in the T4 Nations Cup senior category. Tim Van Ellersweg put in a noble performance to take second, only just missing out by one, 105 one, one thousandth yeah, of, of a second. Charles, oh. what did you think of that? That was incredible. I, I mean, I, I don't know what to say. Anybody could have won that. It was just unbelievable right up to the end. A fantastic racing, wasn't it? Side yeah. by side, a clean race as clean well. Clean race, clean race. Clean race, side by side, the whole, you know, in the the, the the move on the outside that he almost made, yeah. uh, 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 Tim almost made was just unbelievable. He, as you said, Simon, it's only been he's only, it's only been able to be pulled off a couple times. Yeah, uh, he and he almost did it. Yeah, they both deserve to win. Uh, we did ask uh, when <laughs> Noah was up earlier. Do you think about your celebrations? Uh, and he, and he said yes, uh, and I think he nailed that one actually. <laughs> I think he just he said I just don't want to fall out the cup. And he did. He took both hands out the way and did. So it was a but overall uh, really great uh, and a great display from all the seniors, Charles, there uh, uh, in that, that great, one. great sportsmanship, great race, great entertaining. Can't wait for the seniors now. I mean, for the 165 now. Yeah, yeah we can't forget about those guys. They're out next now. Here's the result with Simon. Yes, so it was Noah Rossa who took the spoils for the T4 senior final in a fantastic performance. A two lap sprint at the end between himself and Tim Van Ellersweg. Van Ellersweg taking second in front of Colin Warren in third and Frederico Peters with a very strong showing, gaining 11 positions in that final to finish in fourth. In front of Owen Roberts in fifth and Andre Dabaya finishing in sixth place. P7 was occupied by Tyler McIntyre who unfortunately fell down the order as did Cameron Reed, who finished in eighth. In front of Jose Gomez, Calvin Pratt, Bram Osafada just about missing out on the top ten. Then came John Nuttall in position number 12 in front of Jack Dillon, Santiago Hermida and Rudy Schussler in 15th place, having gained four positions. Then Jason Bradbury finished where he started in 16th and Wesley Bowden with a very difficult final, dropping down 10 positions from where he started to finish in 17th place. Yuri Bechtold finished in 18th in front of James Tracy, Mauro Camacho Balboa finished in 20th in front of Nicholas Stanev, another difficult final dropping down nine positions, but nevertheless making history today as the first ever Bulgarian to take part in the Nations Cup. Then came Malk West and Davis Salmans in front of Jose Itabide and Philip Ghana, who, as we say, also made history as the first Nigerian to take part in the T4 Nations Cup and also in an A-final international karting event. Then came Ricardo Gasparini and Marco Aurelio, who recovered well, gaining nine positions from where he started. Then came Václav Strakati and Danny Krischer, Christophe Tsauna and Matt Villeman in front of James Andrus III, Omar Perez, Leo Geisler, Colin Munley, and then Hannah Fridberg was the last of the finishers. Now, it is important to say that uh, we do have a role here at the circuit as well as on the live stream. And so I do have to say that uh, there is a paddock announcement that needs making. So with that being said, attention paddock, attention paddock, this is an announcement for T4 Junior Driver 232 Edward Clark. Please come to the steward's office immediately. That is T4 Junior Driver 232 Edward Clark. Please come to the steward's office immediately. Thank you. So that remains to say that the only thing left to do is to tackle our T4165 final. And what a final it is set to be. We have seen some of the closest racing, some of the wisest racing as well in the T4165s, both this year and last year, and a number of familiar names who were here last year. Andreas Matisse, the reigning champion, starts on pole. Anwar Beryl-Smith, who finished on the podium last year, but uh, was later penalized is starting in fourth position. Chris Alcock, another Brit. There's an all-British second row in the T4165. Julian Granvo and Alessandro Marchini. Now, Julian Granvo, a heat winner last year and unfortunate to be involved in a collision earlier with, as I say, Alessandro Marchini. 
Jan Zastrow has also shown good pace. And uh, Kyle Lawrence, important to mention, Kyle Lawrence has actually crowdfunded his way here today, partially at least, to afford some new gear to meet regulation standards. He is starting in P10, representing South Africa. Very strong contender, very fast driver. He's starting alongside Phil Pignataro, who was also here last year, very familiar name, and uh, a very nice chap as well. And we have Christoph Wenske, who has shown strong pace as well in 12th. He's going to be looking to improve on that result. Other notable mentions, we do have Zachary Valvin, who is uh, part of the father-son duo that uh, we often see in T4 racing. And uh, it's great to see those sort of lad and dad teams coming back into the fray, particularly in T4s, but uh, also in karting more generally. Great to see, obviously, the T4 Nations Cup is a family occasion as much as anything. And uh, I do believe that we are just about ready to go down to the grid with Chris. If Chris can give me the thumbs up to say, uh, yep, yeah, uh, we are ready. So, Chris, what can you tell us about this, the last race of the Nations Cup 2023? Yeah, welcome to the grid as the senior 165s walk down. Uh, Charles Demergen, the president of Tillotson, you were just up in commentary with us. Uh, we had to drag you down to the yeah. grid now for well, senior. The sun shines here. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> tell us uh, the last race of the event. Uh, yeah, I imagine this uh, almost a slightly emotional moment. It's been such a, a long, a long uh, event, a long process. How's it all been for you? It's been great. You know, we've got. Uh, it's it's just a super exciting to see everybody here from all over, all over the world, all over the country. Uh, all over the countries here in Europe and the US and the, every hemisphere we have here uh, and the people seem to love it and we love it that the people love it. Let's give a shout out folks. So let's give us some support please for our senior 165 drivers. Guys on the roof let's give some support, give us a hand. Let's give them a round of applause. They have worked very very hard for this. Charles, we got obviously a driver who knows how to win here. We got Team USA on the front here as well, and then two British drivers who may be working together as well. What's your thoughts ahead of this? Well, again, same as same as the last race. This is a critical race. The Great Britain and uh, uh, the UK and the US and Ireland, they're all in the running here. What happens among these guys is going to be critical. Well, we will see you on the podium. We'll let you go and get a good all viewing right. spot. Good, thank you. See you all. Thank you. Okay, let's go and speak to some drivers. Uh, Andreas Matisse, who knows how to do well around here. Um, fantastic driving all weekend. Uh, superb job. Uh, you put in such a good performance that you didn't even really need to go and win the, the super heat in the end. Uh, so y you must have a, a lot of confidence now, now coming into this. Yeah, I think uh, we won last year as a race here. Mm -hmm. And um, now we have a good position for the, for the super heat. We can on fourth place in the, in the finish and we are from pole. And um, I think the race is long, <laughs> and, we, and we'll see what we can do. Every Nations Cup race is completely different, even if you won last year, I imagine. Yeah, it's completely different. This year is the competition very high, and um, we are more drivers in this class, and it's very fun. Good stuff. Good luck. Let's uh, keep going. Uh, we'll speak to Casey Cook next on the front row. I think that's a lot of support for you. Yeah. And Team USA, we're, we're going really strong as a, as a nation. Yeah, I think we've had some, uh, some solid finishes in the last couple uh, finals. So hopefully uh, get some clean racing up front. I think uh, all these guys have been working pretty well together. And I think we got a level head on, the, uh, on our shoulders. So hopefully we can make it to the end and have a nice little battle. We're going to do it for Team USA? I hope so. Oh, well, I think those guys think you are as well. Good luck, man. Good luck. Uh, let's go to Chris Alcock next. Uh, Good to be interviewing Chris again. It's been a few years since I've done this. So, mate, fa fantastic job, fantastic job. Your first time doing an event like this, international level, inside row two start. And yeah, that, that is probably what you would have picked uh, at, the, at the start of the week. Maybe one further forward. Maybe one, but yeah, inside row two is always good as well. I'm building up, I qualified P5, slowly picked forward, so fourth, now third. I wouldn't want to be one of those two of me coming. <laughs> <laughs> so th this is it, all out now. You've learnt a lot. Now it's time to now it's time to lead them. I've learned an awful lot. I've never been here before. So yeah, let's let's get on, have a nice clean race. May the best man win. The balaclava is literally going on as you say that as well. Uh, and while Beryl Smith is is coming, I thought he was coming over to 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 do something to your engine for a second there. And while coming over to give some assistance to help Chris get started. Good. Uh, Good country. We'll, help, we'll let Anwar get his fired up, and Chris is going to help his get fired up as well. 
and we'll go in and speak to Anwar. Anwar, uh, I mean, you worked really well with Chris in that super heat uh, to get yourself now in a really good position. I know you had a really tough first heat, but you've recovered really well since. Yep, it's been good. It's been a tough weekend. We're struggling with a few issues since the damage in that first heat. Um, but we're just pushing through. And um, you know, now it's the big one, and me and Chris are going to push to try and get to the front. You know, there's, you know it's, it's no longer about not taking chances. We're going to go for the win, both of us, and try and get one too. I think after that incident, if you said I'd be on the outside of row two, you probably would have taken that. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, for sure. I mean, um, yeah, you can't you can't be too ungrateful for that. That's for sure. And, and, and look, certainly when after that race, I was looking at it thinking probably weekend's over. We managed to salvage something out of it, but let's not throw that away now. We're going to try and have a good one. Good luck. Best of luck. Well done to uh, and what we got to look at this. We got a lot of support uh, coming up uh, on the uh, side. Marquini uh, is there. We got a, a a lot of support, Christian. If you spin round uh, on the sidelines here for Team Ireland, uh, we are all cheering for. So uh, why don't we find an Irish driver uh, with that and see if we've got any uh, down here? I don't know if we've got any. Yeah, we'll go and speak to uh, this man here because uh, we have got uh, we've got a lot of we've got a lot of support up there on the sidelines for uh, Team Ireland for you. So anything you want to say? You won't beat the Irish. Yeah, we're going to do it. Thank you. Good stuff. Best of luck. I think we're going to have to clear the grid. I'm going to walk to you. I'm going to hand it to Simon. Best of luck to all the drivers. Well, thank you very much for that, Chris. Our final pre-race interview of the day and of the Nations Cup 2023. Big thank you to Chris for all of his efforts in interviewing all of the drivers this weekend. Well, perhaps not all of them, but many, many drivers have had the chance to uh, give us their thoughts ahead of their races. And we are very, very grateful indeed to the drivers who have obliged. And uh, as we get underway in but a few moments time, this will be the final 14 laps of competition around this Cartodromo Lucas Guerrero here in Valencia. And the final 14 laps of competition of the Nations Cup itself. We are just about to get underway. They all set off on their formation laps. The sun will be beating into their eyes as they drive down the start-finish straight. And with a fantastic view, on most days, they will be glad to have their tinted visors on as the day gradually comes to an end. All of these drivers warming up their tyres for one last time. As I'm joined again by Chris in the commentary box, I was joined a few moments ago by Noah Rossa, our new T4 Senior Nations Cup champion. Now, he'll be back up in a few minutes, I hope, to uh, have a chat with us about everything that uh, went on in that race and his emotions post-race. And then we will be presenting him with his trophy that he has earned at 5 p.m. local time. 1700 is our podium presentations where we will be presenting the T4 Nations Cup itself to the winning nation, whoever they may be, and also our individual category winners and our timed quali pole position holders um, sponsored by Maxis, the uh, Maxis Pole Position Award. Been awarded since last year and a lovely little trophy it is as well as I'm getting some looks from Josh East down by uh, the start Hello, finish Josh. line. Hello, Josh. How, How are, are you? Doing? Yeah, Josh is good. Josh is in the shade. Yeah, we're having a good time. There's yeah, two of us know, up here, yes. Up and down. Yeah, you know. up and down, up and down, yeah. In, out, left, right, <laughs> forwards, back. Same as the drone, really, you know. Bit, bit, bit of everything, bit of everything. Anyways, should we talk about the race? Yes, fantastic. So as they come round to uh, make their way into the tram lines, it is going to be um, Andreas Matisse, who will lead us away in front of Casey Cook and Chris Alcock. Anwar Beryl-Smith and Julian Granvo line up next in front of Yanni Fokin and Jan Zastra. And we go racing now, and it's a good start off pole. It is a good start for Andreas Matisse. It's also a good start for Casey Cook, who's going to be pipped by Chris Alcock down into turn number one, slotting into third position. There's a little bit of argy-bargy. Someone has 
ridden up onto the back of the... Oh, and there's Carnage. There is Chaos down at turn number one. There's four carts off. Five carts, in fact, have we've, gone off. We've got Anwar Beryl-Smith off. Marquini is off. Carl Lawrence is off. Peter Janssen is off. Zachary Walvin. All of those drivers off through the first sector, unfortunately, and there were more delayed. Yanni Fokin was delayed, as was uh, Zachary Walvin, who I think we already mentioned. So several drivers delayed. Uh, we uh, have not seen a couple of drivers come through, unfortunately. So the end of the race and the Nations Cup for some, but not for our lead three who make their way down the straight. Andreas Matisse still running strong. Chris Alcock in second. Casey Cook is in third place. They now have a gap over the rest of the field and a chance to break away. And we're going to go full course yellow. Full course yellow. So this a chance now to bunch up the field and just to organize the and i think this is because anwar beryl smith is being attended to on the side of the circuit uh, he was one of the drivers involved in that incident i can see uh, that uh, he is outside of his cart uh, but uh, he is on the ground and he is being attended to by the medical team out on the circuit anwar beryl smith currently being seen to by the medical team so hopefully this yellow flag doesn't turn red that is why we are under full course yellow all drivers will now be forced to reduce speed and form up behind Andreas Matisse who effectively becomes a safety cart and uh, Anwar Beryl Smith will be being attended to I believe that is the driver who uh, is on the ground so a real shame uh, for him and a real shame for all the drivers whose races have come to an end early. Gonzalo, our race director, in constant contact as he's up on the gantry uh, with the guys up over there. And we will wait to see. But uh, in the meantime, we'll go through our order, shall we? It's Matisse, Alcock, Casey Cook third. And then Pignataro are five places to fourth. Then Granvo, Rolfing has come up 10 places uh, to 6th place. Venska is 7th, up 5. Zastro is 8th. Then it's Yangels in ninth, up 5. And then we have the Mexican uh, next, uh, Angelno, uh, who is in P10. He's up 7. We have plenty of drivers making big, big ground because of that, Simon. Uh, but we now have a red flag. Red flag is out. We will stop the race. Uh, there is confirmation of that on your screen. Uh, we do need more medical attention to Anwar Beryl-Smith. This will be to get an ambulance out onto uh, the circuit. So not what we want to see uh, at all, but uh, the red flag is now being called. So further medical attention can go the way uh, of Anwar Beryl-Smith, uh, who is uh, on the ground just on the exit of turn two. Uh, the red flag it is now out and the drivers make their way down towards uh, the start finish line which is where they will form up Ross uh, from race direction is currently out there uh, one of the RGMMC staff uh, who will line them up uh, on the grid there is uh, Christian just getting them to a slow speed and then Ross will form them up uh, on that inside row and bring them to the start finish line and there they are and the 487 of andreas matisse now i'm not too sure if we will start single file as they are if this will be a full restart uh, if it is then we will grid them up minus uh, the drivers that need to be uh, seen to uh, but whilst we get more information on the situation to remind you we are under a red flag condition for an incident on the opening lap of the senior 165 final we have Anwar Beryl Smith uh, needing medical attention on the circuit so whilst we get some more information about what is going on in terms of the race itself and how we're going to restart we're going to take a very short break here at Valencia Ciao Gian, preparati che ho portato una cosa per te. Provala e fammi sapere. Ok, mi fido il casco, andiamo? Andiamo, subito.
Welcome back to Valencia Live Pictures show the senior 165 carts uh, lined up uh, on the start finish straight. Uh, we have medical attention being given to Anwar Beryl Smith, who is on his feet. I can tell you looking out the window, the ambulance uh, is by Anwar now, who uh, uh, by himself is walking towards uh, the ambulance. So that is good news. Uh, hopefully. Uh, the injuries to him are not too severe, but uh, uh, we have had to have a red flag in terms of the restart procedure, whether it will be a full race restart or single file in the order they are in. Uh, I will get that information to you when it is handed to me. But uh, we're going to have a few minutes before uh, we are restarted. So we're going to use that time uh, to speak to the winner of uh, our senior race, Noah Rossa. Thanks for coming uh, up and speaking to us, Noah. Uh, first of all, Congratulations. I mean, uh, tell us how you're feeling. Uh, we, I, can, I can feel the excitement coming out of you and the emotion as well. A T4 Nations Cup champion. I, I imagine so much hard work's gone into that um, s s over the years uh, of racing. Tell us how it feels to, to, to get it done today. Oh, man, I, I don't even know what to say. It's, it's been a fairly tough year. Uh, I just, I've worked so hard for this. I, I'm, I'm speechless. <laughs> I, I imagine you are. Uh, there's been a lot of support out there with Team yes. USA when we were speaking to Casey Cook on the uh, on the grid. I imagine you are part of making that noise uh, <laughs> as well. Tell us how it's been having so much support from your teammates and the families they brought with them, and and how much that's helped you get the job done today. It's great. I mean, I turn my back, and I there's always somebody there for me. And there, I mean, we won this race, not just me. Mm. That's very kind of you to say. Uh, through the race itself, great battle with uh, Tim yeah. as well. Yeah. Uh, Tim pushing you all the way. We spoke about this when you commentated with us, uh, pushing you all the way to the last lap. So it was just a, uh, a two-man fight, essentially. Uh, yeah. And then it was every man for himself, as you, as you said to me on the grid. Yeah, I just I signaled him to push me. And uh, every lap, almost every lap on the back straight, I would kind of turn my head over to see the gap. And eventually we just had a huge gap like i didn't see any go-karts and i kind of just gave him the signal like let's let's keep this up yeah and i uh we got to the second last lap and i told him i i signaled him uh because i kind of wanted to battle till the last lap just in case anything happened if we started scrapping like big time and uh i just defended for my life everything i've ever learned about defending i used against him and he got a good run on the back straight and just it just handed me the just handed me the win. All I had to do was just stay alongside of him from there. It was it was a really good race. He put up a great fight as well. It went yeah. all the way to the flag, didn't it? And a, a good a good respectable race between the both of yeah. you. It was a very clean race, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, he's he's super smart. He he understood the assignment when I said just let's just push, let's get yeah. away from the field. And he he I mean he did so. I can't complain about anything. Yeah. I, I, but taking that, that win across the line, oh, that winning moment, yeah. we spoke to you about that before. Talk us through how that, how, how that felt. It was just a sigh of relief. Uh, I actually haven't even won a race this year. I actually won most of my races last year, and I've just kind of been winless since last year, and it's great to come here. It's my first ever T4 Nations Cup race, and to win is at my first time here is just insane. Yeah, I imagine coming across the line. Yeah. Did you look for the photographers? I actually didn't. <laughs> I, I thought about what Simon said about standing up in my go-kart, but we didn't have a 10-second <laughs> gap like he said, so I didn't stand up. I'm sure they found you. We even had one of the Irish drivers, junior drivers, who was <laughs> taking oh, photos yeah. of the. So you have to go and find him yes, as well. I'm sure he, he got a couple of uh, good snaps of you yep. there, but uh, it was certainly clear. Uh, that it was it, it meant a lot to you from what we yes, could see it does. Uh, and i'm sure there's plenty of people at home i know we're going to have the podium later yes. but anyone that might be watching this senior 165 final oh my gosh all like my friends all my family everyone that's helped me all my and racing 
I mean, everybody. It's just it's awesome to look at my phone and just mm. know that the people at home are watching, and it's great to put on a show. Well, thank you very much uh, for, you. for coming up and joining us. Thank uh, you. We're, we're obviously, we're going to speak to you again on the podium, yeah. aren't we? Uh, yeah. But yeah, uh, great timing as well. Um, you know, uh, it looks like we're starting to get some form of uh, rearrangements uh, or plan going out there uh, on the track. But uh, uh, obviously, uh, I tell you, while, while we have you here, we can get a bit of an insight from yourself. Now, we've spoken about your race, red flag incidents as a driver. Um, when you're on their side, the drivers that are on the circuit, and you've had two laps of a race, now you have to almost reset. How is how is that process for you when you've almost gone through the warm-up routine uh, that you go through, you've gone through, walked out onto the track, had the first lap, and then you have to reset and go through that again, but all by yourself out there on the circuit. How's that process? Well, the tires, we've, I mean, we ran them from Saturday morning till today, and uh, they're just holding up, but we, everybody has to remember that the tires are cooling down. So obviously you have to get them heated up again. Um, yeah, just whatever you did, whatever mistakes you made in the first start of the race after the red flag, it's best to capitalize on that and right. think, what didn't I do that I should do now? So it's a chance to, yes, reset. It, but I guess on the flip side, if you had a really good start, it's just repeat the process yeah. and, and do that yeah. again, basically. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I imagine not easy uh, at all. Uh, and the drivers out there now just getting ready to go. And I guess because it's been so long since you've walked out the awning now as well, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, as a driver, that must be uh, quite a it, quite a physically demanding process uh, as yeah. well. Even if you aren't doing laps, yeah. it's because because it, of the heat as well. Yeah, it's it is very hot. Yeah, uh, so it's going to be a it's going to be a tough race for these guys. Do you want to stick around f with us? For uh, senior sure. one six five, sure. Yeah, well, we'll have to keep you around for it then. Uh, senior one six fives getting ready to go. I'm still waiting to uh, hear what the process is going to be. I don't know if it's going to be a single file restart. What? Uh, okay. uh, I don't know if it's going to be a, uh, a full restart or uh, a uh, or a single file in the order that they did it in. But uh, while we get to make, uh, while we uh, get to uh, get the process, maybe we'll take another quick break here at Valencia and we'll be back with some more info as we build up to the restart of this race. Ciao Gian, preparati che ho portato una cosa per te. Provala e fammi sapere. Ok, mi fido il casco, andiamo? Andiamo, subito.
Welcome back, everyone. It looks like we're almost ready to go for Senior 165. Uh, the Anwar Beryl Smith incident has now been attended to. Uh, it uh, uh, appears that all uh, is okay there. We did see Anwar Beryl Smith in some discomfort. Red flag had been thrown. Uh, the ambulance did get out, but Anwar Beryl Smith was up on his feet. So hopefully injuries there not too severe. But a real shame as many drivers were caught up in that incident. Fokin was caught out in that, as was Anwar Beryl Smith, who did have to jump in uh, the ambulance, unfortunately. And we wish him all the best and hope his injuries are not too severe. Alessandro Marchini also caught up. Likewise, P.T. Anson. Uh, as well. Marquini, a real shame as he was starting very well. We're getting ready to go for a restart then. It seems they'll stay in single file for this and Andreas Matisse will lead us on to lap number five of the race when we go green and this is the order they will start in. Simon, I'll hand to you. Yes, so it will be... Uh, well, I, I would say that, but yeah, yes, there we go. Matisse, yes, on. We Matisse will lead us ahead of Chris Alcock and Casey Cook. Yes, and then it will be Phil Pignataro who uh, had a good start there, gaining five positions up into position number four. And then comes Julian Granvo. Then Asbjorn Rolfing who gained ten positions in such a short space of time uh, given the chaos that was happening there at turn one. Then comes Christoph Venske, then Jan Zastrau, and Esteban Yanguas, Gil Angiano and Harris Gladkins. And Bas Peters lines up in twelfth in front of Stefan Osman and Gert Lapskelms. David Bo Bowden, David Bowden, excuse me, starts in 15th in front of, oh, we are about to go racing, we're about to go racing, and we go green now, and is, it is Andreas Matisse who leads us down into turn one. It is a single file restart, so Matisse leads Alcock, who leads Cook, and Pignataro down into turn one. Makes it a lot easier as commentators when they go single file into the first corner as they make their way round through the turn three chicane. Nice and calm. And immediately, Andreas Matisse, he's used to being in this position of being in first. He's going to be looking to settle into a rhythm as quickly as he can. But he has got Chris Alcock sitting behind him, who is going to be thinking, what can I do here? And uh, restarting from lap number three out of 14 laps, rather than taking a full restart and just resetting everything in its entirety. We are green flag racing now. And... Things are set to hot up very, very quickly indeed as Andreas Matisse leads the pack round. No action really developing at this stage in the race. Everyone's still just trying to warm up their tyres more than anything else. The heat of the day is beginning to subside, which is good news for these drivers as we've got Andreas Matisse being pushed like mad by Chris Alcock in second. And then Casey Cook in third. A little bit of contact there between Alcock and Cook. At the fringes of the podium positions... A whole lot of action emerging presently. Everyone just staying in that slipstream train. We've seen this all weekend with the 165s. 12 cart trains at times just using each other's slipstream. Bump drafting to the high heavens. And as a 14 lap affair gets underway again, we can expect even more of that to come. Yep. Chris Alcock there with a little bit of assistance through turn one and has now have a little bit of a gap to chase down to Matisse. But he's closed that down uh, now through the middle sector of the lap. He's settling into this race nicely. Matisse there showing his experience out front, covering off any challenge down that back straight. Here they come through turn nine. We are fully back on the way and racing in this senior 165 class. Last opportunity to go and win that nation. Cup as they make their way down the start finish straight 
teammates will be cheering from the sidelines as Matisse leads us into the first two corners on lap number six. Chris Alcock, can he do it? Good friends with Anwar Beryl Smith. And after Anwar involved in that red flag incident, he'll no doubt want to go out and win this one for him as he comes into turn number four now. Coming in towards turn number five, he's got Casey Cook behind. He received a lot of support out there on the grid, and so he should. He's driven absolutely superb this weekend for Team USA. They are fighting for the Nations Cup as well. What a beautiful trophy they're fighting for as well. Who's going to take it? Here they come. Out of turn eight, Pignataro, who's made a fantastic start to the race. One of the other Americans is fourth in queue, sixth for the lead. Granvo, the French driver next in P5. Venska is next in sixth. He is the fastest driver on track, so it's six for the lead, and the fastest driver is the last of them in the queue, and I think he's about to go into fifth and does coming across the start-finish line. And with Phil Pignataro, and I believe that is Christoph Venska, side by side into turn one. No change for the lead just yet as everyone makes their way across the line. And with Christoph Venska setting very fast times, as is Jan Zastrau, his fellow German, who were following each other, bump drafting, as we see Andreas Matisse coming under threat, perhaps, from Chris Alcock behind, who was having a look up the inside, but wasn't able to make anything of it at this stage in the race. It would not be a great idea to go battling, because there is a huge train of carts behind that will gladly snap up any mistakes that are made. It is line astern, it is as you were through turn number seven and eight. As we watch all of them flowing through, let's see which battles are emerging and who has gained the most and lost the most. Well, I can tell you that Juan Pablo Glover has gained 12 positions from where he started. He's currently sitting in 19th position, the lead Guatemalan out of three Guatemalans on the grid. He is leading all of them. He's sandwiched between Two Irish men of Peter McBride and also Aaron Doyle, who have also been showing well this weekend. As we see side by side is the 417 machine. That is Stefan Osman, I believe, Hill Angiano. As everyone makes their way once again down the start, finish straight, roaring past the commentary box. Making their way through Sector 1 and Sector 2. The T4 seniors, 165s and Masters all seem to have pretty much nailed this middle section of corners that is so difficult to master as there's a little bit of action going on on the fringes of the top 10 but no changes for position Chris. Well I think we're going to see a change for fourth maybe because Venska is quickest on track he took fifth a couple of laps ago coming on to the start finish line uh, and there's no need for him to follow around Julian Granvo. I think he's going to be the one to watch in this lead battle he's fifth in that queue jumping in his seat getting his head down showing his intention he wants to get on the move Chris Alcock is being patient in second place running wide is KC Cook here's an opportunity for Venska in fifth gets the switch back out of the final corner that move almost handed to him and that will be P4 can he get P3 into turn two not quite so that's another one down for the German driver this would be great for them in the Nations Cup if he could join his countryman Andreas Matisse out front and get a one-two finish he would want to be the one leading them home of course so up to p4 casey cook is next on the list for him and he's very quickly closing him down i can see him jumping in his seat out of turn five again he's feeling very good out in the cart lots of confidence coming through the cart of christoph venska as he makes his way now through turn number eight fourth in that queue Alcock looks over his shoulder. Maybe a slightly bad exit uh, out of there. Leaves him vulnerable to Casey Cook as they come now down the back straight. Here we go. Casey Cook pushing Chris Alcock down the back straight as they head into the final chicane. Now we're into the second half of the race. Well into it now. We're going to go on to lap number 10. Here we go. Is Alcock going to make his first real big attempt at taking the lead of the race not able to do so door is closed by Matisse Casey Cook there in third and then Venska now with a gap to close down in fourth place as they come through turn number three next is Pignataro then Granvo Zastro as well German driver 
has just gone fastest through the first sector. He is catching these guys as well, making it seven for the lead. The German drivers on fire in this race. They are currently one, four, and seven. All three of them with a very good chance to finish on the podium in this race. Casey Cook, fastest last time around as well, Simon. And also half a second faster than Chris Alcock in front of him on that previous lap. And this has really brought him in contention for the victory as he's following Chris Alcock, who himself is following Andreas Matisse, the reigning champion who has shown so much control today and yesterday. Won both of the T4 Senior 165 heats yesterday. So is a very, very fast driver, very mature. He knows what he's doing. He defends to the inside enough to dissuade any maneuvers at that crucial point where the drivers would be pulling out to overtake up the inside. Maintains the lead coming through turn number one. Still no changes, but that is guaranteed to hot up, I would say, within the next two laps as we had momentarily Jan Zastrow continuously setting fastest sector ones not able to string together a perfect full lap but very very fast in sector one is Jan Zastrow the German racer so it is Germans in first fourth and seventh a very strong German contingent in this T4 senior 165 class stronger you might argue than every other class combined the Germans have always been showing well in 165s and this year is no exception as look at this a battle for third place Christoph Benska trying to get past KC Cook Phil Pignataro is going to try and get involved up the inside of Venska who himself is trying to go round the outside of KC Cook and it's not going to work out it is as you were as they come across the line it is no excuse me KC Cook has fallen down the order as has Julian Granvaux Julian Granvaux fallen down to seventh and KC Cook is down to fifth. That means to say that Christoph Venska up to third, it is now a German 1-3 with Chris Alcock, the only Brit in the top, well, in the top 10. In fact, perhaps even in the top 20. In fact, the only Brit in the field at all. Yeah, of course, Anwar Beryl-Smith is out with the red flag incident. So Chris Alcock flying the flag uh, for them strongly now and Chris will want to win the race as I said earlier good friends with Anwar he'll want to win the race for both of them now he was out there for himself but uh, I'm sure Anwar if he's in a position to do so will be cheering him on from the sidelines here we go on to the back straight lap number 12 now we're well into the business end of this race and with that the snake begins to slither down the back straight you could see Matisse there just weaving down towards the chicane more and more with every single lap and Chris Alcock going with him on to the start finish straight two laps to go in the T4 Nations Cup all together the senior 165s will conclude us as Casey Cook running wide through the first corner and Pignataro will go through to take third place we pick up our leaders Matisse ahead of Alcock Venska in P3 that's Casey Cook down a position so Venska is third a look over the shoulder there of Chris Alcock he is right in behind Matisse as they head down towards turn number seven Chris Alcock now looking to the outside of Andreas Matisse can he get the switch back out of this corner here not quite able to do it he's setting him up assessing what's going on behind he's got Venska right in behind him any one of these three any one of these five could win it here they come down towards turn number nine is there a gap there Chris not quite has to back out of it in the end but Chris now getting more and more determined to get by as you can see the rear wheels lifting up into the chicane there as the speed they carried in here we go are we side by side across the line not quite last lap to go of the nation's cup and it looks like it's going to be a fantastic lap to end on simon it certainly is a German 1-3 presently and Christoph Wenzka having started in 12th finds himself within two sectors of a podium as Julian Granvaux sets the fastest lap a 106.7 but it is going to be a day late and a dollar short for the Frenchman in this race as look at this that looks to be Christoph Wenzka trying to make a move on 
on uh, Alcock, on, on uh, Alcock there, excuse me, as they come up to turn number seven. There's huge drama appearing. Hit three wide. This is absolutely exceptional. Casey Cook has somehow snuck in there and managed to start fighting for third position and has seized third position from Christoph Wenske and demotes the German out of a podium place on the final lap. And Andreas Matisse through turn number nine, being hunted down by Chris Alcock here. Can Alcock do it out the final corner? I'm not too sure he can. Casey Cook over the chicane, but it's going to be back-to-back -back wins for Andreas Matisse. Chris Alcock there, not quite able to do it, but shakes the hand of Andreas Matisse. And you can see the bit of frustration from Chris Alcock. He wanted to get that win. So, so close to doing it, but a second is a very good effort, and he lost out only to the reigning champion. Well done, Casey Cook as well. Got some very good points there for Team USA. Very good points for Team USA. Andreas Matisse taking the win. Once again, he's nailed the formula of Tillotson T4 racing in this senior 165 class. Granbo in four, Team Germany with three drivers in the top six. Jan Zastro up three places to fifth. Christoph Wenske up six into sixth. And Pignataro up to seventh. Rolfing came up to P8 as well, gaining a total of eight places. But arm in the air for Andreas Matisse. Celebrations for him as he uh, signals he's coming into pit lane as well. What a race, a tenth and a half just shy of that between our top two and senior 165 I wouldn't expect anything less Simon. So Andreas Matisse becomes only the second man in history to defend his T4 Nations Cup title only behind Truly Adams who beat him to it by only a matter of minutes. He finished the race in first to put a Chris Alcock in second and KC Cook managed to get back up into third position. Julian Granvo finished in fourth in front of Jan Zastrow, who crossed the line at an equal time to Christoph Wenske, who fell down from third place, but uh, crossed the line at the exact same time as Jan Zastrow. So joint fifth, one might say, but the telemetry does say Jan Zastrow took that position and scored fifth instead of sixth. Phil Pignataro, with a respectable effort, finished in seventh in front of Asbjorn Rolfing and Esteban Yangwas. Hilangiano finished in tenth in front of Gert Lapskelns and Daniel Bowden, with Harris Gladkins and Kyle Lawrence finishing down in 14th. Dirk Pognov finished in 15th in front of his fellow German Stefan Osman and Bas Peters finished in 17th in front of Anthony Holland, Gian Maria Gabbiani and Juan Pablo Glover rounded out the top 20. Then came Peter McBride, Aaron Doyle, Zachary Balvin and Walter Kessler in front of Manuel Gámez, Fernando Wheeler Sr., Rudolf Tomsbazin and Seamus Lawler. And then our non-finishers were Adan Enrique Ibarra Castro, Yanni Fokin and Anwar Beryl-Smith who was unfortunately involved in that incident as well as Alessandro Marchini and Petter Janssen with Milan Milenkovic unable to take the start. Well, there we go. That concludes the racing, Simon. It does. What an what a weekend we have had. You know, it's the, fantastic, isn't it? It has been absolutely superb. Big um, thank you to everyone at the track here who has made it possible. Big thank you to you as well, Chris, for uh, your good spirit in this. The thanks I goes back. This. The thanks goes back. Uh, uh, it's been. A, uh, of course, we're not done there with the coverage. We have the podiums coming up very soon. Uh, so do stick with us. Uh, you're going to be joining me out there, Simon, I take it? I hope so, yes. Yeah, yeah. so we'll... My advice? Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, Ho I think Hopefully. So. I mean, yeah, I've yeah. been working like two metres away from <laughs> the podium the for podium. the last 48 hours. So I think we'll both be out there <laughs> for the podium. Uh, so we'll go and get ourselves ready. But we'll take this opportunity to uh, thank the track staff, as you can see them in the background making their way uh, back uh, off the circuit, all the marshal medical team around who uh, have unfortunately been needed at times today but when they have have done a fantastic job the uh, recovery vehicle staff as well uh, all the track officials marshals and stewards uh, for helping us go racing a huge thanks to uh, uh, all of them as well we will continue our thank yous when we uh, head out on to the podium as well because there has been several people that have made this event what it is 
uh, and we look forward to celebrating that with uh, our winners on the podium from each class along with our Nations Cup winners as well. Uh, we don't know who that, that is. No, we don't. So we'll find Could out Could be soon. anyone. Could be anyone. It could be you and me. It, <laughs> you never know. <laughs> if you we know steal it. the trophy, we can claim The that. trophy did look nice. It, it did. did. It's, it's a lovely nice. trophy. So what we'll do is we'll take a quick break and then we'll be back. So stick with us on the stream, I'd say 10 to 20 minutes, I'd say, maybe, and we will be back with you for the podium. So... Uh, Grab a, grab a cup of tea, basically, and then come back on the stream. And, uh, leave it on in the background. Leave it on in the background. I You'll hear our voices eventually. <laughs> and, and, and then, then the flashbacks will start. And, and then, yeah, then that's exactly it. And then the podium will start. So we will see you soon, and the party will well and truly begin here at Valencia. Ciao Gian, preparati che ho portato una cosa per te. Provala e fammi sapere. Ok, mi infilo il casco, andiamo? Andiamo, subito. Everything hurts. You need relief that's deeper than ice. You need Tidal, the cryotherapy spray that goes beyond cold to take control of the pain. This was just easy, and it felt so good. I was like, wow, that actually smells good. It's like penetrating into my skin, which I really love. Tidal's powerful plant-based formulation was developed to help world-class athletes recover faster. Tidal cryotherapy spray can contribute to total body recovery because it can alleviate muscle pain, joint pain, even back pain. A 360-degree continuous spray relieves pain in even the hardest to reach areas, dries fast, and lasts. When you get older, the joints start hurting. The spray is easy. You just bring it wherever you are, spray it, and it feels great within minutes. It changes my life in a way that I can still be active and yet not feel aches and pains when I'm sitting there for long hours. Tidal Cryotherapy, available at Walmart and these fine retailers. Visit Tidal.com for locations.
a posto? Ciao Gian, preparati che ho portato una cosa per te. Provala e fammi sapere. Ok, mi infilo il cazzo, andiamo? Andiamo, subito. Everything hurts. You need relief that's deeper than ice. You need Tidal, the cryotherapy spray that goes beyond cold to take control of the pain. This was just easy, and it felt so good. I was like, wow, that actually smells good. It's like penetrating into my skin, which I really love. Tidal's powerful plant-based formulation was developed to help world-class athletes recover faster. Tidal cryotherapy spray can contribute to total body recovery because it can alleviate muscle pain, joint pain, even back pain. A 360-degree continuous spray relieves pain in even the hardest-to-reach areas, dries fast, and lasts. When you get older, the joints start hurting. The spray is easy. You just bring it wherever you are, spray it, and it feels great within minutes. It changes my life in a way that I can still be active and yet not feel aches and pains when I'm sitting there for long hours. Tidal Cryotherapy, available at Walmart and these fine retailers. Visit Tidal.com for locations. Ciao Gian, preparati che ho portato una cosa per te. Provala e fammi sapere. Ok, mi infilo il casco, andiamo? Andiamo, subito.
Everything hurts. You need relief that's deeper than ice. You need Tidal, the cryotherapy spray that goes beyond cold to take control of the pain. This was just easy, and it felt so good. I was like, wow, that actually smells good. It's like penetrating into my skin, which I really love. Tidal's powerful plant-based formulation was developed to help world-class athletes recover faster. Tidal cryotherapy spray can contribute to total body recovery because it can alleviate muscle pain, joint pain, even back pain. A 360-degree continuous spray relieves pain in even the hardest-to-reach areas, dries fast, and lasts. When you get older, the joints start hurting. The spray is easy. You just bring it wherever you are, spray it, and it feels great within minutes. It changes my life in a way that I can still be active and yet not feel aches and pains when I'm sitting there for long hours. Tidal Cryotherapy, available at Walmart and these fine retailers. Visit Tidal.com for locations. Ciao Gian, preparati che ho portato una cosa per te. Provala e fammi sapere. Ok, mi fido il casco, andiamo? Andiamo, subito. Everything hurts. You need relief that's deeper than ice. You need 
Title, the cryotherapy spray that goes beyond cold to take control of the pain. This was just easy and it felt so good. I was like, wow, that actually smells good. It's like penetrating into my skin, which I really love. Title's powerful plant-based formulation was developed to help world-class athletes recover faster. Title cryotherapy spray can contribute to total body recovery because it can alleviate muscle pain, joint pain, even back pain. A 360 degree continuous spray relieves pain in even the hardest to reach areas dries fast and lasts when you get older the joints start hurting the spray is easy you just bring it wherever you are spray it and it feels great within minutes it changes my life in a way that i can still be active and yet not feel aches and pains when i'm sitting there for long hours title cryotherapy available at walmart and these fine retailers visit title.com for locations Ciao Gian, preparati che ho portato una cosa per te. Provala e fammi sapere. Ok, mi infilo il casco, andiamo? Andiamo, subito. Everything hurts. You need relief that's deeper than ice. You need Tidal, the cryotherapy spray that goes beyond cold to take control of the pain. This was just easy and it felt so good. I was like, wow, that actually smells good. It's like penetrating into my skin, which I really love. Tidal's powerful plant-based formulation was developed to help world-class athletes recover faster. Tidal cryotherapy spray can contribute to total body recovery because it can alleviate muscle pain, joint pain, even back pain. A 360-degree continuous spray relieves pain in even the hardest-to-reach areas, dries fast, and lasts. When you get older, the joints start hurting. The spray is easy. You just bring it wherever you are, spray it, and it feels great within minutes. It changes my life in a way that I can still be active and yet not feel aches and pains when I'm sitting there for long hours. Title Cryotherapy, available at Walmart and these fine retailers. Visit title.com for locations.
posto. Ciao Gian, preparati che ho portato una cosa per te. Provala e fammi sapere. Ok, mi tiro il casco, andiamo? Andiamo, subito. When everything hurts, you need relief that's deeper than ice. You need Tidal, the cryotherapy spray that goes beyond cold to take control of the pain. This was just easy, and it felt so good. I was like, wow, that actually smells good. It's like penetrating into my skin, which I really love. Tidal's powerful plant-based formulation was developed to help world-class athletes recover faster. Tidal cryotherapy spray can contribute to total body recovery because it can alleviate muscle pain, joint pain, even back pain. A 360-degree continuous spray relieves pain in even the hardest to reach areas, dries fast, and lasts. When you get older, the joints start hurting. The spray is easy. You just bring it wherever you are, spray it, and it feels great within minutes. It changes my life in a way that I can still be active and yet not feel aches and pains when I'm sitting there for long hours. Tidal Cryotherapy, available at Walmart and these fine retailers. Visit Tidal.com for locations. Ciao Gian, preparati che ho portato una cosa per te. Provala e fammi sapere. Ok, mi tiro il casco, andiamo? Andiamo, subito.
Everything hurts. You need relief that's deeper than ice. You need Tidal, the cryotherapy spray that goes beyond cold to take control of the pain. This was just easy, and it felt so good. I was like, wow, that actually smells good. It's like penetrating into my skin, which I really love. Tidal's powerful plant-based formulation was developed to help world-class athletes recover faster. Tidal cryotherapy spray can contribute to total body recovery because it can alleviate muscle pain, joint pain, even back pain. A 360-degree continuous spray relieves pain in even the hardest-to-reach areas, dries fast, and lasts. When you get older, the joints start hurting. The spray is easy. You just bring it wherever you are, spray it, and it feels great within minutes. It changes my life in a way that I can still be active and yet not feel aches and pains when I'm sitting there for long hours. Tidal Cryotherapy, available at Walmart and these fine retailers. Visit Tidal.com for locations. Ciao Gian, preparati che ho portato una cosa per te. Provala e fammi sapere. Ok, mi fido il casco, andiamo? Andiamo, subito. Everything hurts. You need relief that's deeper than ice. You need 
Tidal, the cryotherapy spray that goes beyond cold to take control of the pain. This was just easy and it felt so good. I was like, wow, that actually smells good. It's like penetrating into my skin, which I really love. Tidal's powerful plant-based formulation was developed to help world-class athletes recover faster. Tidal cryotherapy spray can contribute to total body recovery because it can alleviate muscle pain, joint pain, even back pain. A 360-degree continuous spray relieves pain in even the hardest-to-reach areas, dries fast, and lasts. When you get older, the joints start hurting. The spray is easy. You just bring it wherever you are, spray it, and it feels great within minutes. It changes my life in a way that I can still be active and yet not feel aches and pains when I'm sitting there for long hours. Tidal Cryotherapy, available at Walmart and these fine retailers. Visit Tidal.com for locations. Ciao Gian, preparati che ho portato una cosa per te. Provala e fammi sapere. Ok, mi fido il casco, andiamo? Andiamo, subito. Everything hurts. You need relief that's deeper than ice. You need Tidal, the cryotherapy spray that goes beyond cold to take control of the pain. This was just easy and it felt so good. I was like, wow, that actually smells good. It's like penetrating into my skin, which I really love. Tidal's powerful plant-based formulation was developed to help world-class athletes recover faster. Tidal cryotherapy spray can contribute to total body recovery because it can alleviate muscle pain, joint pain, even back pain. A 360-degree continuous spray relieves pain in even the hardest to reach areas, dries fast, and lasts. When you get older, the joints start hurting. The spray is easy. You just bring it wherever you are, spray it, and it feels great within minutes. It changes my life in a way that I can still be active and yet not feel aches and pains when I'm sitting there for long hours. Tidal Cryotherapy, available at Walmart and these fine retailers. Visit Tidal.com for locations.
posto? Ciao Gian, preparati che ho portato una cosa per te. Provala e fammi sapere. Ok, mi infilo il cazzo, andiamo? Andiamo, subito. Everything hurts. You need relief that's deeper than ice. You need Tidal, the cryotherapy spray that goes beyond cold to take control of the pain. This was just easy, and it felt so good. I was like, wow, that actually smells good. It's like penetrating into my skin, which I really love. Tidal's powerful plant-based formulation was developed to help world-class athletes recover faster. Tidal cryotherapy spray can contribute to total body recovery because it can alleviate muscle pain, joint pain, even back pain. A 360-degree continuous spray relieves pain in even the hardest-to-reach areas, dries fast, and lasts. When you get older, the joints start hurting. The spray is easy. You just... Bring it wherever you are, spray it, and it feels great within minutes. It changes my life in a way that I can still be active and yet not feel aches and pains when I'm sitting there for long hours. Tidal Cryotherapy, available at Walmart and these fine retailers. Visit Tidal.com for locations. Well, welcome up to the podium, uh, everyone. We are getting to ready to go. That, that room behind me there. Very, very noisy with a lot of drivers. I'm going to move this microphone here. With a lot of drivers getting ready to celebrate. Are we all ready to celebrate? Some winning drivers down there. Should we give them some more noise? I, I want them to be out of here. Are we ready to celebrate some winning drivers down there? I think they heard that one. I think they held that one. Okay, we're going to start this one with the pole position award for the T4 mini class a driver who has driven absolutely superbly all weekend, finished in fourth place in the final after qualifying on pole position in time qualifying. So please, can we give a huge round of applause to our pole position award to Taste Van House in T4 Mini. <laughs> on to the top step, let's go. That's where you were in qualifying. Maxis will come out to present the T4 pole position award for the mini class and the flag of the Netherlands will be al held aloft and one more round of applause everyone 
as on the top step, look down for the support. There you go. Let's give another round of applause, please, for Taste Van House. I can see flags at the Netherlands going. Well done to you. Uh, let's get a, a quick word. Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna see what it feels like. Oh, it's quite high up here. Uh, how did, it, how does it feel to win the pole position award? I know not quite the win in the end, but you drove absolutely brilliant races, and you know how to drive this track very, very quickly. Lost for, <laughs> lost for words a bit. Oh, a, a, any, any, any words in your own language, maybe? Oh, anyone you'd like to thank, maybe. We'll leave it there. Well, what about, do you want to give those guys a wave over there? We'll give those guys, yeah, we'll give them a wave. We've got some support down there. Thank you very much. I'm sure plenty to say on the way back. Well done. Well done. Taste Van House has driven absolutely superbly. Did all the talking on the circuit. Well done. Well done. Uh, and uh, ca all carry it. can carry it off. All okay. Well done. Well done. Well done, Taste Van House. Goes off to the circuit. You, you want to be interviewed, Stu? Move to the side, please. Thank you. Okay, T4 Junior will come next. We're going to do the pole position award for the T4 Junior category. Someone who put in an absolutely fantastic race. You would have known if you were watching it and put in a superb performance in qualifying as well. I think someone for their performances this weekend deserves to leave with something in their hand. So please give a huge round of applause for our pole position award in T4 Junior. Here he is, Trilly Adams. <laughs> On to the top step, my friend. Well done to Trilly Adams, doing a great job for Team United States of America. This man knows how to drive this track very well. The award presented by Maxis. The photos have been taken. Trilly, well done there. Absolutely. I, I know the result didn't quite work out for you with things that happened after the race, but uh, I, I imagine you've had a fantastic time. Yeah, it was a great time being out here in Spain with the family and being here at the racetrack. Um, we did pretty good for qualifying. That was my first actually ever pull in qualifying here and in the US. And it was just, we had a great time. What a time to do it. What a time. Looks like you enjoyed it. Well done, Trilly Adams. We'll move on to the next class, but one more round of applause, please, for Trilly Adams. <laughs> and with that, we will move on. Whoops, it's a bit windy up here. We'll move on to the senior category uh, next. And I know there's going to be a lot more noise coming from Team USA for this one. She did such a great job uh, in qualifying yesterday, has been putting in fantastic performances throughout the heat. She knows how to drive this circuit very, very quickly. Please give a round of applause for your pole position award winner in T4 Senior. It's Cameron Reed. Team USA on the podium once more on the top step. Cameron Reed putting them up there. Doing a, a really good job all weekend. She's been great to speak to on the grid uh, uh, as Maxis present that trophy. I'm going to come up and say, uh, oh, okay, I won't photobomb that. Sorry, Josh. Okay, I think I, think I can come up now. Oh, yeah, there we go. Cameron, great, great, great driving all weekend. Uh, how's, how's the experience been? It was absolutely amazing. Once in a lifetime experience. I'm super glad uh, that Christy and the whole Drive Your Line team back home allowed me uh, to have this opportunity. It, it wasn't the, the finish that we wanted, but we had a great weekend, really fast times, and I think I got my name out there. So great job for Team USA, and uh, yeah, hopefully I'll see you guys again. Anyone you want to thank down there in particular? Yeah, my parents, of course. You know, my dad came with me, and my Uncle Alan came with me, but everybody back home that donated and helped me get here, and uh, Christy and the whole Drive Your Line team for giving me this ticket and this opportunity. You'll be back, I'm sure. Well done, Cameron Reed, everyone, gets the pole position award. I'm going to look in and see, do we have a pole position? We do. Yeah, we do. Okay. 
Cool. Okay, then we can keep this process moving. Uh, we are going to do the pole position award next. We, we found him in the end. Uh, he was uh, pretty hard to miss uh, on the circuit. He was that quick. But uh, our pole position award for Senior 165, someone who's becoming a master of this event and this circuit, please give a big round of applause to Senior 165 pole position winner, Andreas Matisse. Well done. On to the top step, my friend. Yep. I'm sure it won't be your first time up there today. Did a superb job. We will come back and speak to Andreas a little bit later. So we'll let him get off and get back in. Trophy will be presented by Maxis. I think we're speaking to you again in a bit, Andreas. So uh, we'll, we'll, we'll speak to you in a bit, but I'm sure very, very happy. Uh, well done. Okay, let's uh, crack on with this uh, process then. We're going to go straight on to the mini top three. Uh, it's been a fantastic race overall. Firstly, can we have a round of applause for all of our mini drivers? I'm sure there's many of you down there. They did a really good job all weekend. Uh, we had our top two separated by less than two tenths, but part of an absolutely uh, superb battle for third was this driver from the Czech Republic who had to hold off a whole queue of drivers behind but they just about managed to do it gaining seven places in the process please give a round of applause to third place Jindrik Svoboda well done driver from the Czech Republic stands on the third place podium now next on to the podium finishing in second place missing out on the win by just under two tenths of a second he's driven superbly all year just like he did last time second place in the t4 nations cup george house well done young george comes out onto the podium doesn't quite get the top step this year but i'm sure he will be back again to do it next year. But on the top step this year, I know many people saying to me, can't argue with the pace that this driver's had, how well he has driven all weekend. He's been faultless in his performance, and he's been, I think we can all agree, a very deserved winner for Team Ireland. Please give a huge round of applause for your 2023 winner, winner in the T4 mini class. It's Ben McLaughlin. <laughs> Well done, Ben. Absolutely superb. Well done to uh, Ben up on the top step of the podium doing a superb job. We've got Mark French presenting the trophies and then we'll nip in and have a little chat with our drivers. And here comes the first place trophy. There it is. He's worked so hard for it. Ben McLaughlin holds aloft the T4 Mini Winners Trophy for 2023. What a superb performance. Let's hear some more noise, Team Ireland, for your winner, Ben McLaughlin. We'll, we'll go up, we'll, we'll get Ben to uh, come down and uh, we'll, have a, we'll have a chat to him. Come down, Ben. Absolutely superb. Come up, we'll come up, we'll bring you up to the uh, front of the podium here. You've got a lot of support down there. What do you want to say to uh, all the people supporting you down there? Yeah, thank you, everybody. It's been a great weekend and lots of help. Uh, how does it feel to be up here on the top step of the podium? Yeah, really good. Second last year, top step this year, really good, yeah. These guys ran you very hard, didn't they? It was fantastic racing out there. Yeah, it was really good racing. Very tough racing. So. Proud to do it for Ireland? Yeah. Come on, Ireland. Hey! There we go. There we go. I do want to get one quick word from the other drivers on our podium. Great stuff. Uh, George. One quick word from both you. Um, how does it feel to be up on the podium again? It was really good. Um, T4 
two two times on the podium. Um, yeah, it's it's really good to be back on the podium again, and and hold the trophy again. Andy, what do you want to thank that? Um, a lot of people for supporting me. Um, my mechanic, he's he's worked very hard. Um, my mum, my dad, and my brother watching at home, and all my team mates. Well done. Let's give him a round of applause. George Charles, that was fantastic. And Yindrix Svoboda will come to you next. Uh, how does it feel to be on the podium? You drove superb. I'm happy and I'm thank you for <laughs> um, mum and dad and for Team Praga, Sumako Ipeka. <laughs> and I'm feeling <laughs> good. Lord, a good thank you, Dad. Let's give him another round of applause for all of our top three. One more time for the T4 Minis, everyone. Well done. Well done, guys. We will let you go and celebrate with those guys down there. And I'm sure we will hopefully have some of you up. We will get the winning moment, shall we? It's time for the big celebrations. Are we going to get some noise going? Ready? Let's get some anticipation going. We're going to get going for the celebrations, guys. Mark, let's, we're going to get started. Ready, guys? We get, let's get some assistance in. Right, ready? Come on, guys. Don't be shy. Come on, Stu. Don't be shy. Help out. Mark, Mark and Andrew can do this. Right, ready, guys. Let's get some noise going for the guys. We're going to get ready to go for the big moment. Phones at the ready. Here we go. Oh, he's getting his helmet out of the way. Very sensible. Go on, give it a good old shake, Mark. There we go. Here we go for the minis. There we go. And now, corks are off. Ben, do you know? There we go. And champagne spraying for the T4 minis. Up on the podium. Well done to the drivers. <laughs> Yindrik <laughs> Saboda, they're emptying the bottle on Ben. I don't think they have any left for you down there, guys. I'm really sorry. We'll have to see if we've got any left. Okay. Right, well done, guys. We're going to have to send them back down to you. One more round of applause, please, for the T4 minis. Let's, have, let's give more noise. We just have to... Warn the other drivers, it might be a little bit slippy up here. Uh, hopefully we can uh, clear that off. That was fantastic. What a way to uh, kick off the top three podium celebrations. Okay. Once we've cleared up, Andrew, are we all happy to move on to the... Uh, did you get some champagne on yourself as well, did you, Andrew? You're okay. You're okay. Okay. I think we can move on then to... T4 Juniors, Team Ireland, I anticipate I'm going to be hearing some more noise for you then. What a fantastic drive, by the way, we had from all of our junior drivers. Uh, very close race uh, throughout. We had our top, what's that, top nine drivers separated by 1.2 seconds. Can we have a round of applause, please, for all of the junior competitors this weekend? They all did a fantastic job, whether they're up here or down there. Thank you, but this driver gained four places, charging through to finish third, just missing out on the win by just over one and a half tenths of a second. He did a superb final. Give him some support as he comes out. Third place in T4 Juniors, Aaron Coogan. Well done, Aaron. Big smile on his face there. That's fantastic. Well done, Andrew Fallon. Presents the trophy to him, holds it aloft. Hey, there we go. <laughs> okay, Team South Africa, get ready. Your driver coming up next. Fought very, very hard uh, for the victory. Has been up there in every single qualifying heat, I think it's fair to say. Hence, qualified on the front row. Just missed out by the win by over a tenth of a second before all the way to the checkered flag. Finishing second in T4 Junior, Ricardo Tibut. Well done, T4 
Team South Africa giving lots of noise down there. Well done to Ricardo from South Africa. We're going to have three different nations represented in the top three now because our winner is so desperate to get out here. I can see him poking his head out the door. Your winner of T4 Junior from the United States of America, Chase Biscalia. Well done, Chase. <laughs> Absolutely fantastic stuff. Well done to Chase. We'll go and have a quick chat uh, to him in a second once the pictures are all taken and then we will let the champagne start to come out. Okay, I'm going to... Uh, I don't know if I can... Uh, I, I might be able to reach the microphone up there. Chase, you can stand where you are. Uh, how does it feel to take the win? It uh, feels pretty good. After a uh, rough day today, we got on the top step again. Unlike we did last year, uh, we kind of got screwed out of the win last year, so it feels amazing to do it one, like, one more time since I'm moving next year. And how proud to do it for, for your nation as well as part of the Nations Cup? Oh, I'm very proud. I have no doubt that we're going to win this whole thing. Uh, who would you like to thank? Uh, I'd like to thank my parents, uh, Three Tenths, Dave, Gary Willis, um, everybody that's been a part of this. Well done. Chase Piscalia, your champion. Let's give him a round of applause, please. Well done. I'm just going to have one quick question to second and third. Ricardo, uh, who would you like to thank down there? I'm sure you've got plenty of people supporting you. Oh, I would like to thank my dad, making this whole thing possible. Yeah, well, my dad and my mom. I would say thank you to them for making it possible. Well said. Well said. Ricardo, to Bert, everyone. Come on, Team South Africa. And now, <laughs> you're getting a head start quickly, Aaron, before that sprays on me. Who would you like to thank, mate? Uh, I'd like to thank my whole family, the whole of Ireland, up the paddies. Uh, yeah, thank you. He says as he unzips the cork on the champagne, right, go ahead, gents, let's get going. Here we go. Who's going to be first to open the champagne? I feel like I'm up in the commentary. Oh, go on, Aaron Coogan. There he goes. Getting it out ready. And it looks like Ricardo Tabit was first to it. And Chase Fisca. Oh, <laughs> great stuff. Champagne spraying for the T4 Junior drivers up on the podium. Great celebration. It's the United States of America who win in the drivers category this time. But United States, South Africa and Ireland on the podium. Three different nations, so I expect lots of noise. <laughs> Wait. So I expect lots of noise when I ask for this, guys. Let's give a round of applause to all of our drivers, please, in T4 Juniors. Well done. <laughs> Well done, guys. <laughs> well done, guys. Well done. We'll, uh, we'll let you get off. We'll let you get off into the back. Go on, guys. Let's give them a round of applause as they leave the podium. T4 Juniors top three. They put on a great show uh, out there. Don't forget the trophies and the crash helmets, guys. It's absolutely soaking up here now, isn't it? I can't find the next result. Right, wow, there we go. Lots of energy. Loving the atmosphere, guys, loving the atmosphere. Let's keep it going for seniors. Two more races uh, to go then. We have the Nations Cup, of course. I still don't actually know who's won that, so intrigued to find out uh, who it is. Uh, great racing across the board uh, in seniors. Uh, uh, same process as for the other classes. I think they were fantastic, particularly in some of the qualifying heats. So round of applause for all of our senior drivers, please, who competed throughout the weekend. Thank you, person at the front. Thank you very much. Uh, at least one person. There, there, thank you. A few, a few people joined in eventually. Uh, okay, three of them are about to come out onto the podium. This person had to do a, a very tough task in holding off four or five drivers slotted right in behind who wanted to take the third spot on the podium away from him. But in the end, he just managed to hold on, finishing third in T4 Senior from the United States of America, Colin Warren. Well done, Colin. Loving the race suit, Colin. Looks fantastic. 
Next, it was a fantastic battle for the race win. It went down to the final corner and almost a drag race to the line. This driver helping create a six second gap to the rest of the field. Could have been any one of the top two that took the win. In the end, this driver finishing second, but did a fantastic job out there. Second this year in T4 Senior from the Netherlands, Tim Van Ellerswijk. Well done, Tim. But the man who was able to hold him off, he's been up joining us in the commentary box. He talked us round what was a perfect lap, told us how you win one of these races and then executed that plan on the circuit, said it all comes down to the last lap and then defended all the way to the flag and did so perfectly, taking the win in this year's T4 senior race. He looks very emotional after he did so as well. So please give him some big support as he comes out. Your winner, Noah Rosser. Well done to Noah. Trophies presented as we lift them up. And there we go. Noah Rossa lifts the trophy above his head. That's a proud moment for Noah. And we will, once Stu is happy and Josh is happy, we will jump in uh, and get ready for a happy. Yep, okay. We're going to jump in for a quick chat. Uh, Noah. Oh, you look much taller than you did in commentary earlier. Um, uh, how does it feel uh, to be on the top step on, of the podium now? Because when we spoke to you earlier, uh, you hadn't quite got onto here just yet. Uh, well, I, I went to bed thinking about this, and it actually all turned out how I wanted it to turn out. So I can't complain about anything. I'm so happy. Uh, who would you like to thank down there? My mom, my stepdad, my grandparents, uh, Christopher McCrow, my mechanic. He's the GOAT. Uh, all my friends and family watching back at home. Uh, and all those amazing people down there. Congratulations. Well done, Noah Rossa. Well said. I think that was fantastic. Second, Tim Van Ellersvig. Well, I can come up onto here. Uh, Tim, just missing out. But a great, great race with you and Noah working together to the end. Yes, it was, yeah, it was not what I wanted me to, but in the end, I'm happy with it. Who would you like to thank? Uh, my father, my mother, and everyone that helped me this year to achieve this goal. Well done, Tim. Very, very well said. Uh, congratulations on second. Thank you. And very quickly, Colin, I'm going to ask the same question to yourself. Uh, Who would you like to thank down there? You got quite a lot of support as you came out, so I'm sure a couple of people. Uh, my dad for coming out here with me. All of Team USA for just being great support. Everyone working together so well this weekend. And uh, everyone back home for cheering us on. Well done. Top three, right. You know what time it is now. There is a GoPro on the one of Noah Rossa as well. So I'm quite intrigued to see the footage of that one. Uh, so uh, feel free to uh, really go big <laughs> on it. That's all I'm saying. Uh, and hopefully after that, I'll actually, Simon might be able to help me out with the, with the result of <laughs> Senior 165. <laughs> uh, but uh, here we go. Champagne moments for the top three in T4 Senior. GoPro at the ready on the winning champagne bottle of Noah Rossa. Colin Warren is executed. Colin Warren looks like he just wants to drink. It. Oh, we're getting a shoey. We are getting a shoey. Noah Rossa had definitely had been thinking about this one last night. Here we go then. Do we want to see one? Do we want to see one, Team America? Do we want to see him do it? Here we go. Hey, hey, there we go. <laughs> Love it. Brilliant stuff. Well done, Noah Rossa. Well done to Tim Van Ellesvig. Well done to Colin Warren as well. Superb races. <laughs> and, the, and the duck is even getting some. Chuck, the duck is even getting some as well. I, I have to. I have to ask. What, what, what the? You, you've all been bringing this out. What, what, what's? What's the? Uh, it's the best team in the USA. Oh, okay. Uh, how did it taste? It tasted great. I didn't taste my foot. You can ask to them to pour it in that later when you order order a drink with your dinner. I feel bad for the people on the plane. They're gonna have to smell that. 
<laughs> well, well done. Your senior top three, everyone, as they leave the podium now. We'll get ready for senior 165. Then we're going to do the Nations Cup results uh, next after that. So uh, uh, hopefully I'll actually uh, be given uh, a result for senior 165. I wasn't given one uh, before. Uh, otherwise, I really will be making this up as we... I go, do, do you know the results, Stu? <laughs> you, you, you don't know either. Uh, I, I'm going to have to go back and, and have, a, have a look who's in here. Who have we got in here? This is really off cuff now. Ah, oh, Casey's in here. Uh, Chris, so we, we stayed as we were? So third, second, third. Perfect. That's, that's live TV for you. You just have to just roll with it. Okay, ready to go? Okay, cool. Let's go then. Right. Senior 165 next. Now I know who is up back there and what order they're in. Let's get third place out there. Uh, we had a little bit of a delay in the results, so sorry for that. These are no longer a use to me. Take those, Stu. Uh, they're no longer a use to me. Uh, third place in Senior 165 uh, in a furious battle to get on that last step on the podium. Just about getting there in the end. From United States of America, KC Cook. Well done, KC. Did a really good job out on the circuit. Battling away was great to speak to him throughout the weekend as well. Well done to KC. Big moment for these guys. Let's go next to second place. This driver's very first time racing at an international event like this outside of the UK. He's had to learn the circuit, learn the carts as well. He's done an absolutely fantastic job just missing out on the win in the end. Second place, Chris Alcock. Well done. Well done, Chris. Well done, mate. Fantastic drive all weekend, mate. And I know he would have done that for Anwar Beryl-Smith uh, as well, who I hope is down there and feeling a little better after that race. Well done, Chris, uh, for that one. I know that'll be a, a proud moment uh, for him. And we had him out here earlier for the pole position award. Now he gets to go back out on the top step and we get to speak to him. I think the fact he's coming out here twice proves his dominance. He is a winner once again from Team Germany, Andreas Matisse. Well done. Well done. Superb job in the Tillotson suit as well. And now we find out after this who the Nations Cup winners are. But Team Germany win in the senior 165 class. Oh, okay. Who? Oh, okay. So Andreas Matisse on the top step and he gets another trophy as well for winning the Masters category. So he's won just about everything. So let's get that trophy. Uh, Charles Demersion, the president of Tillotson, will present that. Our Masters winner as well. He's won just about everything in that class this weekend. Well done to Andreas Matisse. Let's go and have a very quick word with our top three. Uh, Andreas how proud do you feel to be up here? Oh, oh, I tell you what, you, you guys are a bit taller. <laughs> so I'm going to, well, we're good friends, aren't we? So uh, uh, that was quite good up here. Uh, how does it feel uh, to be up here again? Yeah, it's uh, amazing. Uh, yeah, we won last year the, the, the ticket and everything here. And now it's more competitors. And uh, yeah, it was very, very hard. And uh, yeah, I'm happy. Who would you like to thank? Yeah. Yourself? Yeah. <laughs> I'm happy. <laughs> good stuff, good stuff. Uh, Chris and yourself? Uh, uh, this, is, this feels good. You like a good luck charm for me. I uh, know. All the races. Yeah. I'll, I'll come back again at some point. Next year? Yeah. yeah. All right, I'll do the same. <laughs> well you enjoyed the experience? It's been brilliant. It's been really, really good. A first taste of international racing, never been here before. The carts are good, they're all nice and equal. The race has been top quality. The setup's been decent. Yeah, can't complain. Uh, well, one step off, maybe. And was uh, is Amwar okay? Yes, he got a bit winded. He wanted to carry on, but they wouldn't let him. This one's for him as well, I tell you, for both of you. I will dedicate it to Anwar, but also number one mechanic, Michelle, my better half. Good stuff. I think that's well said. Thank you. Well done. Well done. All right, let's go. Ooh. Oh, wow. I've been bending up and down. Oh, yeah. Okay. Casey, well done. Third place. Yeah. Thank you uh, for having us out here. Um, you guys put on an amazing event. This is my first time, you know, coming out here for the uh, Tillotson T4 Nations Cup. But I just want to say thank you to all at uh, Team USA, all the support, uh, Jake, Ryan, 
um, Mark, all you guys have been phenomenal. Santi, good drive. Uh, all my uh, family and friends watching back home, there's a lot of support. And uh, all these guys on track, man, um, I, I don't think I have one scratch on the go-kart coming from ninth every heat. And everyone raced with a lot of respect around me. So I appreciate all the drivers that uh, I raced with. Good job to you guys. Well said, well said. Right, guys, uh, I, I don't know if you want to spray it or, or drink it, but uh, you got some uh, big bottles in hand there, so I am going to hide behind Josh East here. Make a barrier for me, please, because <laughs> this is going to get abs <laughs> this is going to get very messy uh, out here. As, uh, oh, wow, there we go. <laughs> I, did, I did say, <laughs> oh, my God. Charles, that got messy, I'm, Charles. I'm hiding behind you. <laughs> well, I'm hiding behind Stu. So that had a nice ring to it. Yeah. Uh, well done guys, enjoy it, they've put on a superb job, well done Senior 165, fantastic job all of them this weekend, thank you for the support down there and for those of you who stuck around, Nations Cup results is next, Drivers of the Day is next, okay, right, okay, well we're going to do that, we're going to do that next are we, okay, cool, alright, so we'll, uh, have a little, we're going to do this again. We're going to have a little look back and see. We've got s still more drivers getting ready to go back here. Uh, but I hope we've all enjoyed it uh, down there. And uh, then we will be getting ready to go. Maxis, have we enjoyed it? Yeah, the, the event is very really good. Really. And the whole setup is good. And the racing is so exciting. Uh, and yourself, sir, you enjoyed it? A lot. Good racing, good fun. I think most of the people have had a fantastic weekend or half a week. And uh, we hope to be back again uh, next year to have a minimum same venue. Yeah, I hope so too. Yeah. I hope so too. Uh, I hope to see you guys back. Um, at, yeah, And uh, good pole position awards as well. They look fantastic. Thank you. It's one of my colleagues preparing them, so I don't get the credits. The credits are to Pim. Uh, he created very nice trophies for the pole sitters. And yeah, well, we try to be special a little bit and I hope uh, the drivers enjoy them. Good stuff, very well said, very well said. Uh, uh, hopefully this man, <laughs> I know this man was positioning us uh, to get a few things there. Hopefully he's got everything he needs. Uh, we've, got some, uh, we've got some drivers of the day. Wow. Uh, we got uh, this, uh, I, know who that we, I know who this is. Uh, this is, guys back there are thinking, uh, what is going on? Uh, oh. Wow, the, the, the elusive. I should get to see what you look like. And uh, we will come. Cool. Are you ready to go again? We ready to go, gents? Good stuff. Good stuff. Okay, uh, drivers of the day coming out next. Let's get going. Uh, so we're going to go uh, drivers of the day uh, next, uh, <laughs> which uh, we. Well, we, are we, are we, are we all could, oh, well, you, you can go back there. You, you don't have to all come out at once. You, you can, you can go back, 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 uh, go back. Go back. Uh, okay, let's welcome first driver of the day, T4 Mini, Ben McLaughlin. Come on, Team Island. Well done. Second driver of the day, T4 Junior, Truly Adams. Third driver of the day. I, mean, I lost count of how many places this man gained. Jose Gomez. And fourth name and fourth driver of the day, Manuel Gamis. In the senior 165. Uh, Charles, talk to us a little bit about the Driver of the Day Award. Well, the Driver of the Day Award is a special award that uh, Marline Fuel wanted to sponsor because they, they just felt that, you know, even though it's an entire event, that, that occasionally somebody shines with a particular great day or a particularly great drive. Uh, and so this is what they wanted to recognize that for. I think we have four very deserving winners there. Have we got everything we need, guys? Uh, Stu and Joss taking some pictures. Good stuff. Let's give a round of applause for our Drivers of the Day, please. I think they all deserve it. Well done, guys. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. <laughs> In particular, well, how many, you gained a lot of places. How, how many places do you think you gained this weekend? Uh, 
around 60. 60? <laughs> or 70. Have you been, do you race here a lot? Or what? You, at this track? Uh, no, I'm from Murcia. Oh, but you just, it's just, uh, you, you just gained so many places. It was fantastic. We only race this racing all the year. Wow. That's a, that's a driver of the day. We have, we have a, a school in my circuit. We have a circuit in Murcia, Cartin and ah. um, half a school, and um, my drivers compete this, this weekend. That's the driver of the day right there. Put it there. Thank well you. done, well done. You, you were absolutely amazing. Every time I saw this man, it was like plus 12, plus 14, plus 15. Uh, Nations Cup. Ah, oh, oh, I mean, I can guess who's uh, won that. I don't know who's won that, but I can, <laughs> I can possibly tell who's won that. Uh, Nations Cup. It's been uh, really good watching all the nations compete. I think we've all put on uh, a very good show uh, out there uh, for all the staff. But uh, now it's time to get our winning nation out on to the podium. So let's welcome them out. I know this was very, very close. Please welcome your winning nation, Team USA. And this is going to take a while to get all these guys out. There is a big team. Ah, and we got a team captain running and incoming. Purple sectors. Go, 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 go. <laughs> Good stuff. Good stuff. We've got one more person coming in, Stu. We've got... Uh, Another person, we've got another person coming out. Hold fire. There he is, he's made it. Okay, good. Good stuff. That's everyone, I believe. Here we go, let's give a round of applause, Team USA. And Charles de Mergin will present the trophy. Well done, and Charles de Mergin will stand on the side. Well done to Team USA. Let's give him a cheer. On three, one, two, three, Team USA! Let's go one more, one more guys. Let's make this the biggest one ever. One, two, three. Well done, guys. Let's give that a round of applause. Well done. Well done. I want to have a chat with this man. This man here. Come, come, come to the front. Uh, we spoke a lot down there. Yeah. Uh, how does it feel? Team USA winning. Oh, it's fantastic. These guys all worked super hard to get here. Super proud of the guys not only, and the gals that came along with us. Everybody drove great. They drove clean. And uh, we got some, some hardware to take home. Proud of all the, proud of all the drivers uh, out there? Yeah, everybody raced. The biggest thing is racing clean and managing yourself throughout the heats. And they were, they were really focused, and they got to the end, and uh, then the gloves come off. <laughs> we got some big trophies there as well, like that one. Uh, and very quickly, I mean, it, for, for the stream as well, uh, the support, the event has been run absolutely fantastic, hasn't it? Yeah, big thanks to Tillotson, Charles, and the gang down there. They do a tremendous job. And out of the U.S., Jake Motaz and Ryan down at Cart Rise, and they kind of spearheaded this for us, and uh, we couldn't be more proud. Well done. Well said. Thank you very much. Be back to do it again next year. Uh, as all you guys get home safely, uh, where's Simon? I don't know if Simon's here. Is Simon there? Um, where is he? Come on, Simon. Come out, come out, come out, come out, come out. Uh, uh, the man I've been with all weekend. Enjoy it. Oh, absolutely. It was absolutely cracking time for everyone. Great to see so many families here this weekend. Had an absolute blast commentating alongside you, so a big thank you to you, Chris. And a big thank you too. Well done, well thank done. You. Did a fantastic job. Uh, that's all for Tillotson T4 Nations Cup. We'll do it again next year. We'll do it again next year. Make sure you join us. Get home safely, guys, here. Thank you for watching at home. We will see you again to do it next year. Thank you.
posto. Ciao Gian, preparati che ho portato una cosa per te. Provala e fammi sapere. Ok, mi infilo il casco, andiamo? Andiamo, subito. Everything hurts. You need relief that's deeper than ice. You need Tidal, the cryotherapy spray that goes beyond cold to take control of the pain. This was just easy and it felt so good. I was like, wow, that actually smells good. It gets like penetrating into my skin, which I really love. Tidal's powerful plant-based formulation was developed to help world-class athletes recover faster. Tidal cryotherapy spray can contribute to total body recovery because it can alleviate muscle pain, joint pain, even back pain. A 360-degree continuous spray relieves pain in even the hardest-to-reach areas, dries fast, and lasts. When you get older, the joints start hurting. The spray is easy. You just bring it wherever you are, spray it, and it feels great within minutes. It changes my life in a way that I can still be active and yet not feel aches and pains when I'm sitting there for long hours. Tidal Cryotherapy, available at Walmart and these fine retailers. Visit Tidal.com for locations.